Give me just Honestly, a second. Honestly, just stay signed out. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I'd be free, yeah. All right. Hello, what everybody. Oh, shit. Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> Are we live? Things Are we live? I got to refresh the YouTube channel. Oh, heck, oh, oh heck. Yo, yo. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, there I'm it is. I'm trying to do stuff. How, mu how confusing must it be to have all three women talking over e each other at the start of a stream? <laughs> Twitter is being so rude to me today. I think you mean Fine, I guess I'll just use the app. No, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> It was like, use our code generator app, which is different from our normal app. <laughs> or you could use a backup code. Or I can just say, fuck you, and use right. the place I'm still signed in. What, yes? Or you could personally mail a letter to www.twitter.com. Just put a stamp on the corner of it and say, dear sir, sign me the fuck back yeah. in. Where do you get off? So anyway, <laughs> How welcome dare to the you, stream. <laughs> Hey gang, what's yeah, cracking? Hey, we're everybody. off to a great start. No, we're having a blast. Uh, we're going to be streaming some Spider-Man 2 today. Marvel's Spider -Man. Sony's... Spider-Man Blue, am I right? In a Marvel's Sony's hey Insomniac's PS5 Spider-Man 2 2023, uh, which is actually the third game in the series. Uh, Miles Morales was a very good game as well. And uh, it's got a very long, a full tree. name. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we're going to be just uh, playing through this PS5's basically as fast as we can. I'm um, going to be running through the, the main story. We might take some diversions. We're currently uh, playing in two streams. Uh, this uh, this day right here, Friday, and the next Friday as well. We're probably going to need a third stream to actually get through the story. We'll figure out where that third one goes when we get there. But for now, we're just going to play as much as we can. Have some fun uh, with, this, uh, with, with this little Spider-Man story here. I'm holding on the opening screen because I want everybody to be fully aware that I have 100% on the my first save file, because I take this shit seriously when it comes to Spider-Man, I don't fuck around. So I just want that to be known before we get into this today. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Good flex, good flex, yeah, yeah. good start. All right, um, uh, Let's. Uh, what difficulty do we want to do? If we're gonna be blitzing through the story, God. I'm gonna be way under level by the time we get to the end, so we're gonna stick on friendly so that way we don't have to like grind out side activities oh but side activities so it's, it's so funny to me when you were like in the description i put now dig on this and i assumed you would also put in like we're fundraising for unicef <laughs> no. the gang is hanging out it just says now dig on this <laughs> if you know you know <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't know <laughs> all right do we want to do previously on? It gives you a nice little recap of what's happening in the game. Do we want to introduce who's here? Yeah, let's do that first. <laughs> Who goes uh, first? Someone go first. You, because you're the only recognizable voice. I <laughs> am Blue. I am the history guy. I am playing Spider-Man on my PlayStation. Red, you're up. Hi, I'm Red. I've been the one streaming games for most of last year, so now it's Blue's turn. I'm here to hang out and watch the game. Indigo, you're up. Hi, I'm Indigo. Um, I ha I've seen Spider-Man 2 in action, but I have almost exclusively played Baldur's Gate for the last two weeks, so I will try to make this stream about an entirely different game at every given opportunity. <laughs> and I'm Cyan. I have the brain cell today. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let us know how the uh, audio balance is on this, and we can adjust. There is oh, it's so shiny on my TV. Happening some scenes and things. It's a really cute way oh, to uh, to do this game as a little college essay type thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, we already have donations coming in. Hell yeah! Woohoo! Thank you mm. to the Anime Underworld, uh, Chloe Hassler. And a while back I, was <laughs> I missed one. And anonymous. <laughs> Yes, thank y'all. The game is very quiet. Much. Oh, it's very quiet? Okay, I'll bump it up a little bit. I've used my powers to help the okay, city let's, let's try that. People who wanted to hurt it, like my mentor, Dr. Otto Octavius. His lab got shut down Actually, by an old colleague, more. Norman Osborne. Excuse me. Otto retaliated by releasing a bioweapon. Apparently that is better. I okay, to good, stop good, good. Otto, But not without great cost. That was pretty good. But I'm no Peter Parker. Exactly. You're Miles so basically, Spider-Man stuff happened. Years old, uh, and a student at Brooklyn Uncle Ben's Academy. dead. Yada yada yada. What that's so unprecedented in Spider-Man. 
Uh, when we jump into the first Spider-Man game, he's already been Spider-Man for like eight years. So all that stuff is, is long prior. There is a girl I like who's spectacular. You can imagine Peter writing his college essay like, ah, you know, it is Spider-Man shit, usual deal. <laughs> also, I have a crush. <laughs> Also got bitten by a radioactive spider that gave me super. That is the fuzziest little spider. <laughs> yeah, it is. Just a little guy. But I learned oh, we how to love be a little hero guy. From my dad. Honestly, that was pretty big by spider standards. By kind of a scary big guy. Missing yeah, but it's so fuzzy. Mm. It's bigger in the cutscene where it jumps at him. <laughs> it's the good my dad planted in me. Are we it's sure it's hard. not a tarantula? No. Even with superpowers, it's just a, a little, fluffy little boy. It's a little spooter. <laughs> spooter boober. No matter how hard we try. Also, Cleo is no, here. Spooder and doesn't give up, spooder boober. We still have our Christmas tree up. It's not the epiphany yet. And so know, she is 100% going to try to eat the tree during this stream, and I will 100% have to stop her. Sure you can. You just We've been to... putting oranges at the base of our tree because cats don't you? like just start um, like orange oil or like citrus oil. Um, so we have the oranges at the base of our tree, but we also have to rub the oranges against the tree branch so that she stops eating the tree branches. Because otherwise she tries to literally climb into the tree to get to a point where there is no orange. Yep. All right, let's go. Perfect timing. I just got Twitter working again. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's true. Like, I, oh man, truly the right hand does not know what the left hand is doing. <laughs> So at the very end of the last game, uh, we learned that uh, Harry is really? in a little back-to-tank looking thing with some black goop. Good? And we're getting some backstory for that right now. Promise me something. Can't believe they redesigned Peter to look more like Tom Holland. It was apparently due this to the work. like facial capture technology to make it work better for Take me out. for Yuri Lowenthal's facial capture. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> we simply have no choice but to make him look more like extremely bankable movie star Tom Holland. <laughs> Just go say, full on and let it In order to look space. more like <laughs> actual middle-aged man Yuri Lowenthal? That's not, come on, come on. We're all better than this. <laughs> So anyway, thank you to Coronet Chris for the $20 donation. I want a mod where Yay. it's just Gary Lowenthal's face. And Liam <laughs> Clyde for the $5 donation. <laughs> it's the goo. It, it's time for goo. The implication that Norman was just kind of walking around symbiote on <laughs> for a while. I don't know if that was true. That might have just been a nightmare. You know, like symbolic. Mm. Also, thank you to Peggy Salas for the fifty dollar donation. Appreciate everyone in your donations, especially this early on. We have a bell for a reason. I do take your seats. Uh, we've all been there. The th the pain of trying to write your college application, being yeah. like, but who am I as a person? Like, what's my deal, though? Oh, you know, just Spider-Man shit. <laughs> just, yeah, well, what do you do in your spare time? Uh, normal things. <laughs> I don't know. This is the thing that pops up, though, with Miles in this game, from what little I've seen of it. It Like, there's no way that everyone in his school doesn't know he's Spider-Man, right? Like, <laughs> That's usually how I feel about these things. It's like, these guys are never that, you know. There's a mission where someone, a student, calls Spider-Man to, like, find a missing, uh, mysteriously named important to the school thing that I won't spoil, but, like... How some insects... A student would call Spider-Man if they knew who Spider-Man was, right? They're like, oh, he'll care about this, like, school rivalry because he goes to our school. I'm sure they know and they're just like, it's like when my youngest sister pretended okay. to still believe in Santa, so that way we would still do Santa as a household. Like, I feel like the school's like, if we pretend we don't know, Service he'll keep doing it, so we're just gonna not do anything about it. <laughs> I mean, as we all know, the spirit of New York is camaraderie and, uh, <laughs> and you know, community, and you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. So truly, I think that they're all on Spider-Man's side. Also, like, in the age of remote jobs, why did Peter think being a teacher was gonna work? <laughs> like, with his... He had to try it once before he knew it was gonna fuck up forever. 
Mr. Morales? This scene is really well written for how catastrophic it is for Peter and Miles. Where Miles stands up like, bathroom, um, Mr. Teacher, I need your... There's no coming back from that. No, truly awful. Come there, on, there Miles. There is actually a cool little detail here where, um... Uh, the character Haley, um, who's deaf and does ASL, has an interpreter sitting at the front of the class. Um, I was wondering about they that. They were cool. working on an earlier version of the scene, and there was a student sitting in front of Haley, and one of the like ASL um, consultants. Uh, consultants that they had was like, oh, we're going to need to reorganize the classroom space the way that this is blocked out right now. Haley wouldn't be able to see her interpreter. Like, oh shit, really good point. So they they adjusted it um, to have it so the desk in front of her is, is uh, empty. Uh, there's, there's a lot of cool little stuff like that that's done throughout the game. I'll point them out when I when I recognize them. But there are a handful of, of fun things that really show how much effort they put into trying to do those those little bits of um, of character realism and representation. It's cool. very cool. Uh, someone commented, the students who find Miles and Peter's clothes on the roof will be traumatized for life now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, they said bathroom, though. <laughs> oh, also, because, uh, hold on, uh, settings, gameplay, uh, where'd it go? Where is, I want, uh, hold on, hold on, swing assist, get that shit down, I'm a real gamer. Fall damage gone. <laughs> I'm a real gamer, he says. <laughs> While playing with everything else on friendly. I'm a big boy! Well, it's because if I if I play it on, on uh, like, regular difficulty, I'm going to need to grind for side stuff or else the bosses are going to absolutely ruin me. And watching the same boss fight seven times is not the purpose of the stream. We're trying to get through the story. Uh, I got to go fast. Got to go fast. If there's one thing I know, it's how to web swing. So, like, if I do this... Oh, okay. It very generously did not face plant me into the uh, the thing. Usually that'll give you fall damage. Maybe they're being nice at the very beginning. It is the intro scene. Yeah. This is Learn to Swing 101. Yeah. Or 301, depending on how many other games you've played. Mm. Oh, don't tell me this game really makes you feel like you're Spider-Man. Yeah. Whoa, crazy. The IGN Whoa. reviewer absolutely won the reviews for this game, where he was talking about how like well done this game is, and he said, and screw it, it really makes you feel like Spider-Man 2, which is so funny, because it's a double entendre. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I have literally four drinks right now. Oh, my Abby is measurable. I have only one. I don't have coffee currently, although I do have some. I have a little iced coffee pitcher in my fridge that I might have to dip into, but I just... I was up pretty late making sure the rolling with difficulty upload for tomorrow was all set. And now <laughs> you I mean the rolling with difficulty upload for today? Going live in oh, one hour? Uh, yeah, Stay tuned. Today, going live in one hour. Last time I was talking about it with someone, it was pre-midnight. Uh, so. Dash. But, uh, yeah, no, I did that, and then while things were exporting, I And I do have one very specific beef with that, but if we are about to encounter story, I will let, I, I, I can hold on to that beef. I'm sure this sandstorm has only good things ha happening, uh -huh. and why it is happening. Um, it's probably fine. Probably nothing oh, look to do with the giant sand guy. I will say, uh, Mara pointed out something really important. Uh, have we talked to Impa? No, we're fine. We it's gotta. It's gonna be a while before we do that. Everyone knows Sandman can't spawn until you talk to Impa. Oh, you got absolutely yoked. Sorry. I don't know how far the delay is, but that was pretty funny. It was pretty yoked. Ooh, there it goes again. He's really lost at this time. We gotta stop him quick. I gotta rewatch Spectacular Spider Man. The way they did Sandman was really top tier. He's hungry. To toss the big guy a snack. I really like how they did Mysterio. Demi toss Spider Man. Oh, yeah. Real quick, how annoying is the web whips coming off of my controller? Uh, uh, I can't hear them. Uh, okay, we great. can't hear them. So. Yeah, we can hear the web whips, but cool. I don't think it goes through the speaker. Perfect. That's cute. This isn't an ocarina situation here. <laughs> also, there's a full lawnmower going on outside, yeah. so sorry about any hum. The we also not hearing any of that. I think. Great. <laughs> we live near a park, and the local school like often will do like gym class or recess in the said park. But they always seem to want to mow the lawn like during school hours on a school day. So it's oh like, yeah, that's it. Uh, my public school used to do that. 
I don't know a time when they weren't mowing the lawn or putting down like fertilizer on stuff. Uh, that that's just a permanent state of being, for my understanding of most schools. I mean, our school is the same way, but I'm like, this is a public park. Like, you could just do this on a weekend. <laughs> like, it doesn't. You don't need to do it during school hours. But people use it on the weekends, so they gotta do it during school hours. Which is also our high school was in a constant state of being. Mostly rebuilt. Yeah. See, was, sorry, I just saw Spider-Man chuck that guy out the window. <laughs> I was briefly like, "What the fuck?" Oh God. <clears throat> anyway, is it not winter there? Yes, it is. We're expecting a lot of snow this weekend. They're still gonna mow the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Neither rain nor snow nor gloom of night shall stop me from mowing the lawn at the most inconvenient hours of the day. My dad's a big proponent of the like no uh, gas or electric push mowers. Uh, he he just like he loves those guys. He like rides with them. He's like you know. It makes mowing the lawn so much more difficult and so much more of a task, but you really feel like you accomplished something when you do it the hard way. And I'm like, I don't know that this is a hill you need to die on. I feel like maybe you could just have someone else mow the lawn. I mow the lawn like this to test my ability. <laughs> the grind like, never sleeps. for, exactly? Uh, there have been a lot of anonymous donations coming in, so thank you all. There's a $10, a $5, a $20, and a $50. So thank you all. we got the full Monopoly bank. <laughs> Monopoly, don't they? Oh yeah, they do. Monopoly plays with funny fictional amounts of money like that. <laughs> Spider Man. Also, someone asked about Percy Jackson. Uh, we're watching it. If you want detailed analysis, there are many people who do that. Go to Dominic Noble's channel. Yeah, well, watch Dom's videos <laughs> about it. Daniel Go to also Dom's videos that I definitely oh, don't have to uh, just watch and pull clips for. <laughs> It's a bit of a team effort. We consu uh, I consulted with him a little bit on the most recent one because he was asking me about, like, hey, the Medusa characterization, like, how's that, you know, how does that work? And I, I was like, well, you know, you could look up uh, Ovid's Metamorphoses. I found this translation. They seem to make it kind of ambiguous whether the Poseidon-Medusa relationship is, like, consensual. But, you know, if you wanted to, you could go look at the original Latin. He was like, maybe I'll pay someone to do that. And I was like, so I looked at the original Latin. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's a lot less uh, ambiguous than that one. He was like, cool, 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 cool. Okay, cool. That's what I kind of thought. Brad, you read Latin? So, no, but I have Google Translate, and I can, uh, I've gotten, I've gotten really good at taking a chunk of the original language that I think has the information I need in it, and then, like, kind of, uh, Zeno's paradoxing my way through it by cutting it in half and figuring out which half contains the part that I need, until I pare it down to the specific word that I'm trying to translate. Uh, and in this case, I was like, oh, that, that's not a good word. That's, that's, mm, that's a very unambiguous word. <laughs> also, you know blue kind of reads Latin, right? <laughs> Well, yes. <laughs> I think this was a wee hours of the morning conversation yeah, where I didn't want to be a hassle. Was this in the group chat? Oh, you know what? No, no, <laughs> no, no. this was just I was driving. Chat. This oh, happened yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. driving. <laughs> ah, that would also we were coming do it, back yeah. from holiday travel. Yeah. Mm. Um, I saw a question about Movie Struck episode when uh, there's one rule in Movie Struck that it does have to be a movie, not a TV show. So, Percy Jackson, unless someone wants to subject uh, the awful. <laughs> Yeah, you want to do the movie? <laughs> I've already had to watch that movie twice because I think I, I was definitely on a podcast where we talked about that. I wish I could remember. It might have uh, been um, newest. It might have been yeah, newest, newest Olympia. Olympia yeah. Um, but it also might have been um, one of the one of the pods we've done with Case Aiken where he does like, let's look at this movie that was bad and figure out maybe oh, how it could pass. be not bad. Yeah, it might have been that, but I honestly can't remember. But I've had to watch the movie twice now, and it's not worth it. Oh, speaking of movies that aren't worth it, uh, anyone else here watch Rebel Moon yet? No. <laughs> no. You said it was bad, and so all of us decided not to watch it. Good, <laughs> good. I wasn't really planning on watching it in the first place, but... I was just curious. I'm a big fan of, like, goofy fantasy trope stuff. You know, I, I think that as long as a movie is fun, it's not really bad. I should have known that if I was in the pursuit of fun, Snyder was not the place to look for it. Um, but it was interesting. I, uh, there's, um, Second Wind has been doing a series, uh, let me, let me just, yeah, that one. Uh, and they did one about, um, uh, Rebel Moon, which is kind of why I watched it. Although, having watched it, and when I watched the video again, I was like, oh, they're being very, uh, 
very careful to not actually say whether the movie's any good or not. Because, <laughs> like, the, la like the, the final line of the video is something like, the, mo well, the movie may not be good, but the fact that it exists is good. And, like, that I agree with. I think the fact that, like, original sci-fi that isn't a sequel, spin-off, remake, etc., etc., I think it's good that we're getting more of those. The movie's just not good. <laughs> it's got a 24 on Rotten Tomatoes. God, really? Yeah, 24%. I think it's it's nice to see a, a new original concept in the specific like almost space opera genre of sci-fi because there's a lot yeah. of new sci-fi movies that come out all the time, but they're not the the big swingy space stuff is tends to be a miss if it's not a Star Wars, so it's hard yeah. to pull off. I love space opera. That's why I was so disappointed when Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets turned out to suck because when it came out, when the trailer dropped, I was like, this looks amazing. I want more movies that look like this. And I was like, well, the movie looks like that, but it doesn't feel like it. Whatever. But, um, yeah, so Rebel Moon's not good, but I am glad that it exists. And I, there's no way they're not going to put out the sequel in April, because if they're if they're, it's coming out in April, the movie's already been shot and mostly edited. Yeah. So, like, it already exists. They're not going to just not put it out. I mean, people have um, done that. <laughs> also, I'm almost positive that the trailer for it they put out on Netflix was stuff from part one and two because there were a lot of shots in that trailer that just fully weren't in the movie and uh i guess it could be director's cut shit but if that's the case the director's cut may as well be a completely different movie mm -hmm. napoleon moment uh, as, yeah. on the subject of in the frame it it also motivated me because i've been meaning to watch blue eye samurai for a while and i saw hey. an in the frame video of like blue eye samurai is really goddamn good and he starts by saying like I'm gonna spoil it, so if you want to watch it, do it. I'm like, all right, in I go. <laughs> Twist my arm, why don't you? Yeah. How did. far in are you now? Uh, only three episodes. We did have no. to steal Red's uh, Netflix account because my parents' Netflix account kicked us off for not living. It was freely <laughs> given. <laughs> yeah. I got booted from my dad recently. <laughs> Red, you're welcome to steal our Hulu. Uh, well, you already oh, have our dropout, so we, we <laughs> share in this household. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're on a family YouTube plan. Um, did I die? Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. And we are on a family YouTube plan. things recently in terms of new movies, the uh, Emma Stone, um... Mm -hmm. Oh my god, what's his name? Four Things, which is apparently like a Frankenstein kind of deal? It's, I, you know what, this is really interesting trying to talk, because there's also the trailer that played before it in theater for the, like, 80s teen Cole Sprouse Frankenstein thing and I think that the in the same way that for a while there it was vampires and for a while there it was superheroes and then for a while there it was like dark fantasy stuff uh, I think the current trend in movies we're gonna see is gonna be a Frankenstein-esque situation because Poor Things is a little Frankenstein-y I would say like it's it's supposed to be like a woman's journey uh, I think that they had varying degrees of how well they pulled it off in the movie but it was still pretty fun overall to watch um, were you thinking of Mark Ruffalo or Will I was thinking of Mark Ruffalo the guy was just oh <laughs> What? <laughs> Mark Ruffalo is really good. Unfortunately, this, this is I have I have oh, I feel so bad because both of the like, you know, female forward uh, movies of the year, Barbie and Poor Things. Um, unfortunately, my favorite performance in both was a man, and it feels awful to say that. But like, Mark, Mark, Mark Ruffalo is really good in Poor Things. I'm like Ryan Gosling is really good in Barbie. <laughs> Oh, thank it doesn't you. mean that Emma Stone and Margot Robbie were bad. It just means that when I was watching it, I was like, "Damn it, Mark Ruffalo's really funny." <laughs> <laughs> thank you to Anonymous for your fifty dollars donation. You. Also, the amount Ooh. of coarse, rough, and irritating uh, comments. I see you. Just wait until we get to Hudson River <laughs> pollution. Someone commented it uh, in yeah. something the other day. I forgot what it was. But it was, was on the uh, the the sh promo short we did for the New Year's bonus podcast, which is like outperforming every other short we've done. Which is so funny because it's the one where I put my ass on the line, like jokingly dissing New York, and now it's like, oh cool, eighty thousand people have seen this without context. I mean, that's what we signed up for, but like, <laughs> <laughs> we know the so game, it's, we know the rules. <laughs> yeah, it's very very funny to me. Also, someone asked if I got grounded for using my parents' Netflix account. No, Netflix just kicks people off now. Yeah, no, Netflix did the grounding, <laughs> yeah. not science my parents. parents don't care. Also, Netflix is like, remember, you're only allowed to password share within your family. But also, if you're password sharing within your family, go fuck yourself, and you're not allowed to do that anyway. Memento yeah. Mori, cocksuckers, now pay up. <laughs> you're not family if you don't live in the same IP address. I'm like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah, God I forbid you have you watch Netflix on your iPad while you're in the living room of your parents' home. Like, no, it's 
It's fucking stupid, and they're trying to overcorrect for a problem that doesn't exist because something something infinite growth, something something unsustainable. Just watch anything that Yahtzee's put out recently. <laughs> 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 fucking <laughs> true. <laughs> web wings, let's go. Web oh, wings. love these. The web wings? Don't mind me just drinking my potassium supplements. Yeah. What if you get all that sand? Pinky just did! Picture the moment people who only play video games discover that Brooklyn exists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, apparently. I did try to see if I could find any of my old apartments from while I was in there from my uh, boyfriend was playing the game and swinging around. And uh, because of the way that they condensed the streets, neither of my apartments. Well, one of them is just fully just out of the map, but the other one just does not exist in this game. <laughs> there was a very salty one Polygon article about exactly that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. You gotta make the game map make sense. I, I don't begrudge them their condensing of Manhattan, but I was like, ah. I remember that was our oh, first know. grievance with Watch Underscore Dogs. Um, because oh, it came yeah. out when we were in high school, and it was like, we've lovingly recreated the city of Chicago. And we were like, shit, really? How lovingly? And the answer was not. It was well, not. Um, did you just call it watch underscore dogs? Yeah. She said what you said. Um, <laughs> in this case, yeah, the, there are a lot of things that it did which was pretty stupid, which is have an entire mountainous region just, like, off the side of the river to Chicago. That's Aggressively that's not how Illinois yeah. works. <laughs> and the entire city just, like, drops off um after like the hancock building like there's no north uh -huh. side it doesn't exist uh yeah. which is and there's certainly wrong. no south side really so but, it's just so funny but the the way they do the downtown like the stuff like the streets the lights the the setup of just the composition of a like a downtown chicago loop city street that much is really good it does look all right aesthetically but like so do a lot of games you know it's <laughs> it's not exactly getting the actual Chicago thing across. This is like um, the very first Dresden Files book, uh, which was written, I guess, before Jim Butcher did much like looking into Chicago. Because at one point he described a character going to like the seedy north side, and it's yeah. like, no, 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 wrong direction, bud. Uh, also, only if you're a Sox fan. <laughs> oh. A lot of people are uh, discussing. Apparently, Wally was very upset about. Uh, pizza on his stream last night, so... Oh no! <laughs> I read good luck with that. Wally is constantly upset about pizza. I've met the man a couple times, and almost every single time we've had some sort of argument about pizza. And I don't even, like, necessarily just... Like, I, I have no dog in this fight. Billy just eats whatever pizza is available to us, but, like... God, man. Well, I hope he can forgive me, but I also wow. kind of stand by what I said. <laughs> Oh I hope he can see it in his heart to understand that I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of pizza opinions. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> you're allowed. To, you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's the spirit. Yeah, I will. I will give Watch Underscore Dogs a lot of shit for the geographic layout of the city. That was pretty abysmal. But like. The, like, if you place yourself in any, like, random downtown street, you're like, yeah, this is, like, this is, like, right next to the Daily Plaza. Like, this looks legit. The, like, the, the positioning is right. Grant Park mm. is right. The the vibes when you're downtown and nowhere else in the city, only the loop, are correct. <laughs> oh, I get it, because it looks like there's an underscore on the picture. No, there is an underscore also in the title itself. No, I don't. Because it's, oh, it's like a hacker thing. It's like... It's like how in file names, you know, you gotta underscore that shit. No, I oh understand. God, do they not that. actually have but the, like, the underscore I don't think in there's the actually an underscore. Oh god damn it! <laughs> That's not true. That, well, no. It might no. be difference in formatting. Because... Okay. <laughs> we don't need to argue about an underscore in a really old game. Watch underscore dogs on Steam. Watch dogs yeah. stylized as watch underscore dogs. It's on Wikipedia. <laughs> yes, but stylized. Okay. What? <laughs> Oh, it's not the title, we just put that on the cover of the box. <laughs> Everyone will understand. There's a lot of lines on the cover of the box. Hello, Cleo. <laughs> We've got the right kind of like OSP Civil War energy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we got too many of us in one place. Yeah. Yes, Camel Case is better than Underscores. I agree. I don't know. I prefer underscores when I'm naming my files, but I think it's just because the first uh, contract work I did, that was the way that we did it. And so now it's just permanently ripped into my brain, you know? That's fair. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's ever, like, 
looked at my files they're just chaotic so and... much of my job is file management <laughs> i mean my old job i did do a lot of file management but like no one else had to look at them it, with the one exception <laughs> of like we did a lot of sample processing and so my supervisor and i shared a computer so that i had to name like nicely but i i did campbell case like what the run was and the date you grow which i thought worked really well days. compared to my old version which was just like this run one this run two this run three and then my supervisor was like i what what are these what <laughs> i do not know what you are i like that the subtitles don't admit that this is craven yet they just say great hunter yeah they make a, a really compelling case for craven being fucking terrifying in this game Mm. Old Spider-Man 2 asked the question, why should I care about Craven? <laughs> Someone asked how the job hunt's going. It's going pretty well. Um, still don't have a job, but I've had some I interviews. And... An <clears throat> we'll see. Yeah. And mm. this is what you find. Not a lot happens between Thanksgiving and New Year's, is what I've learned yeah. through this whole process. Almost everything, well, even halfway corporate, basically shuts down, and sometimes even for the first week of January, too. Yeah, so like things are just yeah. kind of starting to pick up again. It's fun, because it's uh, the entire rest of the world shuts down, and then every single person that I work for is like, we have holiday projects, so it ends up being the exact inverse for me, and then this week I'm like, I got nothing going on. Creative versus Everyone corporate. chilled out. <laughs> Yeah. And now I have the most dangerous game. New Yorkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cleo became a donut. She's just a nappy Yay. little me. That's not Spider-Man 2, that's a tree. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> that was wow. That was the spirit of Dunkey possessing me for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's not just Zach's PS5 Spider-Man 2.5 remastered edition. Someone compared my job hunt so to Craven. The... Appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry, what were you gonna say, Indigo? Is that the uh, story portion of the intro done? Like, are we at the ripping point of the stream? Or <laughs> there's a little more. Oh there's a little more story. But... Scene. Oh, were we not supposed to be riffing that whole time? <laughs> no, no, Indigo, no, go I, for it. I, I would like to talk about an entirely. You want to talk about Baldur's Gate? Just talk about Baldur's Gate. Yes, Hell but yeah. I have one very specific complaint. Okay. I just started playing it the last week of December because that was when I had access to the game. Great. I was going into it and I knew going into it so so many things about the game I thought. I thought I knew, you know, a lot of stuff because I've been seeing people posting about it all the time. I, people of the internet, why did I know every single goddamn line that Twink Elf was going to say before he said it? Because y'all had so Said, uh, said put clips of it up, but no one fast. mentioned that J.K. Simmons is in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Why did yeah, who is he? Who is he? Who is he? <laughs> he plays like a he plays a villain in Act Two. He's a Catherine. <laughs> <Thor. laughs> <laughs> How did we just we, we just skip that part in the like talking about the game? No one Simmons thought really to mention to have had J.K. The... Simmons shows up. He really seems to have had the ideal career path because, like, he's always in the weirdest shit, but he always seems to be having such a good time. And don't get me wrong, he's doing great. Uh, this is not a knock on J.K. Simmons in any way. He's great as Catherick, but like, oh my god! <laughs> what? Well, the whole like, this is the, uh, this is, the this down is the... bad levels that you guys are for. <laughs> We're so many of these characters that J.K. Simmons didn't come up at all. Well, this is the indicator I had for how fucking long the game is. Because, like, for the first, like, month it came out, all I was seeing anywhere was people being like, Oh my god, hot vampire elf man who kind of sounds like the worst until he decides to stop being such an asshole. And then, like, like a month and a half later, I was, like, on a train. I was like, what's going on in the Baldur's Gate 3 tag? And then Tumblr was like, hey, there's lesbians in this thing. <laughs> like, yeah. The fact that Tumblr took that like... fucking long to find them told me how long the game was. Yeah, well, the, a lot of the early stuff of the game, too, like, because that doesn't show up until Act 2. And I think a lot of, um, pretty much everything I saw about the game for a long time was Act 1 only because of early access. That was what was available. Um, but it is, yeah, I'm like... Now I've seen a lot of stuff for some later things in the game, but somehow, despite that, J.K. Simmons still just never came up. <laughs> like, appreciate the person who said simp simping so hard they forgot about simping. I know! <laughs> it's crazy! 
I play a bar bard, bard in Baldur's Gate because I Shocking. just built a character from an old home game, and I was like, I just want to, I want to play something familiar. I'm doing this first run. I'm just going through it. I'm just taking what happens to me as it happens. I'm just playing the game. Just play the game, and then I will start to do all the very particulars of it. But for now, for now, one guess to guess what I play. Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> Good work, team. Yeah, both of us are just playing uh, the build of, char uh, of characters we played before, I imagine. Yes. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. This is, I'm probably um, going to be that guy who watches like a full-length commentary list play I at some am, And this is... Sh people, where I am in the game, I am st I, I've jumped down the tube in Moonrise Tower. I am in the basement where there is a bunch of goop, and that's uh, where I left off before we started streaming. So... <laughs> Um, going so great. Things are doing great. Danny. I have to go find J.K. Simmons again. And... Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Indigo may be playing Danny, or Indigo may be playing one of her many other bards. I'm not playing Danny because you can't just play Danny in Baseball or Escape because uh, the Fire Genasi and the Artificer are two things that do not exist in that game. <laughs> Your best Ooh. player character choices. So even if I wanted to play Danny, I don't know that I could. Um, uh, I'm pay playing a confusingly named character from a home game so yeah you're, you're oh, playing the character well, that requires explanation <laughs> real quick uh one thing that they're they're very consciously doing at the beginning of this game is kind of a, a, a soft correction from uh spider-man is a surveying cop in the first game where it's like oh no 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 this spider-man in this game is a fireman who says genki we don't spy on people we're not batman the dark knight 2007 or whenever the fuck that movie <laughs> came out uh, it, very conscious choice by the developers to make nice. Spider-Man a fireman and not a policeman. I like it. Mm, nice. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a fireman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that's really my only big Baldur's Gate take, because I'm still working my way through the game, is... How the hell did I not hear about J.K. Simmons sooner? Yeah. I can't believe I discovered that for myself playing the game this late into it being out. But it's fun, and you should play it if you haven't already. It'll give it here for a reason. Uh, Everyone's but just, just like, blinded by it. the light just bouncing off of Asterion. Uh, like, look, I him. get it. His lines are very funny. I, I keep him in my party a lot for a reason. But oh my god! <laughs> How do you not mention the J.K. Simmons of it all? That feels crazy to me. <laughs> It is extremely funny to me seeing this entire thing from the outside. <laughs> Criminal. <laughs> I can't believe that, that like, I, there, I of course expect that there are things that did, I haven't seen spoiled. I have, I'm not, like, seeking out spoilers. I just never imagined that J.K. Simmons would be the surprise twist. And this is the second time in, like, a year that J.K. Simmons has showed up in something. I've been like, what the hell is J.K. Simmons in this? Oh, uh, when did it happen elsewhere? Uh, the first one was, I was watching, me and my boyfriend were watching Defending Jacob, which is very bad and you shouldn't watch it, it's on Apple TV, but, yeah. like, it's boring, guys. but, you shouldn't watch it. at Here's the end it of, like, the fourth episode or so, uh, they do a little scene, like, a little, uh, anti-cold open in the, the little end card thing, and J.K. Simmons shows up in it, and it's like, he's gonna be a character now, and I'm like, I guess now we have to care about this because J.K. Simmons has just shown up, and now we have to finish the show out. Uh, someone asked if Red and Blue are in touch with Tim. I'm assuming you mean Hello Future Me. And well, right now he's on a boat. <laughs> yeah, right now he's on a boat, but yeah, we we actually talked with uh, him and his wife shortly before Yeah. Shortly before they got on said boat. Yeah. He's uh, going on a cruise, uh, and I told him about cool history yeah, things he cruise. should check out in the course of his cruise. Also, Follow cruise their Instagrams yet. if you want to see more. <laughs> yeah. Especially uh, his wife, Laura, well, who has amazing photography back. skills, so. Yeah. Favorite? J.K. Simmons is in the dub of Boy and the Heron? <laughs> <laughs> is the stream just going to be, where's J.K. Simmons? I can read his... He's everywhere! I can He's read been the yellow M&M for decades! <laughs> Somehow Hold people on, don't know that! Uh, what He's the best part of Kung Fu Panda 3! <laughs> He's in Kung Fu Panda I mean, 3. Is it, he's the bad guy in Kung Fu Panda 3. You know, I can't remember the last time I watched Kung Fu Panda 3, but I believe you. It's mm -hmm. not, I mean, it's probably far the worst installment of the Kung Fu Panda trilogy, <laughs> but it is a pretty okay movie. For inexplicable reasons, they use, uh, uh like a orchestral remix of a pop song. Uh, hold on, let me, uh, so... I think it's like... Imagine Dragons! They just used an orchestral remix of the song I'm So Sorry by Imagine Dragons as the main villain's theme. I don't know why they did that. 
but he's okay. Oh, look at this IMDB page. Also, thank you uh, to everyone who has continued to donate. I may have missed some of you, but go to girl with a $5 donation. Really appreciate it. The little donations really add up, people, so while we definitely appreciate the big donations, do not get me wrong, a lot of what we raise for charity is the little ones. Yeah. Also, cool game detail. The sand around here sticks around for most of the game. You see the cleanup process taking a while between... Did you see that guy just go flying in yeah. the background? Oh my god, <laughs> someone clipped that. Uh, I don't even know if you can do that on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you can. Oh, I, I'm behind enough that I just saw it and it's beautiful. <laughs> like, what the fuck happened there? Oh, jeez. That was funny. I, oh, yeah, I wish I could fi uh, figure out. Oh, no. But yeah, um, they, they wanted to make a sense of persistence in what's going on in the world, so they have a lot of stuff take a while to, to get cleaned up, and some areas get cleaned up faster. So you'll see over the course of the game, like keep an eye out for it, there's obviously a lot of stuff like on top of buildings and streets that are entirely blocked off. Eventually it'll be like the streets are clear, but there's some stuff piled up on the sidewalks or in parks, and there's some stuff on the buildings, or okay, like everything's pretty clear, but there's like a thin piling of sand around. It's really cool how they... Uh, how they show the um, uh, persistence of, of what's going on in the city. That's fun. That's definitely not something that comes up a lot of the time, especially in superhero media. Yeah, J.K. Simmons is definitely not in The Boy in the Heron. Oh, okay. We've been misled. Oh, man. That sucks. He does voice Omni-Man in Mortal Kombat 1. Okay, then. Yeah. Well, that's because he voices Omni-Man in Invincible. I know, but the IMDb showed me Mortal Kombat 1 before it showed me Invincible. Uh, <laughs> right. And I was like, oh, who is he in Mortal Kombat 1? Thinking that maybe he was another surprise video game appearance, but no, actually, it's a tie-in to a show where he does roll, so that makes sense. Also, Good clip. Uh, Just in case General Catherick Thorne voice. I can't believe I didn't know! Thank you to Sonic oh Psych God. Psycho for the $5 donation, Anonymous for the 20 and anonymous for the two dollar donation did Thank we you. ever explain in this stream what we are donating uh unicef, uh, UNICEF. medical supplies um okay, food uh security and um advocating for, for children's rights emotion. and safety all around the world good Maybe stuff yeah yeah so if you don't know unicef uh works in over 190 countries around the world uh they really mainly help with, as we okay, mentioned, I uh, children's rights, now helping with things like vaccines, with food to combat malnutrition, um, basically all sorts of things. Their, I get it now. their motto is uh, trying to drive change for children and young yes. people every day across the globe, Friendly relay um, network and they drawing. really help to... Close. But you know, work really on what defending children's rights, uh, helping with just signals. basic things like food, Over water, shelter, um, and basically from childhood to adolescence, you. they try to help children have a better life. So we really appreciate all your donations. Um, it's a really you good charity, we'll one we've signal. fundraised yeah. before. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, anything you can donate really, really does help. And uh, yeah, thank you to Gogo Gleovich for the fifty dollar and Blaster uh, two one eight seven for the twenty dollar donations. Okay, local network is connected. Right. Yeah, that covered the sand. Gosh. <laughs> like it gets New everywhere or something. I see it. It's pretty coarse. Little little rough. Coarse, little rough. Photo of yeah. New York when some loudmouth says that the Tribune Tower is better. <laughs> No, that's salt. I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we should do this. I think we should swap out being salty for being sandy. <laughs> Better than, like, what specifically? The entire city of New York? Because that feels like a... Better than any different. single Voices building anywhere else. <laughs> See, I successfully pulled aggro on that short because everyone was getting on my ass for pizza rather than your ass for dissing every skyscraper in New York. <laughs> I said, like, the Singer building's gorgeous. There's a lot of really beautiful stuff in New York. They actually had the smarts to figure out how to zone a city properly so you can have skyscrapers in a way that doesn't just, like, destroy visibility uh, and sunlight at ground level. Um, uh, but I didn't say that. I talked shit because I thought it'd be funny to talk up the Trippy Tower. Jason Isaacs is in Baldur's Gate 3? 
Honestly, I believe that. He's kind of in everything. I don't know who that is. Really what? He played um, Lucius Malfoy and like five million other people. Oh, okay. okay. He's the uh, he's the judge in Castlevania season three. Um, oh. Yeah. When I was watching, uh, let me just look, pull up his. Uh, I got jump scared by young Jason Isaacs in an episode of Highlander the series I was watching one time. Well, be Pella. <laughs> Miles said big boy. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Mimi big boy. Hefty boy. Oh, he's Gortash, whoever that is in Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, he's a big bad. I haven't hit him yet. Huh? Um, yeah. Damn, he's done a lot of stuff this year. I think I like this kind of I guess in the last few years. Whoa, he was King Arthur Pendragon in Scooby Doo, the Sword and the Scoob. Yo, the Sword and the Scoob. <laughs> Gortash is the one I think who looks the most like, um, like a Pete Wentz type, you know? Like, he looks like he should be the frontman for Fallout Boy. Oh, is it that? Hold on, let me look him up. I think I know who you're talking he, about. Oh, it's that guy! Pop yeah. It's the guy with the hair. Yeah, I know this guy. J.K. Simmons yeah. is in Mortal Kombat. I've seen a lot of people uh, yeah, being as like, Omni wow, Gortash is so hot. And I'm like, he looks like any sad emo man in 2004. I don't want to diss anybody's flavor. Of the month, nah, and I don't. I, I know if, if we thought the pizza was bad, this might actually be bad. Um, I don't get the Asterian thing. Yeah. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I'm I, sorry. To be fair, so Ace. <laughs> well, yes, but I've, there are characters I think are attractive, but admittedly, the personality is a huge part of that. And Asterian <laughs> just seems really annoying. <laughs> it's pretty annoying. See, that's the thing though. Like, I there's a little bit of like a uh, digital uncanny valley for me with like romance and games where I usually am not super into it, and it's still not my favorite part of Baldur's Gate by a long run. But I do think that they have done a really good job of writing the origin characters that you can romance, and Asterian's is notably pretty good. Uh, I get it now, having played the game, why the hype is there. I, I, I get how you might not, but I gotta go to bat for people on this one. I understand it. I, <laughs> I guess, get where I mean, they're coming fair. from. He's this his plot is so well written, and like he does get better. He either gets better or worse as a person, depending on how you, as a character, play your run, which I think yeah. is smart on their part. That's kind of cool, but like truly, the background radiation of my life is just like, oh my gosh, this guy is so dreamy, and it is the most normal-looking man I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not gonna be the person that they're being like, well, we should all be making edits of like his still digital face, but like, I, the dialogue lines are good. They won, they won best performance for a reason. <laughs> but then his voice. <laughs> like every I mean, time every I've seen him, I'm like, this is this is the heartthrob. He sounds like Prince Charming from Shrek. This is a problem that I was running into when I was because I started playing for the first time. I'm like, whatever character approaches me first, that's gonna be who I romance in this run. So I want to just like see what the game will point me towards. And Asterion was the first character who's like, okay, hey, hot stuff. And I'm like, okay, great. So I have to. I'll just do the one that everyone's been talking about on this run, and then I don't have to worry about in the future. Uh -huh. um, yeah, no, it's 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 solid. I I can't knock that. Uh, but it it was tough in the beginning because everything he said did sound like Prince Charming in Shrek too. And uh, you get over that hump eventually. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you're having fun. I'm having fun now. Um, I hit Act Two and everyone wants to date me now, and I'm like, no, you guys, I'm trying to. I don't want to do this. All. I don't want this anymore. <laughs> Everyone's cutscenes keep being romantic, and I can't parse which ones are gonna be and which ones aren't. And I'm like, I don't want this. I, 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 I will I'm say that is a problem. problem I, I only have two hands. <laughs> I haven't felt so seen since Yahtzee did that video of like. I just kind of want to okay, chat with so. these characters and be, Ooh, like, friendly. I don't want to have to fuck everybody to be a good friend to them. Yeah, no, uh -huh. every time I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, like, I see what you're, I see, like, how you feel. The character's like, oh, and it starts doing the, like, romantic music. I'm like, stop! No. <laughs> yeah, because there's, like, like, act one, there's, like, a couple scenes. They're like, oh, that's kind of cute. And, like, you have one particular instance of, like, choose who you might be interested in later on. And then act two hits, and they're like, okay, well, now we've added all these other scenes that can happen when you long rest. And every single one of them is, like, do you want to start dating now? And that's so I've just been, like, running around camp every night, like, oh, there's so many exclamation points on these scales looking at a picture of his ex. Surely this one can't be romantic. And then it was. Then what, you think a guy looking at a picture 
Whoever's ex can't possibly be down for a romantic conversation. I figured there'd be an easier out for me, you know? I thought, oh, he's looking at a picture of his ex. Surely I can spin this so I can be like, hey, man, are you doing okay? And he's like, romantic yes, thank finger you traps. so much. It is, it, it wow, you really like, care. No matter how many trap disarm toolkits I may have, there's no way for me to disarm the trap of literally everybody wants to date me. <laughs> Everyone in this camp desires me carnally. <laughs> um, I walked up and they just auto-played a scene and Will's like, I'm dancing. Do you want to dance with me? I'm like, no, I'm back. There's no way for me to escape. There's social quagmire without hurting your feelings. And now I feel bad because I don't want to hurt your feelings. I guess important question. Can you set up your teammates with each other after you start romancing one of them? Uh, no, you can only oh, but only that would be so fun. Yeah, there's a few variants of it where, like, you, I think you can be dating multiple people at the same time, but there's no version of it where you can set them up uh, a la, like, a Fire Emblem game where if you just have them stand next to each other enough times, they'll be like, I guess we're in love now. <laughs> Great. Just Let's wanted to do a quick donation up. call. Uh, anonymous with 20. Can't think of a name with 20. Adam Zil... I don't know how to say your last name. I'm so sorry. With yeah. 20. <laughs> Um, and then I don't know if I missed any. If I did, I'm very sorry. Um, but yes, thank you so much for your donations. We really appreciate it. Well, that's a poor yeah. car on these people. Ouch. Oh. And <laughs> I don't want to knock the everyone being uh, hot and bothered in the game because I think it's a funnier outcome than it being a little like too much in the other direction. I just wish that I'm there was sorry. some variant of Blue, I just saw you out. pull the car out of the sandbank onto a prone person. Yeah. Wait till you see who's in the car. <laughs> oh good, so worth it. Is it, it. J.K. Simmons? <laughs> it's J. Jonah Jameson. So I'm not wrong, J.K. Simmons has yeah. shown up again. <laughs> no, this isn't, by, uh, this isn't J.K. Simmons. What? So they got J.K. Simmons for Baldur's Gate 3, but they couldn't put him in Spider-Man 2, where he's famous. He was too if, busy doing Baldur's Gate 3. If if this is J.K. Simmons, I will be surprised, because it to me it doesn't sound like him. Hold on. Also, someone said I might be quiet. Uh, no, I just have this problem where I forget that I have to speak into the microphone. Um, <laughs> so I'll be, like, turning around. Simmons. Oh, no, that's Spider-Man 2, the 2004 movie. Spider-Man 2, PS5, please. No, it is not performed by Hollywood actor J.K. Simmons. Yeah. No! Um, Who is it who is performed he? by? I, I just looked up, is J.K. Simmons in Spider-Man 2 PS5? Hold on, I'll no. find him. I'm on the IMDb page. Darren DePaul. Hmm. Who has been in a bunch of things. Oh, he's Reinhardt in Overwatch 2. That's fun. Really? I guess probably Reinhardt in original Overwatch as well, given that Overwatch 2 yeah. is just overpriced uh, DLC. I will, uh, I'm sure this actor is a very great yes, voice actor, me, but uh, the fact that they didn't get J.K. Simmons, that's uh, why they didn't win. The fact that they didn't get J.K. Simmons in the same year that Baldur's Gate 3 did get J.K. Simmons. That's why Baldur's Gate 3 beat them out. Go to the attitudes, you know? Uh, oh, poor Spidey. <laughs> I might go get a snack. Yeah, you go want ahead. No, I'm good. Okay. A snack? Time to go get the crunchiest snack I own. No. BRB. Yay! <laughs> Where's Mr. Sumita? Oh, he just left. Something about going on vacation? A very funny meme what? I saw was someone who took a... Uh, picture of I, th I think it was it might have been also, Skilla, we gone, um, a YouTube I, uh, I channel does a lot of like game news and, and analysis and reviews and stuff. Uh, he it, like it said the Game Awards, but the war was blacked out, so it just said the game ads, which is really what it was. There were hardly any awards actually given, and even when oh, people boy. got up, it was like you have thirty seconds. And if God help you if you don't speak English as your first language, so you really only have 15 seconds because you need to get it translated. The disrespect to the Nintendo gang there, God. Yet at the same time, it's like, here's Kojima fucking around on stage for seven minutes. Enjoy. Like, okay. Thanks, Jeff. It was neat. But was it seven minutes neat? I don't think so. I would have liked to hear what the developers who worked their asses off this year had to say. Because 2023 was such a good year for video games, but it was such a horrible year for the people who made video games. Yeah. 
The Game Awards this year was the only time I've ever seen the Oscars favorably compared sure to anything. Mm. Figure it out. Yeah, it's as a you know guilty pleasure lover of the Oscars, not the institution, but the actual uh, uh, motion of watching the ceremony. Right. Um, I, I think there's a way to do an award show well, and I think we I, we've we've strayed the path from what makes award shows fun. You know, like yes, the the biggest thing should always be honoring whatever the industry and particularly the people in that industry is who are making the things, whether it's the game devs or you know. Whoever in, the is getting their film awards, uh, they need to have time to speak. That's that the biggest thing. Well, listen, but the second yeah, thing is it needs to be a little silly and fun. And that means having, yesterday. like, for the Oscars, I think that means having one host running, again, which I think is a thing that they might not it's ever really go back to, which makes me very sad. Um, but, man, I... It's so much... Even if the host is bad, at least we all get to, like, watch it and be mad about it together, you know? I feel like many many award shows should learn the lesson of... Well, at least we're all on this together. <laughs> yeah. The the closest thing they had was an opening sequence by Chris Judge, voice of, of Kratos in, in God of oh, War. Yeah. And and he's great. He had the one joke of like my, my speech from last year was longer than this year's Call of Duty campaign, which was objectively hilarious, but the fact that the entire room kinda tensed up after that is a sign that the the tone is not really right because one would hope that like those are the kind of jokes that you can make in a group of peers and like those kinds of jokes get flung at the Oscars and the Grammys and the Emmys all the time like that's half the point of the show is to kind of make those kinds of jokes but in an environment where the people aren't having fun that's clearly a sign that something needs to change where like something that is very much a staple of other award shows where it's like we can all like laugh at this this thing that we do uh, kind of like the silly nature of having an award show of being very like performative and self-congratulatory like we can we can laugh at ourselves for as like a like two seconds and if that joke was like crossing the line the vibes are wrong uh in a yeah. situation like that it, it it shows that um uh the the focus is 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 misplaced and people are a little too not to like blame the developers, it's definitely like a case of the way the show is constructed that like this one joke was like, <gasps> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. I feel bad, I didn't get to press triangle to high five Miles. That's no. gonna haunt me. Oh, Thank no. you to Anonymous for the $20 donation. Here is a very orthodox looking church. <laughs> Mm. Man, they really lovingly render New York in this one. Really yeah. It's very pretty. This are my building. Playing <laughs> this game makes me like New York more. <laughs> Not that I didn't before. I'm one of those sickos who likes New York, but like this game really makes me like New York a lot. Yeah, I mean, as a card-carrying New York lover, if anything, I think the avenues look a little bit too wide and sunny. Like, half of the fun of New York is how cramped it is. Well, right now we're in uh, we're in Brooklyn, so uh, there's ah, a little right, bit. Right, where you're allowed to actually have like wide streets and stuff. <laughs> Although the last time I was in Brooklyn, the the amount to which the streets were just full of parked cars, like like not even oh these cars are just not moving because the traffic is low, but like the street is full of cars that are parked. You cannot get a car through it. It was really weird. I don't know what was up with that. How you doing, son? Robbie, hi. I know this is out of the blue, but this whole quest line, the uh, show me New York, when you just take pictures of people doing stuff around the city, is really a large part of, of why I like this game's portrayal of New York so much. Oh. In the same way that in the Sex and the City series, New York is the fifth character, it really does seem like in Spider-Man 2 it's the third Spider-Man of sorts, you know? Hmm. She's out of line, but she's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not out of line, I'm speaking the truth, and I'm using a pop culture reference point that is known to many people and i think I mean, for that reason i should not be banned i don't know how much i agree with the general consensus that the people of new york are a true spider-man it's like no spider-man is spider-man the people of new york are just important in the way that spider-man works i don't know if i would call the new yorkers a spider-man but spider-man is yeah. not spider-man without new yorkers he doesn't work well, in other cities yeah that's true He's a real homegrown hero kind of situation. Yeah. Which is why I like the general consensus that, like, yeah, a lot of people know who Spider-Man is. 
But like, what are they gonna do? Fuck him over? No. He's there. Yeah. It's like New York is everybody's city and Spider-Man is everybody's hero. It doesn't quite work the same in other places, even in like other large American cities. Like mm. Spider-Man uh, in Chicago, I... it's not gonna work. <laughs> it's not no. quite the same. Apologize. I thought you guys were saying part of the thing that I was saying was wrong was referencing Sex in the City and not uh, the Spider-Man comparison to the city of New York. Uh, yeah, sure. I probably could have phrased that part better. Uh, but I stand by it being the same thing that they do in Sex in the City. <laughs> that is the first thing that caught me, and I wanted to give you a pass on it after you, you pled your case. Sorry, we're still on the delay. I just saw the Spider-Man pointing thing. Yeah. God. At some point, grown-ups learned about memes uh, in Spider-Man, and from this point forward, we have been scourged by the constant presence of the Spider-Man pointing. We've memes. never known peace. Snakes have begun manifesting in our homes. Yeah, uh, yeah, the snake plague. We all <laughs> seen it. I didn't really like the way they did it in um, Across the Spider-Verse. I think it was oh, just... No over the top enough that it was yeah. like, yeah, we know what we're doing. I think they had their one big joke with it and then they didn't feel the need to do it again. I think the yeah. only thing, like it worked in the after credits for the first movie. And then I was like, oh, if they do this again, I'm not gonna be too crazy about it. But then they did one nice little big scene with it and they had their big laugh moment. And then we moved on, we didn't have to talk about it anymore. I think that was the perfect way to handle it. Yeah. And cause it kicks off like, what, like a 20 minute action scene with no breaks. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have time to be frustrated. Yeah! I mean, that movie is very, very good. I am very excited for, like, because I think the best picture category at the Oscars is pretty contentious this year, but I am particularly interested to see who gets nominated for best animated feature, because I think that there is a lot of really good options this year, and a lot of them, they got snubbed at the Golden Globes, so I'm really curious to see if the, if the Academy picks it up. Not hopeful, but curious. Um, because Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem had fantastic animation and it's a very tight little movie. Do I think it's necessarily going to win Best Animated? No, but I think that it deserves to be nominated because the style of animation was so fantastic and is like a great expression of the medium. Nimona came out this year at a similar, like, the style of animation is really expressive and a great expression of the media medium. Boy and the Heron came out this year that's probably going to get nominated. Um, Across the Spider-Verse is probably going to get nominated. Uh, I'm not saying that they don't deserve to, but like those are the kind of like shoey ones in my mind. Right. But I, I think the real thing that's going to make this a contentious category is not because they should win or be nominated, but like Elemental and Wish are the big studio pictures oh, this year. Oh, right. And but, like Elemental, I've heard people say like is not awful, but like didn't do great box office wise. And Wish is pretty maligned across the board. Uh, yeah, but both I think... got nominated for Golden Globes, I believe, over mm -hmm. a lot of those other flicks that do a lot more with the medium and were much, much more popular. So I'm, I'm interested to see if the Oscars at least correct the nominations. And I'm a little nervous that um, the Disney machine will push Wish through, even though it should probably be the boy in the hair. And if it's going to be one of the obvious picks and I would love it to be Mutant Mayhem, but I don't know that it's going to be that. <laughs> What I've heard is that Elemental is actually good. It just was like horribly under advertised. Yeah. And Wish is legitimately bad. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm back with yeah, that. that's kind of what I've heard too. I'm sure <laughs> Elemental is uh, a perfectly fun movie, but it did seem like they were, they, it, that had weird bad marketing and like Wish, everything I've seen from it is just so Utterly soulless. soulless. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it is the Disney movie, and so I have a feeling that because of how much of the Academy is Disney, there's a yeah. pretty good chance it gets nominated. Even and, and I'm hoping against hope that it doesn't pull out a win just on like familiarity, because there are so many great animated features this year. Um, that features that like do a lot with the medium of animation and play with their art style a lot. That like makes it a category that's actually kind of interesting to watch for once. Usually there's like a pretty clear front runner, but I think this year it's yeah. gonna have a chance for it to be something a little unique. Like Honestly, though, rough year for Disney between out. Wish being so terrible and uh, Steamboat Willie hitting public domain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Also, I don't know if we've been calling out donations, but Adrian, thank you for your $50 donation. Um, anonymous with 20. Uh, Tim, DC, and Inc. with 30. Anonymous with 20. And a fourth to be reckoned with with 20. Uh, I think that's all of them. Uh, sorry if I missed anything while getting the world's crunchiest snacks. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and also cheese. All good. 
the uh, latest Rolling with Difficulty episode just went live, so I have been babysitting oh, all of my nice. three tabs. All right, I'm I can remember to... what happened to that one. I'm gonna do this. I edited uh... it like yesterday, and I uh, cool. I also <laughs> wish I remember what happened to it. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, you can do the blue one. Yeah, when when we get to it, I'm gonna be rocking this bad boy here, but we're not yeah. there yet. So for yeah, now, yeah, I was gonna say the obvious suit pick when you get to it is Bodega Cat backpack, right? Like we're yeah. getting there eventually. Here's the thing. Bodega Cat backpack pretty far down. Okay, so it's not Damn. this one. It's not this one. It's not this one. No, no. I know no, my. No, I've been watching my boyfriend no, play this game uh, no, when I'm not playing Baldur's no, Gate, and he's pretty no, far along, and he no, just got the Bodega Cat backpack. But we, if we're playing through the whole game, eventually we're gonna find it, right? Where is we're it? Most likely. Um. That's not it. Cleo, quit Cleo. scratching up. <laughs> psst, psst, psst. Where is it? Miles Morales. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, yeah, it's 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 right here, level twenty four. It's gonna be a bit. It's gonna huh. be a bit. Cleo, someday up. we hold out hope. Classic suit. I don't know what the Bodega Cat backpack thing is, so I'm excited to find out. Uh, it's um, exactly what it sounds like. It's a I assume so. a backpack with a cat in it, but the cat does have a little Spidey mask on. Yes, that's what I wanted. Exactly. Oh, it gives you everything you want and more. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a special animation where the cat might punch. That's so if you like. Yeah, right. there's a special take that animation. It's like Meow's Morales or something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a real thing. It's not. I didn't no, make it I, up. I, I, no, I know. It's still funny. Hey, I'll just meet you there. <laughs> okay, cool. You and Miles get back to school, okay? Yep. Yep. Quite a first day for you. It's very fun to just Tomorrow fling yourself off stuff. We. Sure Woo. Privilege be being spider. Mm -hmm. uh, worse than getting fired. There's a mild suit Even that gives him cat ears. Is that not the dead cat? Uh, that's the oh. Black Panther oh. suit. <laughs> oh, I love that. First time we played this game, we went to the cemetery too early and couldn't find Miles' dad because apparently it doesn't spawn in. Yeah, you need to go there for a mission <laughs> and it only spawns in later, which is You have bullshit. to talk to Info before you can do grave percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this game does have yeah. bell percent. It's not a category on speedrun.com, but you can do a bell percent speedrun where Spider-Man has the symbiote and gets freaked out by a bell when he hits a bell. Hell yeah. What's wrong? I got fired. Everyone looks so different in this game than they did in the first one. Yeah. So excited about this Except for Miles, who looks basically the same, which is cool. Semester plan they gave him more Next hair. We were gonna make a potato-powered helicopter. Well, that, that was actually makes sense. Uh, that um, is generally how humans work. That was actually like kind of a big part of the technological upgrade um, between Miles's game and this one is they were able to like give him more of an accurate fade with. Oh, like more effective dithering technology America. and like some volumetric mumbo jumbo um <laughs> they they were able to give him more authentic hair because the ps5 is better than the ps4 that's extremely cool you'd be fine then because you're the best reporter they have it works it works what you got in there? i don't know what's going on with mj's face that's throwing I'm me a little bit i'm not sure what it is running out of storage at my place would you believe laura bailey I mean, that does make sense. I didn't think they were going to recast her between games, but... Yeah. I didn't realize that she was Laura Bailey in the first game. I can make a difference there. But if I get fired, I don't know what I'll do. That is sort of Laura Bailey's specialty as being the chameleon of the female voice acting world. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think once you've heard her in Soul Eater and once you've heard her in Full Metal Alchemist, you kind of know the entire extent of her range <laughs> and it's kind of easy to hear her. But with all the love of my heart, I think she's an excellent actress. It's just she's one of those people who doesn't really change her underlying vocal tone all that much when she plays a character. She just acts incredibly well through it. Like J.K. Simmons, me. who always sounds exactly the same. <laughs> she fools I would say me, that like J.K. That. Simmons always sounds exactly the same because J.K. Simmons is doing J.K. Simmons every time. I don't know. I feel like to my plebeian ears, I don't gonna, usually clock yeah. Laura Bailey, but I also have a little bit less uh, it's like, exposure to trying to clock a voice actor. Yeah, that's like, fair. I'm with Indigo in this one. Like you have your Nolan North and your J.K. Simmons, where it's like, well, Nolan North actually can can fall into a, a couple of roles. He he surprised me in The Last of Us a lot. But it's like, okay, yeah. like that's this character. That's their voice. Solid. It's always great. But that's them. There are people like Troy Baker who is a bit of a vocal chameleon. But like once you clock 
the underlying thing in his voice. You can be, for instance, watching the GTA 6 trailer, and when the male protagonist says the word trust, you're like, oh, that's Troy Baker. That's immediately, obviously Troy Baker. And then yeah. there's, for me, there's people like, like Laura Bailey, where like between any character on uh, Critical Role and Grace in Stray Gods and now MJ, it's like, I, I wouldn't know that was the same person. She she huh. fools me. She disappears mm-hmm. in the roles. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fair. I, I made a game out of trying to identify voice actors just by year for like yeah. years and years. So yeah, I'm also anyway. newer at it. Um, yeah. Just wanted to mention uh, some different currency donations, but uh, Frederick Davison with, I believe those are Swedish kronas. Mm-hmm. Um, anonymous. Oh, uh, man, that I'm one. Oh, jo- oh boy, you're really testing me today. Uh, I think that's Swiss, uh, 500, and then uh, Anonymous with 100, and Kate Too Late with $5. Appreciate you all. Thank you, everybody. God, I really need to up my, like, currency knowledge. Yo, we destroyed my couch. <laughs> my hand is not I mean, a toy. We all, we all love it when people donate uh, Wait, so California dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, have you thought more about moving in? He says throwing out a three-week-old box of takeout. <laughs> See ya, Jeff. Is Swiss. Thank you. I did get it right. What's it? CHF? Yeah. Oh. For Swiss francs? I think so. I don't know. To be honest... I'd like to take some time off, but I can't really oh, is, This to. happens to me, I read, I don't know if you have the same what experience every time Rolling with Difficulty comes out, but it's like, I, I forget that the hours are like three to four hours. I forget I mean, the episodes are three to four hours long, and I'm like, oh. I can't wait till people see what happens, and I'm like, oh, right, they, I've got I've got to wait for a bit. There's not, a, there's no reactions. <laughs> yeah, I, I have that problem whenever we put out like an extra long video. I'm always yeah. like, well, what do people think about the thing that's 45 minutes in? What do you mean I have yeah, to wait like, at least 45 uh, minutes? Uh-huh. Why are you some not all bold the souls. Part that I know is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know some brave souls do watch things on like double speed to get through them faster, which is pretty mm-hmm. cool and brave on yeah. this channel. <laughs> yeah, people do it for. I mean, for rolling with difficulty, that's not too bad because it's a podcast yes. and like ooh, we're all talking at yeah. as normal a pace as any of us it, have but... for our talking cadence. So that one yeah. I get. But uh, OSP videos, you guys cut pretty tight. Yeah, in your audio. Hi, so baby. that's, that's Hi, baby. Man, I haven't seen these in a while. Uh, also, one P with a uh, five euro, and I'm really just gonna start saying the numbers and like not deal with your curse. Five money. <laughs> it was five. It was one hundred. <laughs> Donated in dollars? Don't care. Donated in Canadian dollars? Don't care. Swiss francs? Oh, don't care. <laughs> your number is five. I like that they're like, yeah, baby Spider-Man looked like Tobey Maguire, and now he's grown up and looks like Tom Holland. You know, the order that that should go in. Yeah. I really liked the, uh, the John Bubniak face version of, of Spider-Man from the first game. It was good. It was, it was, I did like that he kind Spider-Man of looked like face. his own Spider-Man, yeah. and not uh, just a completely yeah. different Spider-Man. He looks a little more unique in this game than he did in the remaster for the first Spider-Man game. That was just like, oh, this is just this is just Tom Holland. This one, he, he looks a little different. I think they they, they tried to pivot a little bit. Um, eh. But I, I still I still like the uh, the uniqueness of the the first Spider-Man. He, yeah, right. You're right. He really did look like um, his own Spidey. Uncle Ben, yeah. looking good. <laughs> Also, uh, oh, we're <laughs> decently past a thousand dollars. Hell yeah! Thank Woo! you, everybody. One thousand two hundred and sixty-eight. Oh, almost nice. Oh, Crusher Hogan versus the Spider. That's the original fight. It's the bone saw of this cinematic universe. <laughs> I don't want to know the context in which he got that, and just like put wow. it up in his room. Like, how long has he had that? Did he have to explain it to May? I. Maybe she thought he was just really getting into <laughs> fighting. Fight club. Yeah, maybe. Also, shout out to the uh, photograph of the original Spider-Man comic in that little mm. little news clipping. Uh-huh. Also, I suppose. Uh, someone asked if you accept space currency. Red and blue probably would, but I don't know if UNICEF does. I would love your space dollars. Also, thank you, Burba Permis, with the 101. It was what? Yay! 
So are we up to a 69? Probably, but it hasn't oh, yeah. really Yeah, 1,369. Yeah, Woohoo! In the wall. Hey, what's, what's wrong? It's nothing. I, I was just... The I heard a rat explanation is so bad. Like, yeah, I punched through my bedroom wall because I thought there was a rat in there. <laughs> like, May must have known for years and years, right? Oh, no, it's it, at the end oh, of the yeah. first game, she makes it abundantly clear she knew. Every year. Right. But that means it's like Peter didn't know that she knew nope. until. Yeah. When I so. tried to add, Someone just mentioned that Aunt May looks top. like Reba, and now I can't unsee it. Reba? Mm, yeah. McIntyre? Hmm? Reba McIntyre. So? I know the name, not so much the face. I scaled back. Uh, yeah, chat yeah. wants to know what are your favorite animals? Balance. Cleo. Like Next specific question. ones? <laughs> yeah, I think the question says what are your fave animals? So you can expand or reduce the scope of that as you wish. I am not here to monitor your answering to the question. <laughs> I like zebras, chinchillas, and uh, horses. I think they're neat. I don't want to be near any of them, but I think they're neat. <laughs> Axolotls have very dopey faces, and I really appreciate that. Mm. Thank you, I Lord like Commander, pangolins. for your five. The name is fun to say. Penguins. Um, pangolin, not penguin. Penguins aren't bad either, I guess, but they're not. They don't got that spot in my heart, you know. Something's gotta give. Are there two reds? No offense. What? We're three different women. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. Ask Indigo about the character she's playing in Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, no, I was there for the original all, campaign. Yeah, and it was before I knew you personally, so I don't no, feel like I know. Crazy <laughs> I had a series of bards for a home game. There were seven of them. They were the seven colors of the rainbow, and the first bard I played, and the only one that I ever got to in the game, because she managed to somehow survive until we stopped playing it, was Scarlet Red. Half-elf bard extraordinaire. And when I was a kid, I fundamentally misunderstood the prompt section when you put your name into Pokemon, and I've played as quote-unquote Red in every single game since then as sort of like a little tradition. And then I became friends with and worked for Red, uh, and now it's very confusing because I still do that for all of my characters. And like my bard in Baldur's Gate is Scarlet Red from that home game, and I named her Red, and she wears a lot of red clothing. I buy every piece of red dye I find in that game. It is the biggest sink of money I have. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's okay. I was but like, before blue was blue. Yeah. I didn't want you guys to worry about that. Yeah, it's That's true. Sometimes, you know, things happen and yeah, we all okay. just have to live with that gets in remission. knowledge. Life takes us in crazy places. I'm not going to stop naming my video game characters red, you know? Like that's... I don't want you to. I think it's funny. Commit to the bit. <laughs> yeah. I'm nothing if not committed to the bit. Um time's sake. It's a date. Yeah, no, I, that, that Pokemon game really set me up for a uh, failure later in life. <laughs> a childhood tradition turned source of misery. <laughs> oh god, that reminds me. Uh, the other day I was on some kind of like 3D remakes of classic anime kick and I watched the... Um, they made like a, a remake of Mewtwo's Revenge or whatever in gorgeously rendered 3D uh, like a few years back and it's on Netflix and I watched it. Um, Mostly because it, it seemed like it was the only like voice work that Dan Green had done in years because he kind of dropped out of the anime dub world for a while, but he he came back to voice me too. And I watched the movie and I was like, this is completely mid. Uh, and it's, uh, but I do respect the parts of the original that they just categorically didn't change. Like, like Mewtwo's like, I see now that it is not the circumstances of one's birth that define you line is exactly the same as the original. <laughs> There's um, some things you just don't change, you know? Where are we going? Yeah, uh, there would have been riots if they got rid of that. Yeah. Keep up. So, um, uh, someone asked, specifically, sure Lego Master 25 oh, yeah. asked really Blue if you plan on doing the Wraith, entry, Prowler, and Chameleon side adventures it. when you eventually, you, more you know, make enough progress to have gotten to those side oh, adventures. Possibly. I want to try to blitz through as much of the story as we can so we can try to, um, do this, um, well, because here's the thing. We're not going to be able to finish this game in two streams. It's it's just too long. So I want to try to get to like a satisfying end of the arc. We might do some other stuff later. This kind of gets into like long-term stream planning that we kind of haven't figured out. I, I think I want to get through this day and see how much we can do. And then we can kind of open it up to doing like other activities and stuff. Um, because there's probably a lot of stream we can get out of this game. Um, but I don't, uh, 
I don't know, and I don't know if I can uh, exercise the, the discipline to, to do a long-standing stream series in the way that, that Red could do Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I tried it with Assassin's Creed, and I just, uh, it didn't really work for me. So. Is it because this, well, I mean, this game is also newer and better, so. Like, well, yeah, but, I don't know, I don't, uh, also streaming is, is different for, for me. I, it, it takes a, a different part of my brain that I'm not used to using. There's some people who are just super comfortable on it, but for like all the setup and stuff, it's just kind of finicky for me. So I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, for, for today, we're just going to try to get through the, the story as quickly as we can. Awesome. The side Thank missions you. are really cool, though. Come on. Thank you to Anonymous for 15. Hated high school. Woo. Mm -hmm. Remember that time Flash and his buddies cornered me and broke my laptop? We lost that presentation for the young entrepreneurs competition. We worked for months. I was on stupid that. and didn't see the plot the twist of the flame mission morning. coming. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure a lot of people saw it way before I did, but I was dumb as hell. They said no. It was after hours. And well, I'm, now I'm excited. Tired <laughs> school. Oh, and anonymous donated fifty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got to this one. Cool. Not gonna lock those. Nah, they're old. Wait, wait. They'll either get stolen or they won't. I remember. <laughs> When you're someone like Harry, you're just like, yeah, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy more, <laughs> whatever. New York City, baby. New York. Coast is clear. I like that Peter and Harry are still conveniently color coded. <laughs> yeah. You sure, the drive is upstairs in your. It's got the green motif. Sure. What? You said you were sure. I was. I mean, I am. It was very cool when they were like, you think you know how Venom's gonna enter the story, but surprise, we're piggybacking him onto a completely different villain origin story. <laughs> yeah, I walked into the room while my boyfriend was playing this game, and I was like, oh, the Green Goblin? And they're like, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. A common misconception. I can see why you might think that, given the history of the character and traditionally who, who plays what role in this, this game. Harry is usually Hobgoblin. Right? New yeah, Goblin. It's, it's, Goblin take two electric boogaloo. Yeah. I wouldn't jump to Venom, you know? I I really like the way they handled a lot of the, uh... There you go. Fuck you, Flash. Um, <laughs> I, I like the way that they, they handle the story, uh, and the way that um, Brian Intahar, the, the creative director of um, the, the team that made this game in Insomniac, said, like, a lot of the people who are going to be playing this game have encountered a version of these stories. So what we want to do is take the components that you're familiar with and remix them in a way that, that gets to something that we haven't really seen before. And it's not just like, oh, let's let's throw new characters at the wall and, and see what sticks. It uses a lot of the same ingredients, but the ways in which it assembles them is so different and leads to a lot of really cool interactions and story structures for just for me what i really like about um this game and we'll we'll kind of see it as we go but the choice to make uh a poor old harry into venom and that whole sequence is like ooh, ooh, ooh it was good I also like the little touch, because we're still a few seconds right, behind it. Pete punk. already has his spider powers and just accidentally ripped the handle off the door. Yeah. It'd be like that sometimes. It do. Puberty's rough that. like that. <laughs> yeah, you guys remember Chad needs puberty? to stop explaining to me who Hobgoblin is. <laughs> <laughs> Especially since none of these explanations are the same. I know how comic continuity do be like. I like how he's like, oh no, I'm out. Let me just climb on the ceiling. Yeah. That makes sense. It's a good thing nobody ever looks up, just ever. I mean, to be fair, if you were chasing what you assumed was a person, would you look up at the ceiling? Not intentionally, but my field of view generally does include at least enough of the ceiling to see if, like, two feet of person is hanging off of it. Nah. Well, if they're, like, tall, like, warehouse or office ceiling. Th this is a school! <laughs> Gamers don't Jim, look up. Jim uh, Gamers also don't look left, so... <laughs> guy on YouTube. Sometimes Hobgoblin is just some guy. <laughs> Thank you. Only explanation I will accept. Hey, is this a confession? <laughs> Sometimes the true Hobgoblin was right under your noses all along. <laughs> also, everyone's just like, that drop ceiling would not support a person. Yes. We call that yeah. suspension of disbelief. <laughs> More like suspension of Pete's body weight from hey that drop ceiling. Hey-oh! <laughs> 
that the chemistry lab? Photo lab. Okay, I was going to say, that's a lot of sinks for a chemistry lab. Yeah. And no eyewash station. There's chemicals involved in the uh, darkroom photography. Yeah. Stuff. I mean, to be fair, at my old job, we had, like, an emergency shower. But, like, there was no drain built under said emergency shower. So they're like, please use it if you need to. But if you don't need to, please don't use it. Because when we have to flush it, we just need to get a really large bucket. Uh, and it requires a lot of mopping. I'm like, okay, good to know. <laughs> such an awful design. Well, the building wasn't originally meant to house labs. Um, it was, you know, they were able to convert them to labs. But there was, you know... They had to build the lab space in, and it's really hard to build a drain into a floor that was not meant to have a drain in it. Yeah, uh, true. This was also the case with my high school. The one room that they would do the chemistry classes in had a shower. I don't know that it was like a perfectly created emergency shower, but there was there in theory, and uh, it also did not have a drain in the floor. So it was very much like if any of you little snots dare to pull this lever and flood this classroom, you. <laughs> You will be suspended for 10 million years. Um, and then have to come back and repeat all four grades. That's like a recurring nightmare of mine. I have to go back to high school for a second high school diploma for some reason. And I'm like, why am I here? They're like, you need to start as a freshman. I'm like, I am not 14. That's so niche. My uh, recurring high school nightmare is that, or, or it's a college one. And it's that I have been signed up for a class this whole quarter. But for some reason, I haven't gone until now. And it's like the second to last class or something. So I have to go. Uh, but I don't know where it is and I can't find it. And the building geography keeps changing. And when I get there, I'm very late and the teacher is very disappointed. It's oh, great. Yeah, no, I have the same one. Except for it's always <laughs> like either history or English class. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> what? Um, also, thank you to Candy Bar for the 10. Get out of here. Woo. Woo. To <laughs> but yeah, no, I have a we lot know the of... recurring names. <laughs> Yo, same structural traumas. Woo, public school. Hey, woo. This place looks the same. No also, someone asked this. if I worked at Aperture Science. Which? Sure, let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> for some hoops. Are you sure you're up for this? Oh, I should, question is, should really play you. Portal. Let's Portal's fun. I talker. picked it up when they did the bundle on the Switch with the two games, rusty. and they're, mm -hmm. they're fun to replay. They're fun. They're like an easy breezy, like, I got Are a you? weekend. Let me just run through Portal. Um, They hold up pretty well. Speaking of things J.K. Simmons is in. Yeah, right. <laughs> no one ever expects J.K. Nice. Simmons. He is so the Spanish Inquisition of actors doing voice roles. Thanks. Hey, but he's so immediately Jason identifiable and it else. always slaps. Nothing yet. That's the thing. Like I hear it and I'm like, wait, J.K. Simmons is in this? And I'm never mad about it. But I'm always surprised that I didn't know J.K. Simmons was in that. Yeah. Uh, Red has it's played Portal. Red played Portal and Portal 2. And it was real good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was years ago, and Red is considering replaying them because it's been a hot minute. They're fun. They're a good time. Yep. Well, when good Inge stuff. Moves in, maybe she'll help with the house. You and I have to play oh, the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles DLC at some point, so you can right, play yeah. Abby and I can run through oh. with my boy Casey Jones. Yes. Oh. This, is, this must happen. I mean, this is like requirements. Doing good. <laughs> I loaded it up uh, just to get a feel for it, and I was like, oh, this oh, definitely used to be like an arcade cabinet thing, and like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's got that vibe. It's got, it's got that fun, like, button mashy kind of combat going on. And yeah. it's, it's just like an easy breezy thing to get through. Um, it is, but at the same time, it's not the most, like, forgiving game in the world, you know? No. Arcade games are more willing to let you, like, fall on your ass and have you to restart and give them money. Delicious, delicious quarters. Exactly. I feel like there's been a bit of a trend for games to sort of get a little bit more user friendly over the years. Uh, mm -hmm. With the notable exception of the various Dark Souls alikes purposefully not doing that. Um, <laughs> but I think some of it is just like as, you know, people develop games more, people get better at understanding how to, you know, how to work with what a player would naturally try and stuff like that, which is just a trial and error thing. But I also think some of it is just like, if you're playing a game on a home console, and you keep dying and it's not fun, you're not gonna keep putting your quarters in, you're probably just gonna not play the game. Yeah, I mean, I think it gets to, like, who the target audience is for it, too, because, like, 
maybe this is just me stereotyping here, but in my mind, the person who is going to be really excited about a Dark Souls with its hard uh, learning curve and the challenge level is probably also the person who would have been standing in front of a console pouring quarters into it back in the day. So, no, like, I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's a good read. I, I think that that's like, I'm like, yeah, no, I, I'm exactly the kind of person who when I'm playing a game at home only wants to die a certain amount of times. And then I'm like, I think I would like to be moving on in the game now. Yeah. Uh, especially like when you're doing more story-based games where it's like, well, I can only see the same cutscene so many times before I'm going to feel like I'm going a little insane. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, when you get in a box arcade game where the point is to get you to put more quarters in it and keep playing the little smash em ups it, it's, it's important for them to be less forgiving. Yeah. Um, so that you can maintain that sort of play style. And I think that that's kind of what makes it fun in some ways. Like, it's nice to have a game where I'm like, well, I know I'm not really missing anything every time I die because... It's just the same goons in a slightly different level designs. So yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't really feel like I need to die bad if I have to keep rewatching um, myself load into the same hallway full of ninjas. You know, like there's a certain amount of uh, give I can give with that one as opposed to like, if I die enough times in Baldur's Gate and I had to rewatch like Shadowheart do her little dialogue, I would start to feel like I was going insane. <laughs> Not that I haven't reloaded saves a lot in that, but like there's a point where I'm like, mm, this is just whatever happens this time is going to happen this time. <laughs> Yeah, that is something I've heard about the game, how there's a lot of uh, discourse about save scumming. Um, I am an unapologetic uh, save scummer in a lot of games, because I play a lot of games with permadeath, and I think that it's a very valid strategy. Um, if it wasn't for the amount of time it took me to occasionally reload Baldur's Gate, I think I'd be a much bigger save scummer in it, and I think there's going to be future playthroughs where I definitely save scum a lot more. But I think if it's, it's good to have it there so that people want to use it they can, but to not require it, you know? That's fair, yeah. Especially when your game relies so heavily on like a certain amount of randomness in the die roll aspect mm -hmm. of it, like, yeah, I can be the best person at persuasion ever and have like a plus twelve to it, but I could still roll a one, and that's very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciate the ability to save scum in that instance to be like, no, 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 this is a thing I'm good at. Let me let me be cool for a second game. I think that's part of why and how I've managed to uh, resist the siren song of playing Baldur's Gate three instead of doing anything else in my life. Uh, is that it, it really kind of gives off the vibe that like it has a correct path it has like a like a true timeline uh but it's kind of gated behind you need to roll this correct number on this random number generator to get the thing that lets you do that um and that's not something i personally find crazy fun so what i'll probably do is like watch somebody's playthrough of it later at some point uh yeah, because yeah no, I get the how you hear that impression. I don't know that I would say that it, it feels like as a game that it has one correct timeline. I think it's probably one of the best entries in any game series of we are really trying to give players creative freedom and choice over what they do and how the story plays out. Like, it doesn't feel like there is an intended outcome. There's definitely paths that have more positive outcomes for some characters than others. There's definitely paths that have more negative outcomes for characters, but it very much leaves it up to you, like, how you want that to play out. Um, I, I like. I I think that there is a point where like. I don't know that you could watch any one playthrough for it and really get a sense of what the game is like because every single person's playthrough is going to be very tailored to how they want to play the game. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, true. <laughs> Sorry, is Harry Rick rolling us? Yes, uh, Rick rolling the cool. cops. Oh. <laughs> oh, incredible. Oh, okay, cool. And now we get a uh, dramatic backstory. I'm trying to remember the last time I got re Oh, right! I've been rewatching uh, Doctor Who, or like New Who. Mm. Um, and uh, in the episode where uh, Rose goes back in time to stop her dad from getting hit by a car, uh, he fucking Rickrolls us, I think. He's he's like blasting Rick Astley in, in the radio of his car. I wasn't expecting that. I haven't gotten Rickrolled in a while, but I have seen that Joss Hutcherson meme show up constantly. Uh, I haven't seen that. The one that. where it's just his face? Hold on. I what? got you. Oh, you no. will. Okay. <laughs> I'm sending the Know Your Meme page. Oh, boy. I'm so glad that resource exists. Yeah, it's seriously. Incredibly it's incredibly very useful. important for me. It comes up so much in my job. <laughs> So many people will be like, can you add this meme into this part of the video? And I'm like, let me just go and know your meme real quick. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got here. Harry, what is this? 
You know, I still think we would have won. Oh boy. We presented. Love it when a, a wiki like thing uses the phrase the objectively horny and thirsty edit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've only seen it as a still image with the accompanying whistle sound effect, so I don't know about the horny and thirsty part, chance. but I think that's a very funny description on the wiki page. The Josh Hutcherson whistle edit refers to a 2014 fan cam edit on YouTube that uses the song Whistle by Joel Mary, a cover of the original whistle by Flo Rida and centers on actor Josh Hutcherson. The objectively horny and thirsty edit gained notoriety in the late 2010s, peaking in popularity in late 2023, wow. directly following the release of the FNAF movie. We can talk about it some more. So, yes, so the thing that makes it popular, though, is not that the whole video plays, but the people will just take the image from the, the like, M in the, like, blue tone stage Yeah, yeah, yeah thing, I see it. And then it will fade into existence in whatever the, the TikTok or the meme is uh, unexpectedly, a la Rickroll, rather than the whole video uh, being played in its entirety and then the song whistle will play in the background. So, wow. yeah, it, it's it's sort of a, a, a building evolution over time. <laughs> well, that sure is um, shaped like a joke. Real quick, the uh, the dramatic irony of the situation where Harry shows up and is immediately best friends with Pete again, and they're like, "Hey, Pete, join my like environmental uh, nonprofit uh, organization so that we can heal the world, just like my mom and your aunt's wish." We made a foundation named after them. It's gonna be great, Pete. Wow. Hey, Pete. Whoa. <laughs> Why would this be anything but perfect? Don't look at the rest of the runtime of the game. <laughs> they do a really good job. Sorry, of the setting stream up. just got. Oh. The stream just got really laggy. I have oh, no yeah. idea what's going yeah. on. I, it so maybe it's something to do with the cutscene or the it, scene. Yeah, they might not have optimized this or something. Oh jeez. Get out of here, Craven! Oh. You're you're fucking up the whole shebang. The real villain of the stream. Uh, I almost wonder if it's because they had, like, they, they rendered the entire ocean under these fucking drone things. Well, no, that wouldn't have anything to do with how the know, input though. goes to my computer. Woof. Chat, God, bear with sucks. us. sucks. We're just pushing through. Uh-oh. Oh, now we're just losing blue. Maybe it isn't yeah. the game. Oh. It might have been blue's <laughs> Wi-Fi. Uh-oh. Oh, he speaks. Really? He speaks. This bad? You're back. Hey, whatever it is, I'm down. Need Are you? Jeez, what the heck? But are we back is the important question. Hello? 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 Blue? I can hear you guys. Uh. Because, of course, uh, we're getting routed into the stream through Blue's computer. I don't know if anyone, anyone yeah, can hear Yeah, I don't us. know if anyone can hear All right, chat, if you can hear, is... hear me, put a, put a tater yeah. in the no, chat. No, you know what to do. No. <laughs> oh, we gotta, there's so much spam. I'm not seeing any though, also, which means mm -hmm. potentially. Well, well, please hold for technical difficulties. Kurt even hit the servers with his with spear. Difficulty. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I sent the Josh Hutcherson no. Your okay. main page, and then everything crashed. Blue's laptop. Bro, I guess I'm over. Yeah, yeah. The stream updated. There's a new frame on screen. Gonna hit refresh just to see. Oh, it's moving. Oh, it's moving. It's very moving slightly. <laughs> Miles is doing stuff. Blue is back? back? We can't Blue? hear him. Blue. Hello, hello. Okay, the audio's the audio's back, it says. Oh. I well you guys can hear us, but we can't hear Blue. Well, I don't know if they can hear us. Alright, chat, chat, chat. This is very important. 
if you can hear me they can hear you and if you can hear me in order to prove it are we back i need a yam in the chat are we back oh, he's back okay he's back. okay yes hello no, red they can hear you i'm getting the spam through yay okay those aren't yams those are regular potatoes come on guys what had happened uh. was uh i plugged in <laughs> my laptop before the stream like a good boy however uh -huh. my laptop uh -huh. managed to go from a full charge at the beginning of the stream down to with only firefox streamlabs and discord running down to basically nothing an hour and a half later uh, it did not uh. give me a notification that we hit the low battery stage and we got down to 4% when things started breaking. Uh, so I quickly ran upstairs, got a second better charger, and plugged that in. So hopefully cool. we'll be okay. All's well that ends <laughs> All right. well. I've had stuff like that happen before. Um, new Macs, or at least the new Mac OS, is smart about when to charge the battery, as in it is smart enough to be stupid. Uh, which is sometimes you'll have it plugged in and it'll be like, oh, that's cool. But in order to preserve long-term battery health, we're just going to let this thing just keep draining. And it always does that when I'm either streaming audio or recording audio. And I don't know why mm -hmm. it, it hits some kind of internal switch. And it's like, even if you tell me to charge to full now, I simply will not. And you will have to watch the battery slowly drain down and down. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, this is why I will never let my, like, 2014 uh, MacBook die. This thing goes down mm -hmm. with me, you know? We are, <laughs> this sinks, the captain goes down with the ship. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, okay. On my screen, it looks like, just from the flashing of the resume button, that the lag has stopped. So let's Is the resume, resume. button supposed to be flashing? Yes. I don't see that mm. yet nope. on my end. Um, hold on. God damn it. Let me hit refresh. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. I, re I refreshed and we're good. Okay. Okay, one check. All right, gang. If you, if you can't enough. see it, refresh the stream. Uh, close it and open it again. Yep, there it is. The, the resolution isn't huge on my laptop, on, on my TV, but it is move. Oh, it's back. It's back. We're good. We're good. Okay. To the question of, like, does Blue like streaming? Stuff like this is why it's, <laughs> it's like, a net neutral for me. Ah. <laughs> uh... All right, gang. I don't know how people do this professionally. I respect them, but I don't know how they do it. I truly enjoy streaming. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's, I there's something about it. I love that for you. <laughs> 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 All right, let's jump back in. We cut back okay. to uh, to Miles while we're losing frames. Let's do it. Don't give me that look, Pops. Only taking a break. Going back to our board. Miles continues to not be able to write his essay. How's the essay going? Uh... It's, it's going. Uh, I'm gonna head out though. Pete, call for some backup. We're just Man, I'm a better bunch of seconds behind. Oh, yeah, it, it looks like the stream is is running a little bit slow now, which is fine, all things considered. Totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Let's not fucking look a gift stream in the mouth at this point. <laughs> You've been working late, and so I also work late. I wonder if well, it's um. Don't give me that look. I'm not in any trouble. I see a light. Should I go towards it? No, Coakley Fireheart. Don't go towards the light. Oh, that's one of my favorite jokes that they did. In, um... Oh, shit, it's moving. It's moving. Okay, we have now, movement. Now we see Miles. We see Miles. Ah! That's how long it took. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, this sucks. No, no, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's not like we were doing real-time commentary anyway. Well, not so much, no. I can give you some privacy. Yeah. Anyway, that was one of my favorite jokes from Dragon Ball Abridged when they had uh, Android 16 fighting Cell and Cell's down in a hole and Android 16 is powering his arm cannon and Cell's like, wait, now I see a light. And he goes, walk towards it and fires. It's so good. Yeah. The dialogue on that show only got better with the time. Anyway, Spider-Man. People in the chat are correct. The 2014 mechs uh, were built different. Like, those ones just, they don't crash. Those babies are built to fucking last. <laughs> or they're not built to last, but for some reason they don't have the redundancies that the later generations did, where now they die of their own accord. They're just like, you know, you could run me over, you could keep me plugged in 24-7 and never turn me off, and I will keep running every damn day. I, I don't remember when my laptop... Because I think I had a 2014 laptop that did eventually die, but it was the equivalent of, like, 
Like, it basically started randomly kernel panicking, which is just about the worst thing that can happen to a computer. It's like something went catastrophically wrong, uh, and it, it started having a corrupting effect on my files, so I kind of real quick bailed out all the files I needed onto a new computer. Um, mm -hmm. My current laptop is, I want to say, like a 2019-something, and um, it's holding up pretty good. I haven't really had any problems with it, and I run this thing pretty hard, because, like, video editing and some of the stuff I do on Clip Studio kind of... You know, you treats it pretty rough, but it works out pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I have, like a desktop that I do 90% of my actual editing work on just because I want to have something that can handle, like, big files and more recent uh, software updates and things. But yeah, yeah, that makes sense. The laptop's great for it. Well, we record rolling with difficulty, and the odds pop always on my laptop, and it's nice to just have something that I can, if I need to work somewhere else in a pinch, I'm That's all set. Um, yeah, of course. Man, I do love, I do love my desktop. I treat it very, uh, especially, Sometimes, like, this is my special baby princess, and it will never die. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna see if I can get some skills. Y'all want some fucking pixels? <laughs> I got some Zigster, you wanna make a sound for the stream? No. She uh, got quiet. I picked her up when she got silent immediately. Oh, I have so much cat hair in my nose. <laughs> Ziggy does attack the squirrel. Well, because when I play Baldur's Gate, I'm on the PS5. And, um... It does! Ziggy does attack the squirrels and birds that appear on screen. <laughs> wow, nice. So That's they've achieved amazing. some it's level enrichment. of... Uh, yeah, it's, it's both enrichment for me and my cat. Uh, <laughs> it's... I don't, like, they've achieved a level of digital realism where at least it's fooling a creature, you know? Yeah. I don't know what it is. I think I might have recently gotten more sensitive to the Uncanny Valley. Because I've been noticing it in the face animations in this game. Like, mm -hmm. they have- I, 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 the thing is, I don't think that striving for digital perfection is necessarily, like, a good move. Um, I'm mm. a big proponent of stylization over photorealism, especially when it comes to 3D animation. I mean, like, Spider-Verse fucking slaps, and a lot of what makes it look good is that they aren't trying to be realistic, and, you know, I've been banging the drum that Reboot was doing really cool stuff well before photorealism was even theoretically possible by just not trying to do that. It's like, everyone's gonna be in unrealistic color, a lot of people are gonna have metal textures for hair, and it's gonna look good, because we're not trying to make it look real. Um, I don't know. Like, I've, I have often not really had a good eye for Uncanny Valley stuff. Like, the first time I saw the Polar Express, I couldn't decide if it was CGI or not. Like, that's the level yeah, of it. Polar Express is one of those time. movies that scared me as a kid, because I was like, I don't like how close to Tom Hanks this guy looks. That's fair. I think the thing is, like, I remember the moment where I was like, I'm pretty sure this is CGI, and it's that hot chocolate thing where the guys start doing crazy oh, backflips, yeah. and I was like, they're, they're moving too fast for how we humans move. Yeah. Um, so that was like an, an, an interesting thing, but I think I've gotten better at identifying it, which is a little bit weird. Uh, cause I'm not sure how that works. I'm not sure how you develop your eye for it, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think, uh... I think it's just something you kind of know. Like, I feel like everyone's gonna have a slightly different tolerance for, like, what will set them off of, like, oh, this thing looks very, like, it, this isn't the Uncanny Valley for me, as opposed mm. to being, like, I can suspend my disbelief enough to understand that this digital thing is digital, but it's still meant to be a person, or, like, you know, this thing looks very good. Like, this, I, I keep hitting this wall a lot with Baldur's Gate, just because, like, it's a, it's, I think it's doing a little bit better than Spider-Man 2 in terms of, like, having the facial expressions look like they are designed to be animated and not, like, just trying to be as close to a human face as possible. But every mm. once in a while, someone will do, like, a motion or, like, you know, hands can't quite touch, you know? <laughs> like, there's just, like, a little mm -hmm. bit of something that keeps reminding me, like, oh, no, 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 this is, this is sitting in the, um... Yeah, in, in the uncanny valley a little bit it, at I, places, but I, I generally I agree with you that like stylized, unique graphics are always pretty much always going to look better just because they're done with a lot of intent and purpose that uh, lets them age well because they are designed to be good at the time and just look good in the context that they're in, as opposed to mm -hmm. like striving for photorealism. Inevitably, with age, as the constant march of technology progresses, is never going to look as good uh, yeah in, you know t even like 10 years out so i, I can appreciate it as like a, a goal to strive for and i think there are definitely situations where it makes sense as the style but 
I would say overall, I, 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 I agree with you that I, I, stylization is the way to give yourself some longevity in your animation. Yeah, I think it's um, it's interesting because I've seen a lot of Baldur's Gate cutscenes, and I think the only thing that makes me go like, yeah, that that looks that looks like the current trend of 3D animation is that everyone like moves their head around very freely with yeah. absolutely nothing to do with like what their mouth is doing at the time, you know? And it's because mm -hmm. the way that they build those scenes clearly is like, um, oh, where did I, where did I watch this? Because there was a video I watched about this. Hold on, because uh, I want to give proper credit. Um, uh, it was about the animation in Mass Effect Andromeda and how why it was so fucking it, it is New Frame. I was gonna Plus. say it's yes. gotta be New Frame Plus. Who else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, New Frame Plus had a video called What Happened with Mass Effect Andromeda's Animation. And uh, it has a lot of details about how uh, cutscenes especially are constructed in the way that uh, games are currently built, especially huge RPGs with dialogue trees. And it's like basically you have a small suite of um, motions, like general body motions that the character will do, and then you have an engine for basically just automatically kind of lip-flapping them to whatever's going on, and you have some facial expressions that get looped into that as well. Uh, which essentially means that the way the body is moving, the way the mouth is moving, and the way the facial expressions are moving are three disconnected systems. Um, and you can kind of just key into that if you're paying attention to it. It's like, all right, were I talking to a person, I would not be rolling my entire head like I'm trying to stretch my neck out in the middle of this phrase. Like, I, I simply would not be doing that. You know, that kind of thing. Um, and I, I've seen that in every Baldur's Gate cutscene I've seen, is that the characters will always just be bobbing the head around in the middle of a sentence. Like, they're not keeping their eyes locked on any one thing. And it, it, it works for the stylization. It's just, it's noticeable because... The, the oh, yeah. rendering and the textures are so photoreal, but that's not how real human beings move, really. No. Yeah, and I, like, again, like, I like that it's consistent at the very least, because it does kind of contribute to, that is the style of, like, this AAA game. Right. Uh, I appreciate that they didn't go for, like, the mocap, everyone has to be moving the way that the actor's face necessarily was in this exact second, because I think that that gives me- I almost feel like I, I don't love mocap in video games generally, because it tends to give more kid? of a feeling of the uncanny valley to me, of like, this is too close to human, but I'm very aware that they have had to put all of this graphic work over it, and yeah. something about that is more jarring to me than being like, well I understand that there is an engine making this character maybe move their head more than they should, but you know, that's a game engine, and I can kind of suspend my disbelief on that part and ignore it because it is so consistent and yeah. present. Yeah, I think the way it plays out in Baldur's Gate 3 is you just immediately identify it as, like, a thing that the game oh, yeah. is choosing to do, and you're like, okay, this is just what characters talk like now. I get it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. What's cracking, boys? <laughs> I'm sort of loosely trying to keep up with what's going on on the game. Yeah, I, I wanted to wait for a break in the conversation. I could talk about it. Basically, yeah, there's sorry. a prisoner transfer from the uh, raft, and MJ got word that it was just Scorpion who was going to be transferred. And so Peter and Miles showed up. They're like, okay, let's get ready to transfer Scorpion. And then they have a second prisoner transport, which is Martin Lee, who is Mr. Negative from the first game, uh, who, among other things, uh, caused a blast at City Hall that killed Miles' dad and was, like, softly his origin story. Um, so Miles got a little tilted at the sight of him. Not, like, you know, murder mode or anything, but he was, like, clearly he's no longer thinking perfectly straight. So Peter's like, hey, Miles, like, I need you. Uh, I need you to focus. I, I know this is a thing, but, like, you gotta, you gotta, you know, keep everything. Thing, uh, prioritized. Can't let this kind of thing distract you. That's part of the job of being Spider-Man is you have to, uh, you know, evaluate every situation tactically, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then the boat transfer is happening and these little fireworks go off and then suddenly all these craven boys um, show up to start attacking this prisoner transport boat and that's, uh, that's where we are now. Woof. The dynamic with um, with Peter and, and Miles uh, about the whole Martin Lee situation is explored in a couple later scenes to very good effect. Ooh, that's exciting. It's a really good setup of. Uh, well, well, we'll see it when we see it. <laughs> a few people in chat were saying that Baldur's Gate Three, all the animation is mo-capped. Um, yes, I'm reading an article yeah. on that right now. I Ooh, exciting! Talk that. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing is like. There, 
that part I did actually kind of see a little bit. Like, a lot of the little motions are things that happen when you put an actor on a stage and are like, mime out what this is. Uh, and also it's things that an animator wouldn't necessarily think of. Like, yeah. the, the big thing that mocap... Like... Hmm? Oh, sorry, just being It sounds like what happened is, like, they did use motion capture for recording a lot of things, but then they the sent it to point. the animators and devs, so it was, like, almost used as, like, a reference page as opposed to just being directly uh... imported, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Which is very I think cool. That... I think that the, that's a good way to middle ground it, uh, if you're gonna do it. Because I was like, I didn't clock that it was mocap necessarily immediately. Um, and obviously it looks pretty smooth, so that kind of like still getting a, a human hand on it uh, after you recorded the mocap to be like, well, let's make this like work with the game we're in is hard. Yeah, I think the main benefit with mocap is that it means that your animators are not starting from a completely inert figure, basically. Mm -hmm. They don't need to hand animate absolutely every motion the character makes at all times. Um, but that also does sometimes lead to some weirdnesses. And again, cannot recommend enough all the New Frame Plus videos about this stuff. Uh, specifically, I really like his video about uh, the animation in the Sonic games. Because yeah. a lot of, like, there there was a big stretch of time where all the 3D animated Sonic games were mocapping specifically for that reason, because it let them, you know, speed up the process significantly. But it produced what he calls the mascot suit problem, where all these giant stylized, you know, cartoon characters are moving like people miming on a soundstage. And it looks weird. It doesn't look like a cartoony character. Uh oh. Miles is currently inside the boat trying to rescue people inside. Oh, oh that's gonna be a nightmare. A, there's, a gar <laughs> there's a guard in here who's like, help, I'm trapped. And we're trying to get this guard out. Oh, dog. Yes. <laughs> boat dog. I, in the original Last of Us, uh, the way they did, I think they had done it before as well, um, for like, probably Uncharted's like two and three, is a lot of the um, cutscene performances were mo-capped, but the faces were recorded and not animated off of that. That served as a guideline for the animators to go in and keyframe facial animations directly because I think at that point the technology was not good enough to get full facial capture on um, on a mo -cap performance. Now it is, uh, but back then uh, it was not. So it's, it's interesting to see how the technology evolves based on what works um, and what is uh, the optimal solution, what's the most effective solution to use at scale, because just because you can mocap everything doesn't necessarily mean it's the best use of your time or budget when that is a very expensive way to go about things. So it's, it's, it sounds it's like, uh, from always trade-offs. Red Baldur's Gate 3 mocap, like all of the main companions, all the NPCs, pretty much anything that they could feasibly do aside from, um, like, you know, big cinematic cutscenes where people are mm. flying around, or like the animals that talk to you are probably not mocap, but like. I would expect not. But I think, you know, it's giving nice yourself. Way. It's the same way of like when animators on like Snow White had like the video references of an actress doing the poses and motions because it makes mm -hmm. the animation look smoother and gives you a good reference point to see a real human do it. Um, if you have Valerian Studios years and years and years of time and care and attention and budget to mocap every single character, then yeah, absolutely. That would have paid off. That's also like what they did with um, uh, Andy Serkis in the Lord of the Rings movies. Like, they didn't yeah. have mocap technology as it currently exists then. Um, so they did some truly incredible work hand animating basically everything Gollum was doing up to and including like like Andy Serkis was doing some pretty crazy facial expressions during these shots we can see if we can put them on Gollum's face and make that work uh which was very cool Miles got stung by Scorpion and is now having a bad time Yay. I just saw the reveal that it's Scorpion. I gotta say, I really like Miles' just body language of like, oh, damn it, <laughs> when it turns out, surprise, it's Scorpion. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like, ugh, really? Come on, man. Oh, Ziggy, you're shedding like crazy. <laughs> you got Ziggy. it. Ziggy. <laughs> There's so much cat hair in my nose. Oh, yeah. 
Why would you do this to me, huh? So what? What's your angle? Silence. Yeah. Who's Matt Ziggy now? Is at least Ziggy is at least real to one other person. <laughs> I believe Ziggy exists. I'm not sure I believe you exist. No. <laughs> Are you okay? That sounded so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, yeah, a little spit down the wrong time in my throat, and then I wasn't able to speak for a moment. That's... <laughs> I like that in the first game they were like, we're gonna give Peter the scorpion trauma hallucination samba, and then in the sequel they were like, it's only fair that Miles gets a turn. <laughs> also, I just noticed we're over 1,500. Hey, hey wow. everybody. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, Scorpion's Venom is fear toxin now. Uh, I kind of like how all these superhero adaptations are sort of in conversation with each other, because of course, like, the various... Batman Arkham games all kind of play with like fear toxin and like Batman's perceptions cannot be trusted so we can have the Joker just kind of bamfing around the screen you know in some very cute like camera ways and then this game was like we're mostly gonna do Spider-Man but that part's cool let's do that too <laughs> They do a good job of showing how terrifying these hunters really are. We just from him. how they're able to completely show up and overwhelm everything. And obviously they have, like, you know, uh, fantasy sci-fi technological advantage where they can just cut through anything like it's nothing uh, with their swords and, and stuff and just blow up any hole in any ship, wherever. But uh, they are compellingly uh, a big problem in this game where sometimes it's like, okay, like, are these guys really the threat that's dooming the city? In this case, like, yeah, no, these guys are a menace. Yeah. Well, you know how social media, like, recommends random stuff to you that you're not necessarily interested in, but then you see it and you're like, ooh, I just got a thing from a library where it's like, ah, yes, this five-week-old has been signed up for a library card. I'm like... That's dope. <laughs> yeah. That's real dope. <laughs> I just like that the subtitles on that said Spider Man struggling. Yeah. <laughs> Me too, bud. <laughs> Sorry, did you have a button for chain lightning? Yes. What in the D and D am I looking at? Here? Miles' new power. <laughs> oh. Uh, that explains why I accidentally tased himself. Miles now has unlimited power. <laughs> oh, has everyone seen the um, the fan animation Battle of Heroes Clone Wars style thing? No, not yet. I wanted to so badly, but I haven't had a chance to it's, look at it. It's so good. It was on trending at the same time that uh, Journey to the West was, so I was uh, like, shit, nice. bro. This is pretty fun to um, August Company. Usually it's music videos. <laughs> It's a lot of music videos. I did scroll through just to see how far down we were, and it was like, music video, music video, music video, somebody I don't recognize, music video, Clone Wars, me! <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's so good. It's it's interesting, though. It's a really interesting watch, because it had kind of the same thing we were just talking about with the mocap thing. Like, some of the wide shots, you couldn't necessarily immediately tell, like, that's an animated character, because uh, they're moving like a person was in this exact scene when it was filmed by people. Um, my brain's jumping all sorts of tracks because it just went from that to anyone here seen the 3D animated Tintin movie they made several years back? No, no is it good? No. It's all, it's fine. Uh, it's a pretty good adaptation of Red Rackham's Treasure uh, and I think another Tintin that they looped in with it. Um, it's it's not exactly Uncanny Valley. They do that thing where all the characters have extremely cartoony proportions, relatively speaking. Not extremely cartoony, but they have cartoony proportions. Like, the, the, the eyes are spaced weird, the noses are big. Uh, but then they have photorealistic textures on every part of their body. So, it's kind of like those, like, edgy deviant art things they would do back in the day of, like, this cartoon character, but I gave him photorealistic skin and bloodshot eyes. And it's like, cool, that's gross looking. Um, so once you kind of get used to the fact that that's how some of the characters in the movie look, uh, it's not that jarring. But it's mostly mocap, and again, it's got Andy Serkis attached, and he's kind of the king of mocap. Um, 
And some of the fight scenes, especially the wide shots with, like, backlighting, it's like, this could just be two real people fighting, like, with fire behind them, and I wouldn't notice, because all the cartoony proportions are invisible from a wide shot, and they're just moving perfectly mo-capped, uh, which I think is good, but definitely didn't help with my is this cartoony or is this photorealistic dilemma with watching the movie. They also have a really impressive one take in it, and it feels like a digital one take isn't like a huge deal, but just in terms of the rendering power they needed for that, and the tricks they had to do to make sure everything moved into position, pretty cool. Kind of a Rube Goldberg machine. Yeah, I can appreciate the rendering power uh, hill overcome. <laughs> Some interesting details about this game that we can appreciate in very flashy and expensive sequences like this. Um, there's a lot of work that made uh, that, that went into making this game very bombastic and, and cinematic in a lot of very, very cool to watch ways. Um, letting them do uh, more dynamic fight scenes and a lot of, of other kinds of uh, neat things, such as having this whole boat crashing into a duck sequence right here. Mm -hmm. But Spider-Man Miles Morales had a budget of like $110 million and made uh, twice that budget back, whereas this game had a budget of like $370-something million and is on track to make that back, but that's not the same as making twice the amount. So really uh, uh, odd window into like where does the money go when you're making these games and there are a lot of things that you can look at it and be like oh oh that was very expensive like the sandman <laughs> sequence was incredibly cool and it's the kind of thing you can only really do if you're willing to commit to having the incredible scale of something like that and it looks fantastic but it's you look at it and you're like oh that that was expensive that was yeah. expensive also like all the lamps are bobbing up and down along with the boat which is pretty fun yeah yeah, yeah like this is incredibly built. A fighting sequence on a floating platform? That's nuts. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> well. <laughs> Super Smash Brothers. I love the comment that just says arson. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Simply because there is fire around. Ah, yes, there was a long delay to the QTE because I was eating a graham cracker. <laughs> Very forgiving game. Mm. None of that Spider-Man 2 shit. I'm going to die! Finally, other Spider-Man. Miles yeah. almost let someone die. Ooh. That scene really got me because I thought they shot him for a second. <laughs> it's like <Right>. rope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's gonna break this man's ribs. Let him go. Also, because YouTube chat doesn't do great with uh, emojis. Uh, Des just commented, and the combat is just, and it just shows rectangle, 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 rectangle. <laughs> I'm like, that's a move. We do our best. Yeah. This game looks like it's a little bit murder on the PS5. Yeah. Honestly, it's also, I pretty like well. It. It's gorgeous, but, oh boy, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Miles. Also, I like the way they just did that, because we're, we're on a hefty delay, but the thing with Lee being like, you were just gonna let me die, and Miles being like, you don't know what you took from me, and Lee kind of actually looks like, oh shit, it's a good point. <laughs> like... It probably didn't occur to him, oh, like, oh, maybe I personally 
did something really bad to the 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 superheroes that I would otherwise rely on to rescue me when I'm in peril. Hmm. But also the recognition of like, oh, he didn't dispute that. <laughs> he didn't dispute that He's I was like, gonna let him die. That, yeah. <laughs> good point. It's a good point. Um, you're tearing me apart, Spider-Man. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever oh, he's planning. fine. Yeah. They were just, they had him roped around the midriff. It can't possibly hurt. All it can do is crush his spine. This sequence right here is really good. You'll see it in a second where Miles is like, ah, this sucks. And Peter's like, hey, we handle it. We saved the people who were in danger. That's all we can hope for. And Peter is being the mentor figure that Miles needs. Yay. And we will soon see this dynamic inverted. <laughs> <laughs> Linus and Lucy? You killed my father. Do you know how? Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? Mm -hmm. I just See, I've been saying for ages, going. Batman Beyond is what if Batman were Spider-Man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> back where he belongs. Promise. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> I should That's on my, my short list of, of detailed so diatribe far. topics. It's like it's listed as Batman Beyond. He's just Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean, the real uh, smoking gun is that all of his bad guys are just Spider-Man bad guys. Yeah. Fred, have you done You Killed My Father as a trope yet? No, but I should. That's a good one. It's so specific, too. <laughs> yeah. But, like, pretty fairly common. It is, yeah. But I like the sequence here because Peter's like, come on, you gotta you gotta fist bump me, don't leave me hanging, man, where he, like, Miles is clearly having a rough time, and that's the one thing that he needs to kind of, like, kind of center himself a little bit is, like, something just kind of funny and silly for a second. So, Peter knows how to be a good mentor, and then he will have his enshittening arc. <laughs> Yay! Meanwhile, Peter's like, Spider-Man doesn't kill people, and Miles is like, I wasn't gonna kill him, I just wasn't gonna stop him from dying. <laughs> Peter's like, what did this... Fucking Batman Begins. <laughs> yeah, seriously. We don't, we don't talk semantics, manslaughter versus murder in this house. That's why I love the people just pretending to be J. Jonah Jameson in chat. It's like, hey. friend gamer, welcome to JJJ News. Spider-Man single-handedly destroyed two ships in a dock and a bunch of superhuman hunter people saved everyone. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know. He's a menace. He's a menace. He's a menace. Quick, everyone do your JJ. <laughs> Pictures of Spider-Man! Hey, Hear me out on this. Spider-Man! Threat or menace! I don't know who he is. They come in the mail. <laughs> Slander is spoken and printed to libel. I was just giving you space after you got out. No need. Besides. Hold on. Slip it, Spider-Man! Yeah, time to close shot. Your Spider-Man having your relative slash loved one killed isn't that unique? Yeah, you know you're right, Em. <laughs> that is kind of the plot of Across the Spider-Verse. <laughs> oh, what a great movie! Yeah, I'm so excited for that one. Which what? one is it? Am I fucking this up again? Which I, one's Across the Spider-Verse? The animated one. Yeah, no, I've seen that one. That's the second one. Oh, no, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> no! Well, it's still good. They all have the same name! <laughs> Where's the third one? Oh, there you go. How the hell did you get there? <laughs> This is a recurring problem with Spider-Man streams. Uh, <laughs> oftentimes, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home really and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse get a little And which one was jumbled? the first animated one? Into. Okay. Second Into one is Across, third one's Beyond. Oh, jeez. I was trying to give you space. I can't even keep the, like, real person ones straight. We <laughs> do. Because Far From Home and No Way Home are, like, the same name. <laughs> Yeah, they are. A little bit. It doesn't help that the two Spider-Man trilogies that we've most recently had are ones that, like, all three movies are named the same goddamn thing except one word difference, which, like, is cute on its own, but it makes them very difficult to keep straight between the six of them. Just give me numbers, you know? Yep. I mean, That's why we got Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, and then Spider-Man 3. You can have, uh, Wonder-Man... Two Piter Man and Spy Freer Man. <laughs> I feel like oi, oi. or Spider Man. <laughs> I 
I think three Nerman works better than two Nerman. <laughs> well, no, because the, uh, it just like looking at it numerically, like the two turns into an S. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but you know people would get cute about how to pronounce that shit. Spoonerman. Spoonerman? It's Spoonerman. really hard to put an uwu in there. Spoonerman. <laughs> Spoonerman? Yeah. Spoonerman. The stream is cursed. <laughs> the stream started with us all, like, jabbering at each other. So, like, keeps on I was having Twitter login issues. Uh... Personally, I'm a big fan of Spoo Man. I think we should do that one more. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I won't. I, I rarely say nice things about Fast and Furious as a franchise, but at least they put numbers in it. Their naming convention is clear, if nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Danicast thing just yeah. came through your headphones. Yeah, it just uh, punched out of my controller. <laughs> Look at that park. Wow. It sure is central. Very park, very central. I like that there's so many buildings they couldn't get the rights to, and then it's just the actual Guggenheim Museum. Yeah, because <laughs> the museum's probably like, I don't care. I mean, I don't think we have the Met in this game. Well, probably because the Met. Yeah. Care. Oh yeah, there's uh, um, Manhattan Museum Contemporary Art. I. I don't think that's it. I think they invented that one to go where the Met goes, because this is where the Met is supposed to go, and it's the Manhattan Museum of Contemporary Art instead. There's no Chrysler building in this game, there is the Empire State Building. It's really weird which ones they don't get. Well, there is an MMOCA, but it's in Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah. So shout out to Madison, Wisconsin. If you live there, you've been represented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we get our first The Flame crime. Whoa! Whoa, oh, is this a cultist? Yeah. Oh yeah, what's it what? called? It's like the flame. The flame. That's enough. Yeah, no, but like there was I forget what it was. Oh, yeah. So one of them is like branding attack of like What? what? <laughs> and then I saw it. I'm like, I mean, yeah, I guess that's what you call that, but like why was that your choice? <laughs> I don't think the mat goes up high enough to see the mat cloisters chat. I don't know. My old apartment was not on the map, and the cloisters were above where I I cannot figure out the parry timing on this game. It's it's very generous, but I don't know like when in the the hit I am supposed to block it. So I get it anyway, but mostly because they just kind of let me slam the button, and they'll give it to me. <laughs> Sorry, uh, <clears throat> that was a perfectly innocent sentence you just said, and my brain just played the cyberpunk music over part of it. Better tell Pete about them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because they just <laughs> let me slam. <laughs> Can't wait to smash the Demon King. I have, like, literally written sentences in video scripts and then changed them because it had, like, the, the cyberpunk music could have happened to it. <laughs> Uh oh. Ah, there we go. Hmm. We really gotta do this with the mask on. So when you said you were gonna slam stuff, I just started singing my head, Come on and slam. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> Relax. I'm not trying to get my ass kicked by my nephew again. This is Prowler post getting beat up in the Miles Morales game. Ah. By Miles. <laughs> Prowler deserved it. Prowler from the Miles Morales game, who got beat up by Miles Morales in the game. That game? Albert Einstein. George Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. Someone got him out. I know what you're thinking, Miles. This is not on you. We can't let him live up here. It's just another kind of prison. It's not that easy. Never said it was. But sometimes Uncle you Aaron makes very away. good points. <laughs> so you make Everyone's telling Miles, like, hey, you gotta chill out about this Martin Lee guy. That's actually why I call. <laughs> Take a breath. Need dude. Help chill something. out. Just relax, get it bro. Myself, but Have you tried bro yoga? Means 
<laughs> You're more of a Pilates guy, I guess. Just some old tech I gotta get off the street. I like that they're like on good terms. And like Yeah. I don't know. I I like that their relationship is more than just you are a villain and I am hero and therefore we must always do the fight. Very the miraculous ladybug of them. In some That show finally ended, right? I have no Not. idea. I don't know okay. that it'll ever die. Well, I don't know if it's dead. I just think it's over. Yeah, yeah. Which show? The Miraculous, Miraculous Ladybug. Ladybug. I have no idea what that is. You're not really missing much. Oh, they came out with a movie last year. Oh. I did hear about that, actually. I'm serious, Miles. I've heard this dude can turn your brain into scrambled eggs. Leave it alone. According to Wikipedia, there are supposed to be like three more seasons of it. Nice. Really? Yeah. I thought it was done. Why did I think that? The song what am I looking for? Must be some Tumblr foolishness again. Of course it is. What's Tumblr being foolish about? Well, just in general. Yeah, just. Yeah. <laughs> Tumblr is just foolish, and that's why we love it. Or hate it. Up here. <laughs> Gosh, that is some aggressive yeah, controlling yeah, shit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Haptic feedback, baby. Buzz, buzz. No, Miraculous' first arc ended? Oh, no. <laughs> as soon as you get to the point where a series is saying that they have arcs, you're gonna run into. It's like, yeah, with a series, arcs are seasons. Or at least they should be. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Oh boy. You would have made a decent problem. You'd know you nothing about arcs red, would you? <laughs> yeah, I know. So I was gonna say very different than a comic arc, which is a, a <laughs> useful way to break up your <laughs> story. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing that bugs me about Miraculous is that like if I'd gotten into it like ten years before this? it started, oh, I think it might have taken root in my brain. It could have been something that rewired how I function as a person. It's but, one of those shows that I'm like, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, I would like this as a 10 year old. Yeah, like exactly. But like, mm, as an adult, it is n not, not working for me, which is completely fine. So I've only watched like a couple episodes and I was like, cool, I'm, I'm basically done with this. Um, ah, uh, aging. Mm. But there are some shows that like I watched when I was younger and I've watched recently and I'm like still good still slaps if anything I get parts of it now that I didn't get last time so It is always a little bit weird to see a show. That's like actually for kids <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember I Actually misjudged a show because I thought it was doing that uh, when I watched Kipo and the age of wonder beasts the first season I thought was very like like, oh, it's it's weird to see a, a colorful post-apocalyptic kids cartoon that is actually for kids. And then as I watched it, I was like, oh, I was incorrect in my assessment. There's a lot of shit going on in this one. Yeah. <laughs> Ever have one of those days where you just can't seem to win? Whoever freed Lee sounds like my tech is right up there. One of my sisters, Sister B, well, no, Sister A. We had her bachelorette and sister B suggested we watch the Hannah Montana movie and um, wow. no regrets. <laughs> Still hits exactly the same. Oye Miles, me enteré de lo que pasó con el Oh, that's beautiful. Hold on. Got to witness a conspiracy theory in action. Everyone loves a good conspiracy theory. Yay! Saying a thing over and over again doesn't make it true. The delay for you guys is like a full minute somehow now. It is, unfortunately, Jeez. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's okay. A, a couple of people we're, mentioned we're that it's kind of laggy. Oh, yeah. It's uh, only been that occasionally, uh, and it's it's shaken itself out pretty quick. I think that certain parts of the city are just a little bit heftier on the uh, processor. I don't know why it would result in lag if it's not lagging on the PlayStation. The weird thing is, like, the audio seems to not be lagging when that's happening, which makes me think that it is the footage coming through. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't know, this but... This is a big, big delay. It's okay. A hefty boy. 
I'm just one fighter. I got it. This is like a new MacBook from like I got it in 2020. So it's not like I'm on like terribly out of date tech. It's right on the table. Oh yeah, I do recommend getting one of those little like brackets that just lifts your computer up a few inches so that the fan kind of breathes a little better. I have one of those that I basically always use when I'm streaming. So when the fan spins up, I don't worry about anything actually getting damaged. It depends on what uh, flavor of MacBook it is, too, because they do, especially in the newer models, they have very different specs depending on which one you got, and some of them are going to be a lot more robust than others. I don't know which one you picked up. But... Hey, Blue, quick, we're going to judge your computer setup. <laughs> we don't got to judge this computer setup. Listen. I don't want to be that tech person. <laughs> Man finally got a uh, monitor, so I my work here is done. I set up now. <laughs> nice. Can't but convince did it. Put it in vert yet. No, no, I did not invert mode. I could. And I but can't it would knock over a bunch of other things on my desk if I put it in vert. I can't oh, convince tragic. him that he needs a mouse. <laughs> That's fair. Is it? <laughs> unless you're Well, I mean It depends yeah, on like, how you like unless you're hardcore gamering, you know, unless you're doing a lot of first person shooters. <laughs> Let me grab I usually prefer to use a trackpad when I'm doing audio editing and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. I have a mouse for my desktop, but like, I don't know, sometimes it's worth it. Up there, remember? I'm just... You on your way? Doesn't it hurt your wrist? <laughs> Mr. Atlas is confirmed to the be thing here. that hurts my wrist the most is the uh, job where I sit like crutch like a little yeah, goblin in my chair. <laughs> so I feel like the mouse versus so trackpad quick. thing is a pretty minor consideration. But I think that's just me personally. That's fair. That's fair my joints don't work very well, so if I use a trackpad for too long, my fingers just like don't cooperate anymore. <laughs> that makes sense. A mouse would be more ergonomic on that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Ooh, train. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yeah, you'll, you'll see it when you get there. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, it's a big train. It goes real fast. Broom, broom. This thing's broom. pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. Still no sign of Lee. Or the gang that took him. <laughs> Why am I tired? I having better luck than me. I like, slept most of last night. Couldn't tell you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I anxious? Oh, I mean, I'm anxious because I have anxiety. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was the Tory. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? Uh, oh. Hey, Pete. You ready to come by the foundation? Sure. I'm excited to see what you're up to. Great. I'm excited to show you. Oh, Train! <laughs> so there you go, guys. Wow. That's, the, that's the delay. <laughs> that's what we're working with, baby. <laughs> we started off pretty chill. It was just the moment where the laptop was like fucking doing the, the, the Spider Man holding the train back thing and like nearly dying in the process. The, the, the stream got lagged a little bit. Yeah, usually it gives me a low battery when I'm at like 15 or 20%, but I got to four and I only realized because everything else broke, so I manually checked. I'm it's sure not like the screen was like black or anything. Like all the windows were open, it just didn't bother to give me that notification. But also, like, let's give the MacBook some credit for keeping the stream live. I really thought we were going to need to start a second one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well. Um, I'm, I've missed a lot of donations because I've been in and out of the room, but Anonymous mm. just donated $20. Thank mm. you. Uh, we've had a good amount of people join as the stream's gone on, so yeah. just a reminder, this stream is for UNICEF. Um, if you don't know UNICEF, which it's a pretty Some common <laughs> worldwide charity. Uh, UNICEF hey, works on improving children's welfare from early childhood all the way through young adulthood with things like basic needs like food, water, shelter, education, as well as you know other maybe slightly less basic needs like helping advocate for child welfare uh, across the globe. Mm -hmm. So. It's a really good charity. We appreciate anything you guys can give. Big donations, of course, always appreciated, but the small ones also really add up. So $1, $2, $5, if that's all you can give, we really appreciate it. And if you can't, it's just past the holidays. We understand that too. But thank you to yeah. everyone who's been donating. Really amazing. Uh, we're already over 1,500, so 
We're about to That's pretty cool. Nice. Okay. But there's a lot of debris slowing down the technicians. If you're free, they could really use your webs to help keep the building stable. All right, we can advance the plot, or Absolutely. we can go help this uh, this we'll fire chief who needs some help with some. Uh, clearing out of... Oh, never mind, we got... Uh, you got plot. <laughs> we got within plot, the, the plot, realm plot, of plot. Uh, the, the plot, and it magnetized us into the mission. Sometimes you find the plot, sometimes plot, plot finds you. I mean, if we're trying to, like, finish the game in two streams, I think yeah. rerunning that plot is good. Yeah. Also, uh, just quick comment, because I saw someone said uh, Red and Cyan are still back in 2023. Cyan is uh, in the same room as Blue. That would be me. Indigo and Red are on the delay. <laughs> yeah, we're experiencing like relativistic time dilation and shit. It's like that bit in Interstellar. You remember that? Mm -hmm. That's Emily's tree. Yeah, vaguely. <laughs> oh. I really thought that movie was gonna have more stay in power. You made it. Awesome. I really didn't. I didn't. <laughs> It's cool that it exists, and I think it looks pretty and all. But like, if you ask me to tell you like what Interstellar is about, I don't know that I could explain it in any sort of salient way. And I love weird sci-fi stuff, so I'm exact. I'm the target audience for Interstellar, and I didn't care about Interstellar. Well, I mean, when it comes to like what it's about, I think that's actually an extremely fair assessment. Because I was gonna be like, no, it's you know they go to space to hmm shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. The only Why thing I can tell you it's like, about is black holes. That's it's because the, yeah. it, it's 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 Dust Bowl 2.0, and they're like, we gotta we gotta get we gotta evacuate the Earth. Let's go to other planets. These ones might be good. Let's go check it out. Uh, and then there's some stuff about how like maybe there are these like extra dimensional others that are like helping us out because they made us this wormhole that we can use and stuff. But then it turns out the others were future humanity all along. Which doesn't really matter all that much. Um, you know. Uh, and then they're like, actually, the only force that can uh, violate the laws of relativity is love, which is stupid and doesn't make sense. But then they act like yeah. it does. I can respect that the technology point. that went into making that movie while still thinking that there's no world where I'm interested in really watching it again because it wasn't doing anything interesting with its actual plot. Love it. Yeah. Real quick, I love that the symbiote decided to manifest as a wonderful cable so knit sweater for Harry. <laughs> or sorry, cable knit cardigan. Can't fight crime if you ain't cute. This is my biggest problem in Baldur's Gate is that the armor sets I like are not the cutest armor sets in the game, and therefore I have to when I got suffer. Out, I made a few changes. Like what? Diverted my salary into research projects. Yes. Installed so much a diverse board to keep us on the right track. Sorry, is Harry wearing something different than he was wearing in the beginning of the scene? Probably. Uh, I don't think so. Because when, when you said that, I was like 30 seconds back, and I didn't see him wearing a cardigan. Yeah. It looks a bit like a blazer from the back, but it's a cardigan. No, I mean, like, he he wasn't wearing anything that looked like that. Oh, I think, is he wearing, like, a like, green jacket just, or something? I think that's just his overlayer, and he didn't... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm hallucinating. I'm, I'm going back. No, he was wearing a cardigan. It, just, it was okay. pretty open in the first scene. Huh. Versus he Young. like buttoned it up. Weird. All right. Well, plot time. So, nice to so meet thank you. you to all the anonymous donations. Like <laughs> Yay! Great to meet you, Doctor Young. Harry says you're working with bees. Yes, and it's quite an urgent situation. Hey. <laughs> A full third of the food you eat every day comes from crops. I'm trying to feel like I haven't really watched anything particularly notable lately, other than important thing. I'm trying to think if there's any media that Indigo has consumed recently to bring to the stream. But really, I've done so little other than work and play a game. Want to see how? I already started talking about Rebel Moon, so I don't want to do that again. This is cool. I haven't really watched it TV or anything. Uh, I had to watch Richard, or Rise of the Guardians for um, Oh, yeah! <laughs> I was meaning to rewatch that. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I wouldn't rush to it. I don't think it's movie. Damn, devastating. It's not bad, it's not bad but it's, it's a movie I'm like, well, if I watched this when I was 10, I'd be really into it. But as an adult, I'm, like, yeah, yeah. This is, I'm not mad that I had to spend like an hour and a half watching this, but I also don't uh, think I'm ever going to running to watch it again. I understand what was happening on Tumblr in the 2000s. I was alive <laughs> then. I just didn't engage. Oh, but why? Okay, flying home. Because uh, mostly I just use Tumblr to save funny haha -ha videos from when I didn't have Vine. <laughs> I miss Those Vine. Wolves you've just Everyone misses Vine. You just saved yeah, the lives so beautiful. The world was so pure and, and simple then. Wow. 
Mm -hmm. I'd love to help any way I can. I could take a look at Juicy Drum System. What the hell is this thing foreshadowing? Oh, don't worry, we're already past it. Um, it's not really foreshadowing much. It's it's a side activity you can do. It's basically just getting you familiar with all the different sciencey things that are going on in in this foundation, setting the stage for this is a really great thing. This is a nice, fun thing that Peter and Harry can do together as friends. Nothing will ever go wrong. <laughs> The stuff we talked about all the stuff we I was just trying to, to think if there was any Spider-Man villain that had a bee motif but I think those are all DC I think there's I there's think... some inclination that Dr. Morbius is, like is there a Dr. What? Young in Morbius, Morbius? Uh, are you I is mean it... I don't know if it's a Spider-Man villain but like Yellow Jacket exists in uh, Marvel that's probably yeah, the closest you, you can, can and like the wasp and all them that's probably where your bee tie-ins are gonna come from I guess I, Morbin time I, I thought I saw some connection <laughs> to, to like a Dr. Michael somewhere I used to work with Dr. Morbius it's Dr. Morbius. His last legal name is Morbius. Absolutely oh. insane. Anyway. Yes. Uh, that would be so boy. bad. People are going to make you watch <laughs> Madam <laughs> Web, aren't they? <laughs> oh, is that still happening? Is there any hope that it's been canceled? Because that would be the thing that turns my whole day around. If I knew well, I don't know. Like, DC and Marvel are both... A trailer like... came out for it, so unless something really dramatic has happened, I think it's still happening. I don't know. It's just DC and Marvel seem to be burning everything to the ground to try and, you know, uh, correct, you know, course correct, whatever the hell they've been doing. So I thought... I haven't heard a single goddamn thing about Madam Web, so maybe it's not happening, but I don't know. No, it's happening. I mean, a trailer came out a while ago. Yeah, well, I, don't, I imagine that they've filmed it, I mean, so it's probably right. just going to come out and do Well, as we know, that doesn't guarantee a movie will ever see the light of day. I <laughs> if think someone maybe can make a fuck by that. killing it. So yeah, I think easy. with the FTC investigations into that, I think um, <laughs> we might be seeing a bit more of a crackdown on whether or not. I, I think things that are filmed are going to be statistically more likely to make it to screen, if nothing else, at this point. Just because. Is there really an FTC investigation about Warner? I don't remember the specifics, but there was projects? a while ago something. Uh, it was like we need to look into blank. I don't know how far it went or anything. I didn't keep up super up to date with it, but. I think there was at least an inquiry, if not like a full investigation. Oh, yeah. um, also, but just any sort of slap on the wrist or, wrist or idea that there might be actual consequences yeah. is probably going to scare exac exactly enough to at least not rush to cancel everything yeah. mm. uh, in the same way. Especially things that have had like trailers come out. Yeah. I love how the Foundation's like, wow, look at this rock. So there could be life forms <laughs> out in the stars <laughs> arriving on our planet from rocks. Would that be fucked up or what? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. No, oh, that's T R Y. Uh, thank you, Anonymous, for hey, three thousand T R Y. I don't know what oh, you need to funding that is. Thanks for donating. Turkish lira. Charge my bicycle. Maybe. Let me try. Can I? Yep, it's Turkish lira. Fuck yeah, dude! I know my shit. When they're road ready, we'll need people to test them. Nice. I'll try to come back. Although googling try money, I was not expecting to work. I'll be honest. <laughs> See, that's why you Are you tired of possessing things? <laughs> Try money. Just do a TRY to USD. <laughs> Is the trade and barter system getting you down? Do you wish you had some kind of go-between that had no inherent value of its own? Try money. Gold standard, who's she? <laughs> Very cool. Do they collect crop data too? They will by the time we're done with them. That's awesome. Do you wish Thanks. to keep deer you killed, but also acquire bread? Try money. <laughs> Try money. <laughs> it's like uh, yeah, no, like bartering systems. Thank you, anonymous, for twenty. I should explore as much I'm as not I can doing, right now. I I, I committed to not doing uh, currencies. I will not. That one's just dollars, though. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Hey, whenever you're ready, come meet me up here. I'm on my way. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in this foundation, and, and genuinely, all the places where you can just, like, walk around and explore are so lovingly rendered. Like, this is a case where, oh, this, the interior of this building was very expensive on development resources, but it is really, really cool. Blue, I want to do side quests, Blue. We're going to explore every inch. Well, no, we're not. There's a whole bunch of other stuff I'm not talking about. Oh, thank this you. is what it's like going to museums with you, too, so this does make sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Grayson, for 20. Yeah. Like, you really have a 
Are you a power walk through museums and just kind of look at the things that look cool kind of person, or a read every single sign in the museum kind of person? Yes. I like to hit that middle ground. Like, I know the things I want to see, and if something doesn't seem super cool, I'm not going to stop and read all the signs. But if I'm in a place where I know, I'm like, like an art museum, I'm looking at everything. Your energy seems really For me, good. it really depends. I if I great. bring my so wheelchair with me, then I will stop and read everything. But otherwise, mm. standing is hard, so we are going to see things and then leave. Middle school. I'm a notorious okay. power walker. Yes, I you are. Enjoy <laughs> museums. <laughs> Popular guy. But when I'm not Sorry, sick, I can go zoom zoom job. in the wheelchair. You were saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know the stuff everyone Remember when we went to that uh, that really cool museum in uh, yeah, Reykjavik so. where they had the about volcano exhibit where they pumped the smell exactly. of volcano so, into Dr. the theater Boss where they were playing the movie about volcanoes? Yeah, that was freaking mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. But you guys didn't go to the other volcano oh. museum while we were in Iceland. You no, because you know. Know. Which I did, and it was cool. You guys went to a different... No, I, I went to a different museum oh, entirely. Oh, yeah, you did. Seriously, one of my favorite spots. <laughs> you went to the phallic museum, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a dick museum and we didn't go as a group? We did not go as a group. <laughs> no, you decided I thought not to go. <laughs> yeah, it was offered. We had all gotten uh, dinner together. It was like the first day we were in Reykjavik. And then myself and a couple others split off. And I thought we Oh, yeah, this is sounding family. familiar, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think like the rest of us went like glove and chocolate shopping or something. Yeah. High school friends right. went yeah. to okay. find dietary restriction so food. Yeah, so I forgot that it was a choice between Dick Museum and glove and chocolate shopping. <laughs> And obviously that recontextualizes a little bit. But yeah. And then when you guys went hiking, I went to other volcano museum, which was really freaking cool. It talked about every single volcanic eruption that they had record of in, in Iceland. I was like, nice. They had a uh, similar exhibit in Auckland Domain when I, because uh, I got in a little bit of tourism before you guys arrived when we went to New Zealand. Um, and uh, it was kind of fun going from like one end of the Pacific, well, not even the Pacific, one end of the uh, planets uh, split to the other, and just being like, yep, volcanoes is the same. Um, Everywhere's volcano. Although I did get jump scared by a Pompeii body, which I was not expecting to see in New Zealand. <laughs> oh! Now you're ready to yeah, that was huh. fun. Oh, thank you, Anonymous, for the 50. Working on to grow yeah! Well drought conditions. Corporations patent GMO seeds for profit. And are rightly criticized. Yeah, yeah Barnes Museum in Philadelphia is a really nice little art museum. Um, instead of financial gain. As a big Van Gogh fan, which is a very cold take, but still, uh, mm. there's a lot of really cool pieces of his in there, and uh, it's, it's, it's fun. That, that's a good one because it's all set up in the nice way that work. the guy Listen, Barnes, whose collection it was, um, own, had it placed in his house, and so when you walk through it, you're walking through these like. Your take on it. Really, like, specifically completely covered walls and these, like, of course. homey rooms. And there's a lot of, like, furniture pieces and stuff that are also on display in the same spot. And it's just, like, a very neat uh, museum. And it's also very accomplishable because it's a pretty small one, all things considered. And uh -huh. I like that their rotating exhibit is included with the price of admission. So you yeah. don't need to, like, pay extra to go see whatever the funky thing that they got in, like, annexes. It is always very fun when they just take somebody's house and turn it into a museum a after the fact. Yeah. Oh. Very much so. I mean, he had like a crazy art collection, but it's Harry it's a neat right. like format to, to view those paintings in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's Thank one of those Boston. in Boston near so now where, where like, we went to school that Might was just it's someone's house. <laughs> it was just their house. Sense. They couldn't move anything, yeah. <laughs> but you got to go <laughs> explore. Or is it mm -hmm. our office? And also, uh, Harry, remember, Blue and I went down to today, Rhode Island once, um, the Rhode Island School, the Rhode Island, it's don't decide just yet. Not RSID, I don't remember what it's Rhode Island for, School of okay. Design. Yeah, but I forget what the I is. Oh, Rhode Island. In. Gosh, okay, I'm clearly <laughs> tired. I might need to go make more tea. But anyway, uh, it's they have a really cool museum there, too. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I feel myself fading, so I am going to go get wow. my coffee. I'll be back in a moment. Cool beans. Um, when you come back, I will go get some coffee. <laughs> we'll, we'll rotate. Excellent. Tag in. Excellent. Yes, this way people will even have more questions about how many women are on this stream. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a constant rotating cast of women. <laughs> They're just going to quietly recast us between movies like the when they went from Batman so Begins amazing. to the Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. Mm. We're just gonna act like it's completely the same, and then we're gonna kill them off just to make things easier. The problem is we're all in the alto to mezzo soprano range. I'm a contralto. I don't know what you're talking about. I consider that in the alto range. I mean, I guess. 
All I could think about Listen, was, I've sang tenor through, like, high soprano. <laughs> yeah, Ranges no, yeah. Exist. Dear contralto, contralto and tenor are basically You call yourself contraltos, but you have the word alto in your name. Curious. Oh, <laughs> curious. <laughs> well, it's like, if, you're, if it's contrabass, then you're still in the bass range. Yeah. Ooh, a coffee maker. Sorry, I'm 30 seconds behind. There is a shiny <laughs> coffee maker. That's why we're all discussing coffee. Yeah. Join me. Some of the things that I love about this game is so like the more. very like science forward like hey you know we really need to protect our ecosystem and a lot of other things they do like this is the kind of thing that it's like ah this would give a hyper conservative like has an aneurysm at the thought of the word woke a heart attack and I like that for this game I like that they commit to that are we getting <laughs> spicy in the chat just a tiny it's bit because there, there's other stuff they do with like you know um, the the idea of like the the, um, the diversity of, of people in New York talking about later on there's a side mission that goes very heavily into um, the black musical culture of New York and Harlem in particular and it's like Whoa. oh anyone who like throws a shit fit about wokeism is going to drop dead playing this mission have fun. <laughs> that is that is something funny because that would have never occurred to me uh, just playing the game organically. But you're not wrong. Yeah. And that's what's so wild about it is like this is a complete non-issue except for people for whom it is an absolute nightmarishly important issue. Yeah. It's like there's one sequence where, you know, you're taking pictures of people in New York and there's a lot of stuff you get from that one, but there's one where there's a protest and um, Howard, the guy who you're sending the photos to, is like, you know, protesting isn't just a constitutional right, it's your civic responsibility. I'm like, oh, Dang. people are gonna fucking lose it hearing this. Dang. Whereas I'm like, hell yeah, dude. It's like, oh, oh, some people are gonna be quaking in their little snowflakey boots watching that. <laughs> Uh, thank you to Hey Burger for the 50, and also to the person who called me out by saying, Road is it not butter? Leave me alone. <laughs> Sound and Indigo sound really similar? I mean, as I said, we're all women in the rough alto range. <laughs> that feel when women. <laughs> Part of it is you guys hear Red and Blue's voices a lot. You might hear Indigos yeah. if you listen to the OS Pod. Definitely recommend. Or Movie Struck. Also definitely recommend. <laughs> or Rolling with Difficulty. Also recommend. Highly recommend. You basically only hear me on streams, so mm. I just kind of get lumped into whoever else is going on. The thing is, I obviously do poke fun at the like, oh, all the OSP women sound the same thing. But there have been times when I've been watching a stream back and there will be like a sound and I'm like, I'm not 100% sure which of us did that. Like our speaking voices to me are completely distinct ranges, but there is just a little bit of overlap sometimes. Well, it's Hi, it's me, the overlap. Hi, Hello. overlap. <laughs> We're just talking about all your podcasts. Oh God, yeah, that's what I do for a living. Um... <laughs> <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna go get coffee, unless Red, you wanna go get coffee first. I'm, I'm still posted up with my coffee. Oh, okay. Fire away. <laughs> beer, beer, you want tea? Uh, I'll take a coffee. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Also, we can start to notice that a little bit of the sand in downtown Manhattan's getting cleaned up. They're working yeah. on it. Because if there's one thing we know about Manhattanites, it's that they don't like sand. Coarse, rough, and irritating. Hmm. Such a good bit. <laughs> uh, movie struck featuring Cyan Wen. Cyan has been on Movie Struck. She get smart. Uh, like you. Woohoo! Yeah. Go to the back lot. There. Promise. Gotta move. Hope I'm not intruding. Never. Let's do this. I just launched four people off of a building. <laughs> Spider-Man, no. Spider-Man. Da 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 da. <laughs> oh God, camera did not like that at all. <laughs> I swear I'm a real gamer. I 100% in my first save file, I promise. <laughs> we believe you. We did believe you until you got all defensive about it. Yeah. <laughs> the gamer doth protest too much, methinks. <laughs> I wanted to do that. <laughs> I love that if you turn down swing assist and you try to do the loop-to-loop. -loop. Oh, it doesn't turn out well. 
That's so funny. <laughs> the first time I did that, I, I like, yelped audibly. <laughs> You'll see it in a second. I'm excited. I think I just saw you throwing four people off a building, so it might be a little oh, bit more than a God. second. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, this is fine. Hey, what's up? I just wanted to let you know that I talked to Gloria. Ah, hubris, it defeats us all. Oh, Spider Man. Mm. A superhero after my own heart. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to go through everything by then. I feel like we run into but the problem too that. when you have uh, the three OSP women on stream as as is I'm that. Everything. When we're on stream, right like, now. I don't know about you, Red, but, like, I put on a little bit more of a voice when I'm don't doing a podcast that's, like, a like a radio presenter voice, like, more right. post-forward, and that tends to make it more distinct. <laughs> I'm and sorry, I just saw the loop-de-loop! -loop. Yep. <laughs> God, that's loop -loop. shameful. You gotta do the loop-de-loop. -loop. If you turn you down web assist, it will just throw you into buildings if you're not careful. I want to go back and watch that again. Hold on. <laughs> oh, we'll have, we'll have opportunities. Oh, I'm seeing it. Don't worry. Because <laughs> I actually am watching it. I can go back and see it again. In uh -huh. slow motion. Hey, I'm at the bridge. Excuse me. There's no sign of our mysterious safari pirates. Oh, man. We were sure it was there. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry it's funnier the second time when I know it's coming. <laughs> oh, no. You'd think your spidey sense would have warned you about that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. That perfectly... Um, stationary building. <laughs> Watch Maybe out for you got a, just looped into the generalized anxiety of being Spider-Man. You know, it always just kind of feels like that. There's technically danger around every corner. General Spider-Man on Wii. Okay. No, this is on PlayStation. Haha. <laughs> 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 boyfriend's getting a little mad at me because I keep calling our PS5 and Xbox by mistake, and he's oh. like, "It's not." And I'm like, "I know, but does it really matter? There's only the one thing in the entire apartment." <laughs> You just call it the console. And I had to remember a third word. <laughs> Alright. Just call it the Nintendo. And I had to remember a fourth word. Spider-Man to jump into the middle of that circle of, um, the uh, buoy things and just make a core off pop into existence. Yeah. What do we have here? I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about the the spider okay, robot arms. I'm iffy on Take them. I I yeah. like what they did. I mean, we had our various theories about like how they'd incorporate the the Spider-Man arms, um, like after the symbiote plotline. But no, it starts at the beginning of the game. I yeah. I may have done it differently if if I were in charge, but I don't. No, if I have a better option. It just okay, kind of feels a little Parker. weird. You daydream about those fat science stacks later. Time to chase. It does kind of make Spider-Man a little bit more Doc Ock than I think he necessarily needs to be. Um, but I understand why they would want to take him away. That actually works? So the whole, um, Emily May thing, is this like a, hey, Spider-Man, you could potentially retire from spider man because this is another different way to do good. Because he's um, talking about, like... Harry no, 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 no. doesn't know that Pete is Spider-Man. This is like, well, hey, I know Pete, that. you missed your job for being a teacher? You can come do this, and we can work on it together and, and heal the world kind of thing, so... Um, 
Well, the thing is, like, I, Harry doesn't need to know that Pete is Spider-Man for this to be presented as kind of a, like, belated uh, refusal of the call. There's got to be a name for that, because this is a thing that shows up in a lot of heroes' journeys. It's like the, the temptation to not do the quest anymore. Um, anyway, I wasn't sure if that's what was going on, because the way he was talking about it, he was like, I'm going to miss these chases when I'm at Emily May. It's like, you're going to miss being... What? What's going to be stopping you? Uh, I, I guess that's fair. Um, I don't think it would, like, to my recollection, it's not presented as something he would do instead of being Spider-Man, um, mm. but it, he would Spider-Man less to do gotcha. the Emily May Foundation. Robot. Okay, that makes sense. Maybe I can test something out. Okay, let's see. Sorry, Birdie. This is just as awkward for me as it is for you. There should be a... Yep. Oh. Is that your home? Come on, Birdie. Let go. Come on. Stop buy a ticket for this ride. No. Might need to give it a few minutes oh, first. <laughs> Where are we going now? It's the problem, like, I, I should have drank it earlier, because, like, caffeine doesn't really do too much to me, but the action of MJ, making a drink and then drinking it in the morning, the sometimes the routine of it can it's help wake me up a little bit, mm. so I think Owner maybe I'm just using the coffee incorrectly, uh, <laughs> and that is the way it goes sometimes. There's some Snubby. shell company that's been acquiring property all over the city, like whole city blocks. I tried to do a story on them last month, but a trail dried up. Every person I was talking to just vanished. Go make yourselves useful. Our departure is imminent. Who are these people? One of the things that's kind of fun about uh, Craven's little band of hunters is they're a very international uh, gang of scallywags. The the accent variety <laughs> on display is something. <laughs> I was kind of expecting the, um, oh no, the little vulture bot took me really high into the air thing to become more of a problem. Yeah, it's not. Like, <laughs> maybe it was supposed to be before they were like, oh, we're just going to let Peter have web wings. That was fast. You find something? Kind of just solves it pretty cleanly. This armed group calls themselves hunters. And they've got a lot of accents. Hmm. International mercenaries? That's what I'm thinking. Could be front page material for your article. I'm writing it up now. Thanks. Oh, and speaking of work, I accepted Harry's offer. That's fantastic! We should celebrate later after you're done with your- Walking up behind an enemy for a stealth Don't takedown is so un-Spider-Man-y. Hmm. You gotta be elevated. Yeah, you gotta be grabbing those guys with webs and yanking them up into the ceiling. Yeah. Can't you do that thing where you, like, walk on top of the webs from, like, wall to wall? Uh, Ooh. later, yeah. Oh. Yeah. This is another thing where it's like, nobody can ever look up in these games, because Pete's primary way of, like, temporarily disposing of people is just to, like, web them up to ceilings, and it's not like those guys are going to be moving around to stay out of sight of people. That's everyone. True, but also if he, like, now, if he puts a web over their mouth or something and they can't make a lot of noise, I don't know that I would think to look up if I was like, where'd my buddy go? Do I just look up more than most people? This can't possibly be a thing. I think you might. You take no, pictures of the buildings in New York from street level. <laughs> it's because they're nice buildings. You look up. <laughs> Granted, I look up too, but not as much. Ugh. What's Craven hunting? Yeah, we're going to need more than two streams to finish yeah. this game. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> All right, just tell me what you want the next thumbnails to look like, boss. <laughs> you hungry, too? Spider-Man is venting. <laughs> nice mm. to sleep you. Aw, 
from me? You shouldn't have. Oh, sturdy and flexible. Yeah, sorry, I'm just watching the cutscene as <laughs> Peter's just like, oh, what's this they've got here? Interesting technology. La di da di da, let me analyze it. I mean, I'm also, I was enjoying watching Spider Man delicately type on a keyboard that looks a little too small for him. Yeah. Time to take my shiny new toy for a test. Like, drive. he puts his finger on the keyboard and, like, the keys pop up and stick with him. <laughs> <laughs> So now we can Rush. do the little walk in on web lines. These guys are better equipped than most armies. This Craven guy must be rich. Or well connected. Both. Just got some stealth going on here. This game does not have as much of a focus on stealth as the first game. Maybe for better, maybe for worse, because mm. I, I don't know if what we really needed in the Spider-Man games was stealth. Um, it does feel like Peter essentially and, and Miles only really have one default option in their toolkit, which is to, to kind of go in guns blazing, which is a much more Spider-Manly way to do it. You don't see Spider-Man, you know, stealthing much uh, around big groups of enemies in movies. He basically just fights them and tries not to get shot. Well, you also don't generally pit Spider-Man against big groups of enemies. Yeah. Like, that's one of the things that the game does that I think is pretty cool, but it was very much, again, kind of Arkham-inspired, where it's like, we always have Batman facing off against huge groups of goons, and Spider-Man can do that, especially if we give him four extra arms to punch with. Yeah. Um, but he's traditionally kind of a... You generally pit Spider-Man against one big, strong enemy, so he has to use his advantage of mobility to take them down. That's why he's usually fighting, like, Rhino, or Sandman, um, or Kraven. <laughs> Alright, where to next? Keep forgetting where the next thing is. Um, is it a, this? You? No. Um, oh, I triggered a trap. That's embarrassing. Oh, there it is. Thank you, game. It just wanted me to kind of screw around with looking at the various options before it let me go in. Research lab. Okay. Now here we get to see a little bit of the the mess that that Craven has uh, made while he's been here. Hallucinogens. He's got uh, hallucinogens synthesized from uh, Scorpion's toxin, which is no good. And the one flower that you can use as a antidote to it that uh, Peter says he could not source because it was very expensive so he just kind of had to take the poison on the chin whenever he got it. the flights to Guess Craven could. Dr. Farley Stillwell? His genetic experiments gave I'm just saying, if I were a member of some kind of dubiously legal sure militia research. and weird shit kept happening and my teammates kept disappearing, I'd look up. It would be like the second <laughs> thing I did. <laughs> so then perhaps you would have been better at dealing with a Spider-Man than these guys. I can't imagine that Craven sources his, uh, his mooks from anywhere but the best. I can't be outperforming these guys. Lee's old superpowered gang. Craven better not be trying for the same with his hunters. Craven's study Got a whole bunch of random vials of blood on the desk. Figure out where his powers came from. That's probably fine. Yes. Always a good sign it's, when it's you It's totally that. normal. <laughs> it's totally yeah. fine and normal. And then a crossbow to uh, test out Testing how to pierce into Scorpion's armor. One might recall, scratch? Scorpion's not supposed to be able to come out of the armor. So... What's the armor doing on the wall? Ah! <laughs> oh no! Have they already gotten Scorpion? For weaknesses. 
Peter says, almost an exact yeah, replica. Oh, PD, my boy. Just looks a little <laughs> bit more beat up than last time. That's weird. What are these bullet holes and claw marks doing on this? Can't believe they got out my boy Scorp. Hey, MJ. I have mm. another name. Hashtag Scorp. Share this with your friends to totally <laughs> Scorp them. He's the boss of this guy. Oh, He's here on some kind of hunt. Craven the Hunter. What's he hunting? Whatever it is, it definitely involves Scorpion and me. Mind looking into this Craven guy in the meantime and letting him get to Already on play it. around with bullying the uh, robot what birds you, that Craven has. Yay. <laughs> The stealth speed runs of these encounters must be really fun, where you just oh, thank you, dear. Uh, you just speed run blitz. How many people you can press triangle to like web attack? <laughs> I get got. I got got. Oh, darn it. You've been got. You've been totally scorped. <laughs> yeah, I got scorped. They <laughs> shared it with me and I've yeah. been scorped. The scorper has become the scorped. The scorper has become the scorpy. <laughs> it's right there. Implication is that the, uh, the bad guy's shields that are so invincible to stuff is basically made from... Whatever the fuck Scorpion's been uh, walking around Paris Fashion Week with. Huh. Have a mm -hmm. Just something really crazy. Mm -hmm. Something high fashion. Whereas with all Met Gala suits, it takes away all of your mobility and acrobatics, so you yeah. can only walk. Well, realistically, if it was a Met Gala suit for Peter Parker, it would just be a black tuxedo. But... I was going to say, we got to remember Spider-Man is a dude. He would probably just wear a standard issue black suit. But if we go Hellfire Gala with it, then maybe they could actually have some fun. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Has spices. Hell yeah. spices. Which is not the actual thing. It's hell yeah. Now I've got business, and and they've got spices. But you know. What uh? What spices are you putting in your coffee? Um, depends. For this one, I made him a little masala latte. So had a little garam masala and cinnamon, plus milk and espresso. Mine is just espresso and milk. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I got the person in chat who said, Rip my boy Scorpion, hashtag Scorped too soon. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just an intrinsically funny syllable. Mm -hmm. It's a sound that makes people go, ha ha ha, you know? Really <laughs> yes, I, I'm familiar with the concept. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Oh, funny. Classic comedy. They do the ha 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 thing. Very funny. <laughs> this stream has not been running long enough to justify the energy that we're bringing right no. now. <laughs> this is what happens to me on Fridays because what I've learned with when the rolling with difficulty season is happening is that like my busy days of the week are Wednesday and Thursday, and then the rest of the day, like Monday and Tuesday, I don't even know if I have anything to do, and then Friday it's like. Mm. I am not a human being anymore. <laughs> We've been watching a lot of uh, Dropout, and we watched the Cool as a Cucumber where Brennan was talking about, like, I am no longer here behind this podium. <laughs> I, I hear that in Indigo's, like, once, like, Thursday rolls around and, like, it is finished up, I, I disassociate. I, I leave the material plane to return yeah. on Monday. <laughs> Oh, well, I think we set the rolling with difficulty uh, uploads to make sure that, like, YouTube doesn't go woo -woo 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 with it, and that takes hours. And so usually what happens is, like, Thursday evening, I'm like, great, now I gotta sit here and stare at the screen for, like, three hours and just make sure it says complete. Uh, and it worked out fine this time, so all's well. I was wondering when Animal Control would show up. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah. 
I like that all of Craven's minions are on loan from Horizon Zero Dawn. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is the vibe. <laughs> Someone asked what's in that coffee in uh, quotation marks. Caffeine, uh, mainly. Beans? Bean? Bean coffee? Bean. Bean. What's in your coffee? Question mark, question mark. Ooh, I assume. If yeah, it's not, I have a problem. Do you know where the coffee is? <laughs> I mean, I I see these ads all the time on like Facebook and Instagram where it's like, try mushroom coffee. I'm like, no. 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 <laughs> Stop trying to trick me into putting mushrooms in my body. <laughs> like, I like a mushroom, but that doesn't mean I want to drink it, you know? I understand there's oh, an argument to be brain. made of like, oh, you know, like our, our over-reliance on caffeine has bad long-term effects. Like, yeah, sure. I think the answer is like, moderate your caffeine consumption instead of like, consider drinking hallucinogenic mushrooms. <laughs> I think they're just they might regular. not be hallucinogenic. No, they are just they're... regular, for the, for the sake of the fan. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I, I've shown at least some of you guys the uh, the best lemonade stream and the worst lemonade stream that Joe oh, Apocalypse yeah. did a couple of years. Uh, the one that... The, uh, just the thing that came to mind when you said that is the bit where he's like, there's a mushroom in this one. <laughs> it was like, there's reishi mushroom in here. Do you guys like mushrooms as like a food item? No. <laughs> I've become more tolerant of them since I started liking them on pizza. I like mushrooms a lot. Like I, I'm, I'm excited when they're stir fry or a pasta or something. But I understand that it's acquired taste. It's not for everyone. For me, mushrooms it's more. Of an I didn't used to thing. like them, but there's a place I used to get uh, sushi that would do this thing called salmon butter yaki, uh, which came with these little brown mushrooms stir fried in just copious amounts of butter. And, uh, turns out once you eat something fried in butter, you really start to appreciate that it can be flavorful and tasty. The most compliments I've ever got on how my cooking smells is in the morning when there are onions and butter in a pan. Everyone's like, wow, that smells amazing. And I'm like, yeah, it's two things that always smell good together. Mm -hmm. My mom used to, whenever she'd be cooking and she'd have onions and butter mixed together, I'd always come downstairs. She's like, yeah, I knew that would get you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the smell of breakfast potatoes about to happen, you know? It's all good. It's all good. It's just made rather too recently for the first time. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy actually. It's just a lot of slicing vegetables. I'm tempted to get one of those like slap chop things. Oh, God. oh yeah, they just look like they're. I mean, they look like they're fun, and then I feel like I'm gonna use it. With this is not how I want this thing to be cut. We have a mandolin, but I cut myself too often with a regular knife. Mm. So it seems unsafe. The best you can do. Yeah. This is our intro to Craven does not fuck around. Now everyone's just saying their mushroom opinions in chat. I'm not saying that people can't like mushrooms. I'm just saying I generally don't like mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, none of you are allowed to. <laughs> no, as I said earlier, everyone's entitled to their wrong opinion. I like mushrooms a lot, and I say that you can like mushrooms, so you have to decide who you swear allegiance to. Yeah, Indigo or me, the bad boy of the stream. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like the bad boy move is liking mushrooms, since everyone else here seems to not like mushrooms, which no, means that I, boy. as the mushroom of Defender, am the bad boy. Red was also sounds like something a, a shill for Big Mushroom would say. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Big Mushroom is an even cooler form of Small Mushroom, and we all have seen the <laughs> Minecraft Mushroom. I think that I cool. rest my case. No. What is cooler mushroom. than the uh, Mushroom uh, Valley Canyon thing track on Mario Kart, huh? Where Big Mushroom you can jump on? Who doesn't love that shit? I watched Nausicaa at a formative age, and now I don't trust large fungus in any form. Yeah. I guess that also, I like that Craven just walked off getting stabbed like six inches deep into the shoulder. He has the antidote, but that stab wound's still gonna kick. I was gonna say, like, oh, the trip is one thing, but he just pulled it out, and there was, like, a full six inches of, like, a scorpion stabby thing. That sounds like a Chuck Tingle name. 
Something, something, dogs. 19 inches of venom. Yeah. <laughs> something, something, six inch scorpion tail. I love you. <laughs> now, this is, as far as I'm concerned, the one plot hole of the game. Ooh. Because we have the sequence where Miles is, is, is here at home. Yo, He's... wait, wait, wait. Did you just see how when she turned it, it showed the texture? Yeah. That was cool. Very expensive cutscene. Okay, continue. <laughs> um... Like, Miles is clearly in his head. He's, he's focusing on Lee. There's all this stuff going on. And, and his mom, Rio, walks in like, hey, my date's coming. Like, are you going to be, like, ready for this? Or are you, you going to be, like, weird about it? And Miles is like, oh, um, I just got a text from Pete. He said Sue stop ASAP because, like, of course, Craven's going to try to kill everybody. So um, this is bad. So Miles is like, I'm sorry, I got to run. And now they have this uh, this little phone call between Miles and Pete. And then when it's done, Miles is like, well, I guess I have some time to kill. Let's see what I can do around the city. It's like, Miles Morales, go back home to dinner with your mother. <laughs> we'll see it in a second. I don't know if that's so much a plot hole as Miles really doesn't want to get a new dad while he's still attempting to avenge the old one. Well, no, it's because, like... Peter says, like, suits up. We gotta go right now. And then there is nothing to suits up for. It's just be on the lookout for crazy shit. Oh, I see. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah, he says, if MJ reached out to you with some addresses, uh, would you mind taking point on this? And Miles is like, okay, that's not suits up ASAP, Peter. That that's is, like, there's that some is, shit going on, but take like, your time. Hey, make sure your suit's back from the dry cleaners this evening. <laughs> Let the man... Yeah, guess I've got some time till MJ calls. Miles, What's going on go in the back to your home and have dinner. <laughs> the one plot hole in this game. But to be fair, that's very high school boy. True, yeah. Honestly, just really yeah. high school anyone. Like, oh, my parents are having someone over. I've got a uh, sport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I forgot to iron my, uh, excuse. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, Mom. I gotta catch up on Jameson's podcast. <laughs> Jameson has a podcast? Yeah, that's that's what we're yeah. listening to. Oh, yeah, look. It says podcast right there. Yeah. Look at that. Someday a good guy in a video game will have a podcast instead. I was wondering, what's what that, like, what was that podcast that Miles was listening to earlier that was, like, highlighting this heroic train guy who, like, helped keep the trains um, going? The that's Danicast? the, the Danicast. She was established in the Miles Morales game. She's, like, the, the anti-Jameson character. So she is a good guy. Yeah. Great. Okay. It's the good guy podcast. Podcaster rep. There's got to be multiple co podcasts, or otherwise, how will you choose what to listen to in your morning commute? Mm. And, like, we've got Radio City, but no Chrysler Building. It's so <laughs> weird what things are included and what things aren't. I don't know if a building has the right to not be included in a game. Yeah, no, no. Buildings can be can be copyrighted. We've got fully 30 Rockefeller Center right here. It really depends. It's so sorry, what, weird. If a building that haven't entered the public domain yet? If a building is entirely owned by a corporation, I don't think you can just include their likeness. Also, quote unquote. this is um, this was a big deal when people were like, "Oh my gosh!" Like Notre Dame, like had the whole like spire burning down thing. The Ubisoft model they made for Assassin's Creed Unity can help them reconstruct it. No, it can't because the Ubisoft model is a way too low res for the kind of work they're doing. But also, b they had to change several details of the design because elements of Notre Dame are copyrighted. The rose window, the giant stained glass window um, across the transept, is copyrighted by the French government. You cannot replicate it in any medium whatsoever. So they had to design their own rose window look-alike from scratch there are you, you can copyright buildings it, it, it is a thing <laughs> Silly, but like but true at what point do they enter public domain though so it depends because a lot of buildings are owned by one company and then owned by another company which just kind of prolongs the lack of public domainness. it's like how people iterate on certain uh as you might say, animated movie characters in order to keep them out of the public domain. It also entirely might be the case that like the people who own the um, uh, the Empire State Building are like, 
oh, yeah, like, here, pay us this much money and you can use it. Whereas, like, the people at the Chrysler building might be like, oh, pay us a gazillion dollars. A gazillion. You, you don't know. It, it, it could be differences in, in licensing that would lead someone to be like, oh, yeah, I'll pay the fee to license this. But, like, oh, that fee to license that is exorbitant. So it, it could be any number of different things. But the end result is that the selection of monuments is so weird. <laughs> Huh. Also, like, I'm pretty sure Maybe things like the Statue of Liberty are in the public domain. But, like, because they're not privately owned. Yeah, because that belongs to the state of <laughs> New York or Jersey. It's <laughs> There's in New Jersey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn, that's embarrassing for New York. The island is split up. <laughs> what do we got? Place looks like There's a whole CGP Grey video about this. Um, Perfect chance to use the AR tech. I think it's. Pardon me. It's mostly New Jersey, and there were parts that were added later that are technically a jurisdiction of New York, but they kind of, like, let New Jersey take care of it. Hmm. It It is more complex than that. It's a whole thing. Um, it is at least mostly New Jersey, but there is some legalese weirdness with it. Wacky. Whether it's, like, a New Jersey exclave with the New York's, like, maritime territory. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. <laughs> I found some scratch marks with traces of metal. I'll run it to see if it matches her claws. <laughs> yes, it is fully within the New Jersey maritime state lines. Damn. But there, there is, there, there's another weirdness to it. It's, it's not just New Jersey. There's like a reason it's like a territory dispute. Tears of the Kingdom has completely ruined my video game muscle memory. Mm. I was just like, boy, those uh, terrorist things look very ascendable. Right? <laughs> Why doesn't every game just let you climb stuff? Why doesn't real life let me just phase into the ceiling? Yeah. Got it. There was a... Um, there was a game... Uh, I don't know what it was. It was similar to you with wanting to use Ascend in real life. There was a game that had an ability that I wanted to be able to just randomly use, and I couldn't, and that was... Wasn't uh, Assassin's Creed climbing? No, it was something else. I, I, I forget. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna real quick uh, get some snacks. Sure. Uh, I will be back in a minute. Snack time, snack time. Snack Quick, Red's time. leading. Everybody do their best Red impression. Well, that, wouldn't that be fucked? Anyway, I'm Rod Sterling. Someone says New York owns the statue, New Jersey owns the gift shop. And then that... someone else said New York owns the gift shop. <laughs> but, like, it's split up. The island is split up. There's a, there's a whole thing with it. And that's the problem. Did it. We're not here to get into New York, New Jersey politics. On a map, it looks like it would be only New Jersey, but it is joint custody. It's wacky. <laughs> there are two parents that don't get along. Really yeah. messy divorce. She was grabbing something from that box on the wall. Looks like an emergency stash box. <laughs> a VTuber was here. <laughs> <laughs> I assume this is in reaction to something that's going to show up in about like a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, sorry, not in regards to New York. <laughs> New York is VTuber question mark? They attacked. But she's on the run. It's nice to have coffee. This is exactly we have one of those little mocha pots um, that oh, works nice. really well. Keep me posted. Big fan. Whoa. Makes two small Let's lattes or one big latte. I do a lot of French press and then I have a pitcher that I just put hope I'm not like, too late. Through overnight in. Um, it is fun how with the um, with the various the speed boost abilities you can just get all the way across really fast. Looks like I just missed them. Any signs of where they went? Let me scan the area and see. Man, this is the way people treat their Airbnbs. Only during uh, another stash uh, box. About that. Never mind. Still yep. <laughs> <laughs> you ever just get halfway through a sentence and just forget? You ever just? An electrical node. I bet there's more. Sophia, did you see the uh, did you see the VTuber black cat show up yet? 
Oh, no, I was looking away. Oh. <laughs> well, there was a hologram of Black Cat. Ah, excellent. Bet the generator could power that stash box. to the generator. I can get into the box. This looks right. for me. Ah. I was just webbing up random things. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes you gotta web what you gotta web. Just to baby's figure gotta it out. do what a baby's gotta do. What is that from? Uh, that's from, uh, Paris. oh god, uh, Rugrats. Oh, okay. MJ, how's your French? Non-existent. <laughs> I was but like, the one with Tommy and the screwdriver. <laughs> okay. There's some instruction manual for a wand of a tune. Uh, Indigo, apparently people did not know that you had a first a name. Give me a sec. Oh, yeah, no, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as anyone's concerned on this street, my name is Indigo. According to a translation of the Mystic Arcana, that wand is old. We're talking BC old. Supposedly, whoever wields it can create portals to pretty much... They can think of. I do find it very but funny. Magic? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get there when we get to the relevant like cutscene. <laughs> you think it's the muses, Bork? Miles, let's just stick to the plan. So the hunters are chasing after Felicia, who has managed to okay. find her way to the Sanctum Sanctorum mm. up in Greenwich. And there's a fight breaking out in there. Oh. Crazy. I'm back and I brought my crunchiest snacks. Nice. Also, uh, turns out no one was correct. The Statue of Liberty is legally owned by the government of the United States. Oh. Huh. It's, that sounds... Is it like, isn't it like, like a national park or like yeah, a national monument? It's, a, it's maintained by the National Park Service. Got it. So, uh... There you go. <laughs> Nobody gets to own it. We can all enjoy being wrong together. <laughs> States were squabbling and the government was like, It's mine now. <laughs> We've got 1.5k people watching this. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. nice. Thank you to everyone. Hope you're having a good Friday. <laughs> this is why you watch movie struck, struck po folks. It's a okay. I'm gonna try that again. This is why you watch <laughs> movie struck folks. It's a podcast about movies and the people who watch them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Thank you is. to Shadow of X for the promo. <laughs> Movie Struck is my uh, podcast about movies, people who watch them. It's very fun. Everyone else on the stream has been a guest at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, got a cool episode coming out on Monday. Uh, recent episode Monday. also on uh, Pink Panther movie. Oh, who with, did that? Uh, with yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm on a podcast, I remember how bad I am at talking on podcasts. <laughs> rumors of weird things going have to channel on your inner white boy. Yeah, that's yeah. the same with uh, random fun fact from people who have to have corporate jobs. Uh, if you're ever wondering about salary negotiation, the advice that I was given that's actually helped me a lot is pretend that you are a mediocre white boy with an undergraduate business degree. Ooh, okay. That's pretty much true of any time you need to like gas you like if you need to uh, get your worth in a job situation, just pretend to be a mediocre white boy. Yeah. So you know, just be like, oh, yeah, no, I've got education, so you should pay me this much. That is the energy you need to portray. Yeah. You need dude bro on a podcast energy. Like you need that unbridled hubris in order to really. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because get if what you, you don't, want. they're gonna probably underpay you. So mm -hmm. know your worth. And if you have anxiety, pr pretend someone else is valuing you at a higher amount than you would uh, value yourself. You never know. 
<laughs> this has been job advice with Cyan. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching back some old college humor clips lately from when it was college humor um, mm. and there was a bit of um, uh, Zach telling Grant not to start a podcast very funny stuff <laughs> right yeah don't start a podcast <laughs> I like to think of myself as the opposite of that clip Your podcast anytime someone works. mentions it in my vicinity I appear on their shoulder like a little devil like hey, hey you should start a podcast have you, <laughs> have you considered a podcast that you it's great for audience engagement <laughs> Yes, my the podcast is an excellent idea. <laughs> we talked about on the Ozpot a while ago, like what NPC you would be in a video game, but I do think like if you have to be a type of minion to of it, like you're not the big bad, but you are in the big bad crew, you know, you're in their machine as it were, like what kind of minion would you want to be? And I do think like the sort of sniveling advisor whispering uh, silly little schemes in someone's ear is a very fun role to occupy. Yeah. I'm not right, but you have to listen to me a little bit, and then I die horribly, probably, but still, what a fun little thing I can do. Someone gets to call you their most trusted advisor, so you can put that on your mm -hmm. resume when you escape death and move on to the next evil minion. Exactly. And all the times, I'm just telling them, a podcast. <laughs> You'll get public favor on your side. I'd like to be the minion that, like, technically Spider follows all the directions, fight. but definitely gives side-eye to the dumb stuff. Like, they're like, okay, well, we need to go rescue the princess, so we're just gonna charge in with no swords. It's like, mm-hmm, sounds great, sir. I love that for you. <laughs> Let me know how that goes for you. No, really, I think it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, no, like, basically I want to be Shigo, is, is what I want to be. I want to be Shigo. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We watched some episodes of Kim Possible uh, on winter break. Uh, first time I really like sat down and watched Kim Possible. It's fun. It's, it's fun. fun. It holds up good. Yeah. The, the couple of them were they get uh, held up by. I'm really struggling today. The one where they have the droids and the droids are like, "Ah, oh, you're going to a place that strips you of all individuality," and the high school joke. That that one's a good one. Uh, is that the is one that where Shigo takes over time? the future? I think uh, that's a stitch in time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know that yeah, yeah, that's less. A stitch in time, excuse me. As you can tell, I am thriving, <laughs> living my best life. Train. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Not another train! No! I like that the spider people are a little bit shocked that, okay, yeah, confirmed, magic is real. Magic is real. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite little section of the chases. I'm sure it is a lot of people's, because it's just like, oh shit! They were talking about uh, like, where can we go that's just insane? Answer: <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> Yay! Stop this guy. You're Spider-Man. You've saved the city before. You'll do it again. Spider-Man was right about you. You only care about yourself. In terms of evil minionness, I think uh not that it's your business. Evil bosses like like one of their like lieutenants who's like really into the uh this stated goal of the evil empire, whatever that may be, and is just like super enthusiastic about it. More so than the actual boss. That's one of my favorite things about because when we were doing the um, are we the baddies trope talk, that was one of my favorite tropes, uh, where like the person who thinks they are, the um, who thinks they're on the side of good, and, and like really buys into whatever the stated like morals of their their organization is, and then surprise actually, su surprise you're bad the whole time. I don't know. I think it's very funny. But I was trying to also pay attention to the thirty second delay plot while this was happening. I I like this little sequence um, because the implication that Black Cat is also at her core a basic Paris girly. <laughs> it's kind of funny. 
She said girlfriend, and I got really excited, but I don't think she meant it like that. I no. think she did. Oh shit! Yeah. Never mind. No. I am on board with this. Hell yeah. I did just rescue one of the lesbians in Baldur's Gate, uh, like yesterday. <laughs> I hit that part of that too. <laughs> you found the lesbians? <laughs> yeah. It's like the counter strike. Enemy spotted, but. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Felicia was like, I need to get to Paris right now. And rather than get a plane ticket and be there in like nine hours, I will break in, steal a magic artifact, try and figure out how to use the magic artifact, and use that to maybe get to Paris, maybe. I mean, if you're already Black Cat, why not, right? Yeah. Right. I guess the only question I have at this stage of the game is like, no cops or military have been alerted to the fact that there's just mercenaries with fucking tanks in central Manhattan? To be fair, they're all on the roof. Well, right Not now yet. we're in a park. Um, but yeah, I think it's just like, well, <laughs> I can imagine the dispatch officer who's like, I'm sure Spider-Man's got this one. <laughs> Target the dog, Jesus Christ. We're getting you to Paris. Jesus yes, Christ, I'm not want you out of targeting the dog. God damn it. Did you die? I was trying to web up the stupid fucking dog, and it was like, you want to web up the tank? Got mm. it, boss. I'm like, no. I'm holding the analog stick in the other direction to convey a gameplay intent. <laughs> now let me shoot the dog. <laughs> Take that out of context, too. <laughs> Oh. Blue hates dogs? These cookies are good. <laughs> I'm trying to create bits on this stream, okay? Apparently. <laughs> I get halfway through a sentence and I'm like, this will be funnier if I don't contextualize this as much as I should. <laughs> Small child screaming outside. They're in the park, so I'm not that concerned. Mm. Still, always mildly concerned. You know, you're just sitting and it's like, ah! and you're like, all right, they seem yeah. fine. That's a that's a play scream, not a scream scream. Yeah, that's sometimes a tough distinction. Having been a child once. <laughs> I Sometimes once the play child. scream is like, No, Dark Lord, I'll never join you! And it's like, I hope that's a play scream. <laughs> yeah, no, see, because as I mentioned earlier in the stream, we live near a park. A lot of mm -hmm. students use that park. So the first couple times that I was home during a work day, slash school day, I was just sitting, and then I just heard, like, a lot of kids screaming, and I'm like, are we good what? out here? And then I'm like, oh, it's recess. That's good. That's good. Enjoy yeah, and recess. I was just completely nonchalant about it because by that point I'd had like a year to get used to it. We also moved in last December, so it was pretty cold, and then suddenly it was spring, and suddenly there were screams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think there's like a Discworld quote about that, where it's like the the. It, it's basically that it's it's fun and kind of relaxing to like hear the cries of children at play as long as you're not close enough to actually hear the words they're saying. Yeah. 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 There was one time where there was like these Here. four children playing and they were like chasing each other and then like three were chasing one and then they grabbed the kid's coat and I'm like, um, are we okay? Am I witnessing child bullying in action? And then the, the kids started laughing and they all were laughing. I'm like, oh no, they're playing a game where the kid's the bad guy. Mm -hmm. I got it. Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> Context. Vital. <laughs> Au revoir, Felicia. Is Ziggy fed? Yeah. 
Is she fed? Yes. Is she satiated? No. I don't even know Cats what do be went. like that. I don't know. <laughs> She's so about cat tree. I love that after the the first Spider-Man game with the whole like black cat DLC chapter, this game is like you get one mission. Behave yourselves. <laughs> and everyone was like, no. We don't making, trust you to be normal with Black Cat in the rest of the plot. <laughs> making you play as Miles is also smart because Miles yeah. and Felicia have no chemistry. Miles is a child and Felicia knows it. Yeah. And like, you can tell that she's a little more honest with him than she is yeah. with Peter where it's like, oh, I can just What's make up Felicia? fucking anything she's for sick. Peter and he'll believe it immediately. And even if he doesn't, he'll help me anyway. I can just tell the kid the truth. <laughs> yeah, it's like Miles is not invested in me enough to believe my lies. And also Miles doesn't care about that shit, so. Oh God, that's so funny. <laughs> that's good, I like that. Also, it was funny when um, Miles said, yeah, MJ uh, said not to trust you. And Black Cat's like, yeah, Red was always a smart one. Which like, it makes sense that she would call her Red instead of her name. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I saw uh, that yes, too. yes, Peter's girlfriend, Red. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just saw the note. <laughs> yeah. Very oh, funny. Wong. Con considering that they just had like, whoa, magic is real. He does not know who Wong is. No. <laughs> Just like, I had the thingy and it disintegrated and they left a note. Um, <laughs> so like, magic is realer than I thought? That, that that tracks for magic items. Yeah. Also, I don't know about magic is realer than I thought. He just jumped through multiple portals. Well, that was well, that's what, a good point. That's what he said at the, the beginning of the... Or that's what he did right before saying magic is real. Yes, but I meant in reference to the dissolving magic staff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I it's like, we... there's a difference between, oh, this magic item is working as intended, and, oh, there's an authority on the magic item that <laughs> retrieved it with magic. <laughs> cool. Magic cops. Oh, no. Yeah, it doesn't give you a lot of fall damage. Just just, just a little bit. You can That's turn it down further and get more fall damage. Uh, I don't think the, the swing assist um, increases fall damage. Well, no, I think there was a fall damage. I turned it on. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just a binary on off because in the first game, there's no fall damage at all. And there's no way to turn it on. This game uh, gives you the option, but even still, it's this game was like, really do you want generous. the threat of breaking your ankles? <laughs> like it will kill you if you fuck up the loop to loop. But other than that, it's pretty hard to actually hurt yourself with this uh, this fall damage system. Spider Man's incredible. So it only kills factor. you if you try too hard. <laughs> yeah, or if you really and screw this, up the loop to loop. To be fair, most of that loop to loop worked great. It was just that you miscalculated where the ledge was and slammed face first into yeah. it. I want to get back into Manhattan in a sec so I can actually like try it out. Hit that loop to loop. Don't drop that loop to loop. Hey, don't drop oh, that. Oh God. I'm just thinking just of Lou Wilson. We got like the loop to loop. <laughs> Sorry, Red. <laughs> I fully forgot that that was a thing, and now it's just in my head again. <laughs> what is this feeling? Well, my my brain has been playing Star Bomb songs on repeat lately, uh, none of which are good to have playing on repeat. I, at some point last week, crossed the threshold of, oh, this is too horny. <laughs> and it took a while. Like It wasn't like I found any new songs. It was just the same ones, and I was like really thinking about it. I'm like... Which one did it? Was it Kirby? Um, I want to say no. I actually I want to say it was um, uh, it was the Mario Party song. Weirdly enough, it's the slow build up. It's like heavy metal toxicity, you know. It yeah. just it slowly accumulates. Just did you just ex my favorite Star Bomb thing is that um, for some reason every time I listen to Linkin Park's Numb, the opening like just instrumentals, my brain plays this one chunk of the Street Fighter rap over it. Oh. Uh, it's my honest suspicion you're gonna want a physician. Only morticians on the one to help your future condition because we will put on your ass as a time on a tradition and now I'll do it even faster in the turbo edition. And you can just get through that part before the vocals start on them. Uh, so I do that every time it comes up on my auto-generated playlist. Nice. I have no further explanation. It is by far my cringiest character trait. And yet, I find it very amusing. Does Miles know that this is Mysterio? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's called the Mysterium. Well, yes. <laughs> I'm also thinking of the rest of the, uh... Of the Ryuverse's Ken Rats. Like, well, two can play at that game. 
dick you, you penis man. Penis man. Can you lose to me in a rap battle? <laughs> sure you sure can. Sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's not just the singing, but the quality of the acting in the Starbomb songs with the character they convey with like, Ken is trying his hardest to be cool and cannot keep up the facade. Nope. It's a good stuff. Mm. I should re-listen to them. It's been a hot minute. Although I feel like if I listen to them all at once, I will also hit my horniness threshold and just have to stop for a while. You can always, like, kind of de-horny with the Crashervania one. Oh, oh nice. yeah. Excuse me while I try to open a container of gum that does not want to open. <laughs> Um, also, something about this level that is difficult, uh, the beat does not actually sync to the music. That's not what? lag, it just doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Mysterio, how dare you? Hey, wait a minute! What's up? What are we waiting a minute? Oh, uh, the, the suit that you're wearing right now. It's Mysterio-y. Well, no, yeah, it's just, remember how we were talking about Batman Beyond, just Spider-Man, Batman? Oh, um, yeah. this is just Shreve. This is just Shriek. Oh, but like, <laughs> I thought it was gonna go. Does the butts match? And I was like, is that a <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I just looked down at your source list, and I like how Discord audio is spelled with a space between each all lowercase letter. Yeah. <laughs> Someone has to be right. I keep having to, like, Basically rebuild the stream help. settings from scratch because Streamlabs just categorically does not save it for me. Like, I have read both of your different setups on... <laughs> uh, both of your different setups show up on here, but whenever I make a new scene, it's like, no. You, <laughs> we, we don't save that. We don't care about you. Okay. Cool. I guess I'm just stream cursed. That's fine. <laughs> I have no explanation. It worked really well for me. The stream gods favor me for some strange reason. Travel gods, stream gods. <laughs> also, you can't really hear it over us talking and the now fact that the audio is just quieter, but this is Miles's theme song. Ooh. Have you played this before? Is that why you're so good? Yeah. Also, I just remember the rhythm. <laughs> dun, 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 Anyway, what was Star Bomb stuff can we talk about? Star Bomb's good. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever actually heard or seen any Starbomb stuff. Not totally they are very fun. I like all the simple plot ones. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, also the one that's been playing in my head really annoyingly is the Donkey Kong Jr. one. Get ready, I don't know if I've listened to that one. Yeah, no, I actually think I haven't heard that one. It's Donkey Kong. <laughs> Junior! Donkey Kong. It's also my, my daddy's, daddy's name. name. And, and he named name me Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong. Junior. That's cute. Yeah. Basically, the plot is uh, Donkey Kong wants to retire, so he's trying to get his son to <laughs> do anything. So he talks at like a pretty normal cadence for Starball. And then Donkey Kong comes in and he's like, Donkey Kong! And he's like, God, why are you like this? <laughs> For a while, Magento was tormenting me with the DK rap, uh, the actual one. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Can't bring it to mind. Um, oh, no, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> It's the intro theme to the 1999 Nintendo 64 game, Donkey Kong 64. Um, see also Mario Brothers rap? Oh no, Wikipedia, you can't do this to me. <laughs> and then of course there's also the, um, the Luigi's Ballad, which is just too much. That one's horny. <laughs> yes, it is aggressively horny. Every line Mario has is about his dick. Yeah. No. One's about Peach's boobs. 
Oh, yes, my mistake. More Italian than pastrami. I'm not going to say the rest of that line. <laughs> if you know, you know, and you... <laughs> if you Must know, you know too much. To get inside oh, yeah, someone finish. pointed out Hero of... Oh, yeah. <laughs> hero of Rhyme, uh, and it's a follow-up. Oh, no, it's Precursor. It's dangerous to go along. Take this. Take this. <laughs> I think what always gets me is the parts of those that are, are Danny are always so like melodically beautiful. Yeah. And yet <laughs> I've never seen a sword Don't quite that shape and size. That way, bitch, let me introduce you <laughs> to my three best friends, Mr. Johnson and the Juice Crew. <laughs> Which is it's unironically so the worst thing. And line. so cursed. <laughs> <laughs> So in case you thought this was a family-friendly stream, for whatever reason, <laughs> now you know. Yeah. No kids allowed. Uh, go listen to Star Bomb. It's really good. That's our media recommendation okay. for uh, for the stream. Unless you're under the age of 14, then please. In which case, dear God, don't. Yeah. In which case, do not. <laughs> in which case, what are you doing here? I saw a comment the other day, which is like, "Should I read Berserk? I'm 13." And I was like, oh. God. No, no, no! The answer is no! <laughs> That's an easy one, and it's no! Oh no, the Mysterium's closed for maintenance. No, Quentin. He's trying to be such a good noodle. God damn it, old man! <laughs> uh, future of entertainment still has some bugs to work out. Hi, Pete. Come in well, here sure. tell me you got a wee-wee cool. weapon. Choose it. <laughs> it's not cool, man. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna... No! Come no. and chill down groove! I know I'm in Jeez! <laughs> I know I wear a tunic, but I'm not into men. So we're that a no one? God, this stream no longer makes any sense if you are not an avid Star Bomb connoisseur. <laughs> Hi, it's me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Yeah. Shall we? Real quick, Spider-Man plotline. Everybody's uh, meeting up at Coney Island, and Pete's like, hey, look at my cool new friend, Harry, nice who is cool Harry. and new, yeah, and is not going to replace my focus on being a good partner for you. Because I was really focused on being a good partner for you until Harry entered the picture. Okay. And Miles is like, you still got time for Actually, yeah. tutoring? And Peter's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, we're good, it's fine. And Miles is like... Ah, oh, that's how it's going to be, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Harry, well, they seem nice. <laughs> also, game of the year, they have right, Big Wheel. <laughs> oh, someone said that they're going to Malta for the first time in May. What shouldn't they miss? What shouldn't they miss? Um, I'm going to assume that you have a couple days. A lot of times cruise ships will stop in Malta for a day on the way to somewhere else. In that case, just explore as much as you can in Valletta. Um, go around to the Upper and Lower Barrica Gardens. Check out uh, Fort St. Elmo, which is really fun. Um, there's a whole museum in there. Um, also, you're going to want to go to St. Uh, John's Co Cathedral. And just honestly, like, explore the gardens around the front walls by the city gate. It's really, really pretty. They're beautifully landscaped, and most people don't think to go up there. Like, you walk through the city gate, past the Parliament building, and then just go explore the rest of Valletta, which, like, fair, it's gorgeous, but, like, go up the stairs to the left and right. Like, walk around on the ramparts. It's a really cool experience that you do not often get in other cities. Fuck yeah, I won the water game. Yeah. Yay. Boom. That's what it's all about. That's a Spider-Man. I mean, it's, it's a Peter Parker special. <laughs> oh, they've got Swish Swish in this game. Fuck yeah, dude. I can't believe they have Swish Swish. Um, yeah, but I do was, they have Sploosh Kaboom? They do not have Sploosh Kaboom. When, when I was playing this originally and, and Cyan was suffering through sitting with me as I was playing it, it was fine. every time there was a new carnival ride, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I can't believe they have, in this case, Swish Swish. Um, <laughs> it's like all the best carnivals have Swish Swish. Um, but Malta, uh, if you're in there for a day, just like explore as much of Valletta as you can. Go to the east side of the city, go to the west side of the city, just look out at the harbors and enjoy it. There's a lot you can learn about the history that'll make things make more sense, but you can pretty much just take it on its own terms and get, um, get a, a, a good experience with it. I mean, if you can get a little walking tour, that's a, a great way to do it. Um, but you also don't super need it um you can just experience it and enjoy it otherwise if you have more time i really would recommend going to the the ancient uh capital of imdina which is the the old city that was 
um, the heart of the island before uh, Valletta uh, became the capital over on the coast. It's like a 15 minute cab ride. Malta is fucking tiny. Um, mm -hmm. It is like, look at it on a map and do, um, I think it's called like thetruesize.com and you can drag countries around to compare their size. Like you can probably fit the country of Malta within, if any of you live in cities, the city that you live in on a map. It's, it's fucking tiny. Um, but if you have the time, uh, Indina is really, really pretty and a very different experience that, that's worth checking out. Um, it was also where, like, half of the movie Napoleon was shot. Most of the scenes that are Paris is like, no, that's, that's actually Indina. Um, Malta is 122 square miles in total. Like, end to end, it's like So it's like less than 12 drive. miles on a side if it were no, a square? No, the island is uh, 17 miles long and 9 miles wide. Or 27 kilometers by 14.5 kilometers for those of you that All use right. the metric system. It's tiny. That's like moderately. That's within the range of you could technically just walk anywhere you wanted in a day if you needed to. I mean, I don't know many people walking 17 miles in a day, but that's why I'm saying like it's not like super doable, but it's not impossible. Basically, it would be hard to do a marathon. You'd have to. Loop. Yeah. I'm gonna fly solo. If I give off uh, in about an hour, you can cross the luck. island of Malta in one direction <laughs> me, huh? by bus or car, no covering a distance of know about us. A, a, exactly the same numbers as I said earlier. Maybe 27 yeah. kilometers by 14 <laughs> kilometers. Or maybe that everything's too up in the air to think about it yet? Yeah, maybe. Whoa, that can't be right. Of cans, what is this thing reading anyway? Cans, our body temperature? Or our skin's pH? Highly doubt I don't know how much a spider sense would help here, you with most carnival games, next. other than being like, well, someone's lying to me. I don't think a spidey sense would help, but spider strength would help with a lot of these. That's true. Yeah. We can ah. do some more optional rides, because this is fun. Again, this is like <laughs> one of the very expensive open areas they let you walk around in. Mm -hmm. If Malta was a U.S. state, it would be the fifth largest state. Huh. Really? Yeah. A U.S. That doesn't state? sound right. That's impossible. Actually, yeah, that's completely... The yeah. fifth smallest... Largest! Well, no, but, like, Malta is smaller than Manhattan. <laughs> I don't... Oh, I totally added, a, a, like, an extra times 1,000. Oh, God, okay. <laughs> oh, like, okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 122... Oh no, there was no thousand at the end of there. Never yeah. mind. Um, it would I be see, it's the... one of those like ranking by size things that's like in thousands of square miles. It w yeah, it would be uh, yeah. smaller than Guam, but larger than the District of Columbia. Yeah, I don't think it, it, it would be like. <laughs> and smaller than every continental. It's and like a tenth of Rhode Island, even. Uh, yeah, Rhode I think Island. It might be is smaller than like one of the Hawaiian Islands or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, I totally added an no, extra okay. um, <laughs> times. I added a ten to the third to that. <laughs> I like. I try not to um actually you, but like I've been to Malta. It's fucking tiny. France is smaller than Texas. <laughs> <laughs> not me being mildly confused by everything today. I gave up the brain cell after I said I had the brain cell. Very generous of you. Yeah, well, I want to be the bad boy, so I gave it to Indigo. <laughs> Cast uh, it that aside, implies that I going, have the green cell this. a fact that I think is clearly not backed up by my lack of participation for the last 30 minutes or so. All right, chat, which out. one of you stole the brain cell? <laughs> Give it back. I've been hoarding it secretly. I I'm doing a stealth audio editing. And the way I normally do audio editing, I need to listen through it. I'm not doing that this time so I can listen to the conversation. So instead, I'm just looking at the waveform and cutting out any of the big gaps. And then mm. later, I'll go back through it and cut out anything that's a mistake. Smart, smart, uh, smart. Which does require the use of the brain cell. So, um, uh, But as soon as I'm done with my pass through, I'll release the brain cell and one of you guys can be thinky brain again. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is good for Malta. Just walk around as much as you can. Um, it's pretty. It's it's really, really pretty. Oh, Cleo's back. Yay! Dude, where'd you go? Where'd Maybe you she from? had the brain cell the whole time. Yeah, Maybe Cleo always has a brain cell. She's very cat so dumb, but people smart. <laughs> yeah. Tickets were so much cheaper Let's go to the big wheel. Yeah, they're over there. Yeah, they're over there. I also really like that Mysterio's just fully reformed and doing carnival rides now. That's yeah. cute. Yeah, it's his his side quest sequence is really interesting. I like the way they handled it a lot. There's um, very much a sense that 
uh, the villains in this world are more than just villains, and even we're seeing that right now. Tombstone, big bad guy from the first game, is just kind of like trying to trying to be a good noodle and live his best life. There's there's a lot more to these characters than just one note bad guys. Like Scorpion's one note bad guy until the end, pretty much. But the, he was to be made. An Didn't example. he die? He died. Yeah, he fucking died. Yeah. Um, Craven snapped his neck and stabbed him with his own uh, scorpion stinger. Um, Damn. But there's there's a lot of uh, windows into these characters. You get it with Sandman. You get it with Tombstone. You get it with Mysterio, um, and then a handful of the other ones to to lesser extents. That there's there, there's more going on behind their their villainy than like oh. Yeah, they had a, a backstory, but now they're just a full-time villain. It's like, no, they're they're people yeah. under there, and I really like how much this game commits to showing that. Um, there's a lot of very expensive stuff this game does really well, um, like you know, fancy cutscenes and various um, you know big environments like this, where we just get to walk around and see a lovingly crafted little world. Um, like here, we can go see Haley's little art installation that Miles ran away from because uh, he wanted to go home which like after being the Mysterium fine um, but the the storytelling that you can get by just looking at the characters thinking what else can we do with them what can we show them as as like being beyond just someone who causes a mess for Spider-Man to clean up I really like what they did with that in in this game Anyway. So what happened with the Mysterium? Did we have an explanation for why it started turning into uh, the Miles Morales Power Hour trauma conga line? As of right now, uh, it just malfunctioned. Something went okay. wrong. Beck doesn't know what it was, but he closed them all down so that he can investigate it. Um, cool. And then the, the side missions have you going into other Mysteriums around the city, and then you eventually figure out what's actually going on. I like it. Yeah. There will be plenty, buddy. Still got a clear behind me. You were saying? Who, Jonah? Nothing. Not a word on my article yet. Oh, they've got Hydra head hitters? I can't believe this lost game of the year. Finally. <laughs> But consider, does it have surprise J.K. Simmons, despite being the one game that should have had J.K. Simmons in it? That's a good point. Really, it's the J.K. Simmons game of the year. Yeah. Although it was very funny to me when people were like complaining about this game not getting game of the year and yeah. using as evidence a scene in the game that is a cutscene with no gameplay in it yeah, that was where pretty... Spider-Man gets impressively flung through a large amount of New York City which is like <laughs> it's cool it's very beautifully rendered um why are you using this as evidence that it should have won game of the year yeah yeah I, I've seen that it's a pretty goose brains take <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, the real take is both games can be good, and it's very understandable why Baldur's Gate would have won over Spider-Man 2, but that doesn't mean you don't have to enjoy Spider-Man 2. It's still a very good game. Yeah. yeah. And, like, when I first saw that scene where Miles gets flung, like, across the river, I was like, oh, that's really, really cool that technologically they're able to do that. It was also very flashy and doesn't necessarily add much to the story. It was really cool, and it gets you engrossed in the game of, like, this is what the PS5 can do. They don't super do anything quite that extreme in the rest of the game, and I can imagine why it's very hard to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm sorry, the animation on this uh, whack-a-mole <laughs> minigame is really shameful. <laughs> why do the moles look like that? Why are you moving so fast with absolutely no, like, physicality to it? <laughs> just little guys. Why is your head just snapping from one angle to another? You know I'm right about those stones. Yeah. Well, that was weird. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, let's continue the story. Uh, we're so delayed. Hey Harry, you still want to get that chili dog you were craving yesterday? It's too early for that. I want to cap the evening off devouring as many chili dogs as I can spare. They're really checklisting off everything on this one. Let's continue the plot. Yay! What was that? Oh, they have enter here? Yo. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Let's try and sit up right. What else can we talk about? I'm trying to think. I got nothing. Hmm. After you. <laughs> Such a gentleman. Oh, we're gonna see some plot in a in a sec. You okay? I'm really nervous. 
Don't worry about it. I love this dedicated button where you just like throw your hands up like a doofus and cheer. I mean, it would be one heck of a meet cute. Should we tell her? Tell her what? What are you two whispering about up there? I like that the game does give you just this much goofing off time. Yeah. Like, mm hmm. It, I, I'd say that this game produces the illusion of being open world without in any way meaningfully actually being open world. And like, it's not pretending to be. You know, it's got an extremely linear plot. Um. But I like that they give you these little sandboxes to play around in, where you actually can just kind of futz around and see how, how much they fleshed out the story. Yeah. I, I think there might be a little bit of a semantic hiccup, because, like, the the New York of this game is very open world, but it is not, like, the Zelda open air, you can do things in any order design philosophy. I think that's the distinction you're making. Um, I mean, I would say that it has a big playground and a lot of, like, it's, it's the same shape as, like, um, God of War, uh, Ragnarok and God of War 4, uh, where it's like, there is an open world with, like, just a bunch of side missions and stuff that you can just kind of do in collectibles and stuff, but the plot is a straight line woven yeah. through that open world, and your ability to progress through the story is, you know, you do things in one order, there's no way to get around certain plot triggers, like... It's a linear story embedded in something that is loosely open. I would not in any way classify that as open world. Um, yeah, I don't, it's like, like there were classic Zelda games that would be like, you can run around Hyrule Field as much as you want, but when you want the plot to advance, go to where the plot is. Yeah, <laughs> You know, that's, that's not open world that's either. Fair. It's the same thing, just on a bigger scale. Yeah, this game is, is, is definitely uh, not that. I, mm -hmm. I like that it gives you the little bits of... of kind of open space, just explore the world and get the, the sense of, you know, Peter's life and Miles' life, um, much more than most other stories really let you have the time to just kind of sink into and, and feel immersed in. Um, yeah. Like, you can just be a student for a little bit, hanging out at, like, the, the career day uh, fair at the Brooklyn Visions Academy. You can... Just kind of hang out at Coney Island. You can go uh, to the Feast Center in the the first game. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with like you know superhero downtime or downtime from being a superhero. That mm. I I really like that they commit to to letting you have, even if it means creating these ridiculously expensive uh, <laughs> sections of the game to to futz around in. Yeah. Big wheel, big wheel. Big wheel, big wheel. I got that line for the big wheel. The muscle up. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah. Here's the first sign that things are a little bit uh, hanky uh, over in uh, Kaza Osborne. Pete, come on. So we have Pete, actual Spider Man. And he gets it part of the way there. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, he's probably pulling his punches on account of being Spider-Man. He makes a ding. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think here comes Harry. The only thing that's gonna hurt is your Parker pride. Boys, boys, you're both pretty. <laughs> and it goes flying. <laughs> You'll see it in a sec. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been waiting. Uh, I guess this really was the year. Harry, that was something else. <sighs> yeah, I have no idea how I did that. Okay, how about we do something more chill? Looks like the Ferris wheel line has died down some. Uh, yeah, one end of the night. Let's yeah. do the big wheel. I'm gonna let you two go ahead and be cute together. I'm gonna go see if I can win a couple more unicorns. <laughs> Let's
What's up? I'm on a hefty delay, but I did just see uh, Harry just absolutely obliterate the hammer thingy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not really happy. Going for a little macaroni. You put it's a little funny. too much sriracha on that one. <laughs> Harry's given mm. a second chance, but I feel like I'm getting in too. You two are going to make a hell of a team. <laughs> Gosh. I mean, nothing ever goes wrong on a Ferris wheel. There's absolutely no way You're gonna be an editor. that it could possibly do anything. Hunters and scorpions and explosions? Oh my. So oh yeah, I keep forgetting that MJ works for the Bugle in this game. MJ. Huh. That's it weird. Normally that's Peter's job. Putting a little Lois Lane in my MJ. I've got our <laughs> story. I if watched, it works, um, it works. When the Hud Sucker proxy recently, no. and in that movie, there is the most Lois Lane performance that a character who is not something. Lois Lane has ever given. You always do. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. And I already want to rewatch my adventures with Superman. I was gonna say, yeah. Even if I do forget. Because I watched through it all in one night because we were about to record the um mm -hmm. the the Case Aiken thing. It was really good. But I, I want to like, take my time to get through from it. another past in uh, Men of Steel, uh, noted yeah. podcast buddy at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go listen to our three-hour episode about my adventures with Superman on the Men of Steel <laughs> podcast. We Here tweeted it a couple weeks back. Out of the way. It was very funny because he was like, "I don't want to keep you guys here for three hours." And then we got into the episode. Like, yeah, no, don't worry about it. You know, I'm sure we can get through our thoughts. It's like, so we're gonna go through episode by episode. I'm like, oh, let's let's go. We'll be here for a while, but let's freaking go. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna take a hot minute. It's the amazing bag man. Oh, okay. There goes Peter's jacket. <laughs> Uh, oh, I think Peter and I have the same uh, jacket. So like huh. denim. That's like the Levi's like corduroy. Yeah. The corduroy. No, I have that. Um, I could cosplay this Peter <laughs> right now. No problem. <laughs> better variant of Brian David Gilbert cosplaying that Sonic. You know, this, well, at least this is just good, good clothes. Tombstone can handle himself. Can't let them hurt anyone who hasn't gotten out of the park yet. Oh no. Oh Harry. no. Oh, 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 get attacked. Come on, Harry, pick up. Pick up. Hey, it's Harry. Tombstone. Oh, MJ. Harry's One of the best parts of Spectacular Spider-Man. So good. So really cool. I, I need to finish anywhere. watching that. I got partway through when I was doing my watch through for um for the symbiote detail that I tried. Too. And then I, I started going to other things because I was doing other stuff. I don't really remember what it was, but I, I stopped watching it. I, I only had like five episodes left. It's not a long <laughs> second season. but Yeah, well, I mean, it's one of those shows that doesn't really have an ending because it, yeah. it kind of got canceled on a cliffhanger. So it's, it's not like you have to watch up to the end in order to get the full experience. But I've been meaning to just do an episode by episode rewatch because, like, it's really good. I just think I've only sat down and watched it through all the way once. But Tombstone's really good. I wish they'd managed to keep Keith David playing him because um, Kevin Michael Richardson does a good job, but Keith David's got this, like, something when he voices characters. It's just really solid. What I do like about the animated series with Spectacular Spider Man is they go so hard on having all the backgrounds be absolutely true to New York. Like, there's, um, mm -hmm. there's one fight, uh, with Tombstone in front of, I forget what it's called, but it's, like, some major, like, theater center performing arts, something or other. And it's, like, mm -hmm. that is the exact geometry of that space within New York. And it's really cool to see how many of those things they do. Yeah. Well, it's like that one fight, uh, in the symbiote arc when they're fighting in Central Park. Yeah. Uh, in front of Bethesda Fountain. And it's just, like... Yeah, that's just literally, that's just literally what that looks like. And, um, <laughs> this is, this is something that never occurred to me until I saw a show doing it and realized how much I hated it. But, like, I think it was Avengers Assemble? It was the thing that they canceled Earth's Mightiest Heroes for. And the backgrounds in that are photos with a filter over them, and they look awful. Um, 
And, like, it didn't even occur to me that you could do a cartoon where you don't have the decency to, like, draw the background so that they look like the same style as the main characters, or, you know, exist as a coherent space. <laughs> but, ugh. Anyway, Spectacular Spider-Man is really good about that. And they're also really good at being extremely faithful to what it actually looks and feels like while also drawing it, which is cool. So. There's a new animated show coming out called Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man that I am tentatively curious about. There have been a lot of stinker Spider-Man cartoons in the last 20 years, but I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with this one because I don't know. The idea of, like, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, just as a name, gives me the same vibes as My Adventures with my Superman Adventures as Superman. a name. Yeah. Like, they they understand, I think, the point of the character. He's the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. A lot of well, other we'll Spider-Man shows have not done that. So, I don't it know. is, however, very funny that they just keep having to go down his list of, like, epithets yeah. to find one that hasn't already been turned into a movie yeah. series. It's like, damn, Swift they already used amazing. Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Spider-Man of twists and turns. <laughs> Mini spider much man. <laughs> Arach no saede they are. <laughs> the joke for you Greek speakers who've read the Iliad out there. <laughs> <laughs> this one goes out to my 800 BC homies. <laughs> Where does Kraken get all his spoons? You can find people who believe in anything nowadays, so... <laughs> From the goon store. I mean, it's probably like a... Probably like that Metal Gear thing. It's just like, what if we just could do a war all the time without needing to be on the side of a country? Wouldn't that be cool? What, what do you mean mercenaries already exist? I imagine, like, Craven also has some kind of podcast. And people are like, you know, he makes really good points. The Craven cast? <laughs> Craven would... Kill it on TikTok. Hello, my hunters, and welcome to the Graven Cast. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be called like. But the before we dive something. into hunting our enemies and then seeing our prey driven before us, uh, we must talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. <laughs> you want to know how I got this good? Well, it has nothing to do with Skillshare, but. It's all so cool. <laughs> I was born like this, but the rest of you, you have to catch up. Use my code Craven for 15% off. Are we giving Skillshare free advertising? No, because we're taking the piss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could just see them being like, oh, Mr. Craven, sir, your ad read, you, you do kind of um, insult the product that we've asked you to... <laughs> you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you so much. <laughs> ad exec to ad exec. Why did we pay him? <laughs> He's the best! <laughs> His manager's really good, guys! <laughs> has reached her sitting and looking at the computer as if she's gonna stream, never mind. Uh, point at the stream. <laughs> Yay. There is nothing more satisfying than eating fresh gill out in the savannah, but for everything else, there is hello fresh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what's, the, what's that company that does like the local fresh meat? That's a- I have no idea. Uh, oh, it, it depends on which local fresh meat one you, you are. Yeah. Where you tag yourself. That one? <laughs> There's that one that's like this is like a supplement to put in your water bottle, and it's like like it'll make it. Oh, the smelly it's... one. <laughs> yeah, the one that's like your brain flavor is mostly scent. So put this like this this scent pod so that the flavor of the water is different. I think Dom did an ad for that. I think so. Yeah, but I can't remember what they're called. It's okay. We're not okay. giving free advertising today. <laughs> yeah. No, Although, we only do that for Lucky Brand G. I was about to. <laughs> oh, hello, my fellow hunters. Do you want pants that will stand up to your mighty buttocks? May I recommend the denim fashionist stylings of Lucky Brand G? We can email them. This could be an official relationship. It's not hard. 
Lucky Brand, get on it. <laughs> we did get a message from somebody who was like, I passed a Lucky Brand outlet store and I simply had to, and I was like, shit, I'm an influencer now. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys I'm not influencers before? No, how dare. <laughs> We talked about this before the stream started. I know. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for a water additive, though, buoy, really great because it doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> As someone who is chronically electrolyte impaired. Yeah, that does make sense. I was never really into the, um, you should make your water taste like something other than water kind of thing. Yeah. My, my brain just knows, like, I could be just drinking juice right now, you know? I'm being quiet because Blue's doing a complicated there, part. There's drama uh, afoot. Uh, the roller coasters are being all manner of fucky. I like that people in chat are taking our very vague descriptions, being like, "I know exactly who you mean." Damn. That means Put the your boss Arab is like, "Cool, work. thank you." I'm glad. And then Luigi just went, "Lucky brand jeans." <laughs> As you know, I'm always on the hunt for more knowledge, and that's where Skillshare comes in. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Consider commenter. trying curiosity box for your curiosities of murder. <laughs> uh, okay, this is this is a really dramatic scene, because this is the only moment where Spider-Man has to acknowledge the fact that he is about to let people die because he is not strong enough to save them. And no. it's low-key fucking heartbreaking. <laughs> oh, God. And you hear this in Yuri's voice. Give it give it a sec, y'all. He's get really that. good at being sad. Sorry. I mean, I can't hear the vocal performance, but I'll watch the stream back and see it. Yeah. Don't and worry. And suddenly... Harry! Pete? <laughs> Harry! Harry the platypus! <laughs> a symbiote? Harry the symbiote! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. So I don't know if you follow the voice of Doofenshmirtz on uh, social was media. Yeah. The actually funniest dude. Yeah, Dan mm -hmm. Pavenmeyer, he's yeah. really funny. I just can't pronounce his last name. I'm sorry, Dan, if you're for some reason wa watching or, this. I, I think it's Pavenmeyer. <laughs> but yeah, no, super cool. And he very often just reacts to people doing Doofenshmirtz impressions. So Dan, if for some reason you ever see this, I doubt. <laughs> we like you a lot. You're super cool. <laughs> he like scrolls TikTok looking for people's yeah. different spirits impressions. <laughs> oh yeah, well, Osborne's the mayor. I keep forgetting that in this continuity. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just got to the sad bit you were talking about, and damn, that is sad. Yeah. <laughs> what are those things coming? Also, the Harry Peter. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> what are those things coming out of you? My treatment. If only my Chronic Gilda's treatments gave me superpowers. That would Science be kids still do that. So I mean, exosuit, but maybe? I no idea. Could... Every time I get a new brace, though, I do think I'm becoming more and more bionicle. You know what this means, right? Please don't talk about bionicle. <laughs> You're right. Noir is not here to be the, the, uh, do to heal the world. premier bionicle. Uh... <laughs> I think a mech suit would solve a lot of problems, to be completely honest. <laughs> Honestly, if I was better at engineering, I would build myself a mech suit. All that stress goes off the joints, and it just becomes a metal Go fund me, Cyan's mech suit. <laughs> <laughs> Collab with, uh, oh, what's his face? Uh, the guy, we were watching him last night. He does the, like, dumb. Oh, um, it's, um, why, 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 why uh, stuff made here. Yeah, collab with stuff made here. Be like, hey, you want to build a mech suit? <laughs> Japan has Gundams. <laughs> That's a thing they have. <laughs> oh, people I are just saw the moment where the symbiote was like, down. oh my gosh, this Spider-Man guy looks delicious. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, whoa people there, boy. that Osborne stepped down as mayor. Oh, okay. I Honestly, I have no idea. I wouldn't remember. <laughs> honestly, the politics of New York City are not the highlight of this. <laughs> Trade disputes. Trade, Trade disputes. <laughs> I just, I, it's very funny to me that, like, the symbiote has just met Peter and it is already trying to bad touch all up on him. Yeah. <laughs> Harry's just like, sorry, he's really feisty today, I don't know what's going on. Symbiote, that is not how we treat our friends. Symbiote, we ask for consent first. This consent is very important. Is Symbiote's like, whoa, sweetheart, I was just trying to say you look nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's just boy talk, you know? <laughs> Just boys what? being guys, gals Just being guys. Just guys being dudes. <laughs> Two dudes sitting with a symbiote five feet apart because they're not gay. <laughs> Two dudes bonding with an alien. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, man. Oh, what's a little symbiote smooch between professional acquaintances? <laughs> mwah, mwah. <laughs> hey, we're both, the, we're both superheroes. <laughs> Guys, why is today's stream just the most curse? I don't know. The Tears of the Kingdom streams didn't have this kind of energy. No. We were dealing with hot Ganondorf the you whole time. No, I know exactly what it is. With the Tears of the Kingdom red you are playing, and uh -huh. Blue and I are riffing on each other. Oh, I see. So <laughs> I'm the problem. No, no, no. You and I are the problem. <laughs> right. We've been unleashed, and we've, we've harmonized the resonant frequency. <laughs> it's all coming together. The ADHD moment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that is the problem. This the one non-ADHD ADHD person on the call- Well, that, that's the thing, the one non-ADHD person on this call is busy playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like doing my little Spider-Man doot doots over here. Manamana, <laughs> doot 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 I like that uh, Miles Morales' suit has the Nightwing finger stripes and we're all just like, chill with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. Are you just looking I mean, for it's basically every... just Nightwing but with a spider on it. Yeah. You're looking for every Batman, uh, Spider-Man crossover? Mm, it's a good point. It's a good point. It also has more than a little Beyond in it. Gosh, eventually I'll just watch through all of Batman Beyond and then start- Yeah, see, there's still sands down here. It's no longer blocking yeah. the streets, but there's sand everywhere. I'll no, eventually- Tell me when just... you do that, because I'm gonna do it too, because yeah, it's I'll, been a while since I'll I rewatched it. i work up the courage to, to actually make the detailed diatribe on that. I'll have to find a thesis, good. but I'm- <laughs> Hasn't stopped I'm me sure before. we can think of one. New, yeah. new video, just you two like live reacting to <laughs> Batman. Mm, yeah, we need know, a little wait. bit of structure in the detailed diatribes, otherwise that's just yeah. an after dark stream that we no, monetize we on the channel. I was gonna say we can't we... stoop to reaction content. No. Come on. <laughs> I think the only thing that I always thought was a little bit weird about Beyond is that they just keep killing all the bad guys. Yeah. Like, how are you supposed to build a respectable rogues gallery if everyone keeps getting axed in their second or third appearance? Stay tuned for what Craven gets up to. <laughs> hey, Pete! Watch this! <laughs> so, you're gonna see this in a minute, but Harry, like, okay? jumps off a ledge. How many th things do you think Harry jumped off of before he realized he could jump off a large ledge? Hmm... A lot. <laughs> he definitely was working his way up. <laughs> Very scientific science, about it. Doing I think that that's one read. There is a more depressing option. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. If, yeah well, it's just... Told MJ, except for the fact that he was in the tank right fun. up until he hangs out with Peter just again. <laughs> okay. All right. That's... I, I think the... I, if he had had a longer process of recovery and like hadn't just been gooped and stuck in the tank for the last few games, um, then there could have been a more depressing explanation. But I, I'm glad that we're on the chill one. <laughs> we're gonna stick with the chill. Well, at one. least everyone's chill about this one. Blorp. <laughs> Whoops. But like, because we know the symbiote is a thinking entity. How did it feel about Harry just yeeting himself off the ledge? <laughs> it was like, probably like, dude, I've been it. rebuilding your fucking white blood cells for the last, like, eight months, <laughs> and you just throw yourself out to the mercy of gravity? Hey, watch the merchandise. <laughs> I work and I slave, and you don't appreciate it at all. <laughs> I think it, no, I like to think of the interpretation of the symbiote as just showing off for Peter specifically. He's oh, like, oh I my see. god, like, look how cool I am. Look how much like I a, can jump. <laughs> it's like a bird doing one of those courtship dances. Like, check this out, bro. <laughs> Ooh, I hope some strong superhero doesn't come along to need me Put to bond with them. Put those fingers away. Ooh, it's the very, like, Shane Top uh, kind of uh, Lady Dimitrescu thing. <laughs> Oh, that would just be here. terrible! That would be the worst! <laughs> no, Roman Osborne no. coming in like, what did you guys do? It's like, man, you gave them this company. What do you think that these young adults were gonna do? Where's Dr. Connors? Uh, maybe he took the day off? No. He doesn't take days off. Uh, What's up? Um, Everyone keeps go. saying bad touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Thunder says, imagine a start with like a symbiote trust fall and then it just gradually heightened foot by foot until that. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's how I would do it as a side test. So fast. Wait, what's that? Okay, this, this next little bit is fun. We get hey guys, the uh, the addition of a uh, fun little signal? collectible here. 
that is either just a cutesy little tie-in uh, with uh, the active uh, other Spider-Man franchise going on, or is uh, portenting some wild shit uh, in the third game. Because we just found the Spider-Man 2099 Spider-Bot lurking around in the wild. Oh, the little oh, damn. Buddies. Little buddies. Gotta collect them all. I'm gonna have to go brace my other wrist. Blech. It's fine. My joints have not been behaving this week. Probably. Oh, braces upstairs. Yeah, okay. I couldn't find one, so I just taped it. Okay. Enter bionicle mode. You know, basically. I'm I... begging you to not make me talk about bionicle outside of the context no of No one is forcing you to talk about bionicle. <laughs> bionicle and bionic are very different things. <laughs> I think has said bionicle both. every time. Someone Don't just by that church. that really symbiote nice. needs some Kyrie eleison. <laughs> <laughs> what? But they spelled it in Lord Greek. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Where are they saying that? Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I've gotten decent at reading well, Greek letters. You are you, Cyan is better at writing Greek than I am because here's here's a fun fact about the Greek language. Half of the vowels are the fucking same. So there's like Hey, MJ. Like five or six different ways to make an E sound. You can use an Omicron Iota. You can use an uh, Iota or Iota in Greek. You can use an Ypsilon. You can use uh, an Ita. And all of those make the same sound. So if you learned Greek phonetically as a child, like I did, and then suddenly you have to learn how to write that shit down, you're going to get a lot of the vowels wrong. Versus I take notes for our Greek lesson because we have a very lovely Greek instructor um, who the first couple lessons he taught me very much the basics alongside Blue who knew some things. And then now he and Blue just like chat and I try to catch up. Um, but so I take notes. And so my, my writing is a lot better because I'm learning the words as I'm spelling them versus having to learn how to spell words I already know. Also, diphthongs in Greek, just like English, make no sense. <laughs> yeah, they're wacky. Yeah. What's funny to me is that all my exposure to Greek letters has been from math, yeah. where that the also exact you. pronunciation of it doesn't matter for shit, so mm. it's just like... What are we, we doing fucking sums over here? Oh, no, it's just... Yeah, That's okay. just an S. <laughs> oh, those are words. Yeah. Um, I will say that did help a lot with being able to write the alphabet because just about every Greek letter is used in some form of math or engineering. So it was like, oh, yes, yeah. I know what these the shapes are. I don't know what letter they make. It's like, that's an R, that's a P. <laughs> yeah. Except for pi. Pi is really easy to remember. Pi is very easy to remember. And very obligingly, it looks basically the same, capital or lowercase, which is yeah. what I like to see. Well, when it's lowercase, it looks like a little little temple, and when it's uppercase, it looks like the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same general shape. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I know. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Omega, it's like, baby Omega is a little W. Big Omega is big Omega. <laughs> big Omega is <laughs> Omega. Yeah. Omega. But let's not dwell uh, on that too much. Let's uh, see, where's our next mission? I actually uh -oh. don't know. Someone okay. needs help with a photography project? Someone needs help with a photography project? Sure Spider -Man can help, but <laughs> give it a try. It is actually a pretty sweet mission that we can do if we want a quick little break from the story. Hmm. Or we can keep trucking along. I think that's up to you, Blue, as the man with the controller. Yeah, we're yeah let's keep trucking along. Today. Yay! Yeah, now this is uh, another, uh, like, arson cultist thing we got going on here. I really like that by having two Spider-Men around, a lot of the pressure is kind of taken off you for, like, solving street-level crimes. Like, if you want to just do the main plot stuff, it's implied that, like, stuff will still kind of be okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got back up, it's okay. You can actually dick around a little bit. There's an ambulance nearby. I, I do really like this game a lot. Oh it's God. it's not uh, everything um, that people wanted it to be. Um, in many regards, this is a very safe game, which is a criticism mm -hmm. I can't understand. But it's just everything that is executed is executed so well. And the quality bar that they hit with 
the the level of storytelling. Obviously, the more like expensive things like um, dramatic uh, set pieces and big, you know, explorable little walk around worlds are really really cool. Um, there's a lot of stuff that is is distinctly much better done than in the first game. Um, I can understand if people wanted more from this game. It is in some ways go. shorter than now the first game by heads. quite a bit. Um, it's a little longer than Miles Morales, but not terribly longer, um, despite the fact that the game costs like twice as much. Um, there's a lot of very complicated tech that went into making this game work as well as it does. Um, but I really like what they did with this game a lot. And the the way that the, the city feels much more alive than in the first game, um, with the things you can do to interact with it, just on a very casual level of like taking little pictures and, and stuff, um, hearing what people get up to, listening to uh, the Dana cast as well as uh, Jameson's podcast, um, and like actually taking people to little little ambulances after big events. It gives much more of a sense of like Spider-Man participating in. The city, a good one, by the way. and not just really beating is. up bad guys, which well, I like. For the tip. Yeah. Not sure I'd be able to find Tombstone in time without you. Yeah, thanks. Take care of yourself. Those fashion school rejects won't be getting the drop on Those me. Fashion again. school rejects won't Tell be getting the drop spiders. on me again. <laughs> Miles, That's let funny. me take this one. You're gonna miss oh, your essay like deadline. <laughs> what if, if Lee's there? I'll take care of him. Spider-Man can wait. Miles can't. <sighs> All right. Just. Keep in touch. Hope Felicia's lead was right. I do really like how they have to add a little Spider-Man face to the subtitles to show you which Spider-Man is talking. Yeah, it's yeah, so it's simple, but cute. it works really well. It's like when they very, would do like, like little bubble in an, in a comic where it's like yeah, like, where they just draw a little face on it because yeah. they're off screen. <laughs> ah, comic stylization is something I've been thinking about a lot for predictable reasons. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fun to play around with, you know. It's, it uh, is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you could really add a lot of flavor through like the way that you do your text bubbles and everything. I imagine mm -hmm. something you might think about a lot. But. I love playing with text. And There's a, a <laughs> few pages in the. It's <laughs> <laughs> going on. That, that you're just completely wild text-wise, and it's just... You can, you can do a lot. You can communicate a lot of weird shit. And I think that that's one of the, like, genuinely unique strengths of comics as a medium, because mm -hmm. visually representing text in a visual context is something almost no other medium does. Like, like one of the, uh... One of the things that you, for instance, only see in really aggressively self-published books is, like, I'm gonna play with, like, every character's dialogue is gonna be in a different font. And it's oh. like, please, for the love of God, don't do that. Like, it, it feels mm -hmm. horribly wrong to do that in a book. But that's something you actually can get away with in a comic to a certain degree. Because it's like, I'm gonna use this font to represent, like, this dialect or something like that. Or, you know, it's like, oh, to show that this character is speaking English and this character is being translated into English. God, I'm sorry. I just saw the way you absolutely ate shit on that loop. <laughs> no, and, and if you play back, you'll say, and smack, because I wanted to do that. Yeah, of course. It's just very funny to see yeah. you ragdoll so hard. What I um, what I like about the way that, that you handle that in Aurora is there's basically three tiers of how speech is conveyed. There is mm. regular, actually four tiers. There's regular word bubbles. There's regular word bubbles with jagged shapes that can signify different things and just a really cool stylistic choice. There is mm -hmm. colored in word bubbles for when, for lack of a better word, small gods are speaking. And then there's mm -hmm. the big, no word bubble, ginormo font text for when the big boys are talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I have a font that I exclusively reserve for the big boys. Um, and almost everything else I usually limit to color, colored outlines, glow, stuff like that. Um, which is one of my favorite things to do when you can just kind of like color a text bubble to signify like who's talking and what does that mean. Um, but changing the shape of a word bubble is huge to signify like this person's yelling or you know something like that. Or And it's weird to say that like a, the shape of a text bubble can sort of give you a feel for the texture of the sound. But it is something that you can yeah. actually get across. It's like, this person is kind of, like, not in a good state. The edges of their bubble are sort of wibbly. Like, maybe they're sort of, like, you know, wavering as they talk. That kind of thing. And, um, it's... I've been thinking about this not in the context of speech bubbles, but in the context of sound effects. 
um, oh, because yeah. they are such a unique element of comics as a medium, and I think about them so much. Mostly when people on Tumblr ask me, like, hey, how do you do these sound, or like, what, what, how did you like come up with this concept for the sound effects, or like, you know, you do this in a weird way, how do you do it? And it's just like, huh, I didn't think about it while I was doing it, but analyzing it after the fact, it's kind of weird and kind of cool. Um, and it's just something that you don't get in almost any other medium, like a visual representation of a sound. You will sometimes get that in comic book style movies, like uh, Spider-Verse, you know, the bagel thing. Mm. Um, but like, that's a specific evocation of something that is otherwise unique to comics as a medium. And it's just, when it's done right, it's almost invisible. Like, you you would hardly notice that there's a word on the text that tells you how the panel sounds in a silent medium. What the fuck? Anyway. No, I think it's cool. I think it's something I think about, you know, I, I tool around with a comic as well. And like, mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to do is to use text as a background because it's a really good way to imply like, like my ticket in. this is what a character's thoughts are completely consumed with. It's everything around them. But like the ways mm -hmm. that you can use text in comics is so unique because it really is, it's both a visual and I'm trying to think of a different word for auditory because you're not like hearing it necessarily, but you are, you're kind of implying the way that it should be hearing it based on how you place it in the yes. panel and how you place it in the bubble. And I think that's a really cool thing to get to play around with. And it's neat to see you use it in Aurora in particular, because you know, obviously think about it a lot, you use it very well, but like, yeah, it's just one of those things that's unique to the medium. It's fun to think about. Well, it's, it's really weird because the way that comics and time interact is extremely mm -hmm. strange. And as always, I recommend that everybody reads Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics as like their primer. Like if they're interested in making comics or even just analyzing them, Understanding Comics is like 90% of the groundwork laid for you by somebody who does comics for a living and thinks about them all the time. And he has this whole chapter on the way that comics use time because it looks like it's simple, but it isn't. Because you, you look at it, you know, at the base level and you're like, a panel is a unit of time. You move from one panel to the next, time passes. Um, but at the same time, you can have a single panel where like there are like eight different speech bubbles. And it's not like all these things are probably happening at the same time. But you know, you the reader can kind of choose to interpret it however you want. You can read the panels in whatever order, although the way that the panel is laid out usually is designed to draw your eye in a specific direction. So like if you're reading a, a, a non-manga comic, you probably start at the top left and work your way down to the bottom right if the, you know the panels are arranged that way. But if you're reading a manga, top right to bottom left because you're reading right to left for most of the time. Um, and you can have a panel where, like, a character is hanging in the air mid-jump, and then they have, like, three dialogue bubbles attached to them, and it's like, how long is this person <laughs> in the air for? But you, you need to think about that to notice it's happening. It, yeah. Like, you really need a lot of discrepancy between the, the perceived time of a dialogue bubble and the perceived time of the action the character is taking before you start thinking, like, that doesn't make sense. Which is why sometimes when you're adapting a comic, like, if you watch an anime adaptation of a manga, like, for instance, when I watched the first episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, there's a bit where, like, the two main characters are, like, falling through a three-story burning building, and they're talking for, like, five straight minutes. <laughs> it's like, the building's <laughs> not that tall! <laughs> like, this wouldn't happen! Um, and it's because on the page, you can just put that in a dialogue box, and it's just there. But, you know, something that's quick to read is not quick to read out loud. And the, the way that it manifests in time is completely different. Which is also why, like, comic dubs are a very popular thing for, like, people to make. And I, people, you know, sometimes ask me, like, is it okay if I do that? And it's like, sure, yeah, but, like, I cannot watch them because they are so different timing-wise to the way a comic feels to read. Yeah. Yeah. We just got a, uh, a dramatic entrance from Harry. Yay! Uh -huh. With a really oh, cool Harry. remix of a concept from the comics. Ooh. When it gets on screen, we can start talking about it. I'm excited. I know you said you have this, but come on, look at us. I did like how we got a little teaser of Peter lifts the heavy thing when he was dealing with the collapsing thingy, but <laughs> there's still time for more Peter lifts the heavy thing. I'm honored Spider-Man tradition. Must live to the object. Mm -hmm. Don't let it get to your head. We're not invincible. That's one of the best episodes of Spectacular Spider-Man is when he has to lift the heavy thing. Yeah. 
We need to remind you that Spider-Man has a lot of strength. He's as strong as a spider. Spiders are very strong people. You gotta remember that. You gotta keep that it locked in. It. His standard way of operating is, you know, very... Oh, man. I love that Harry just has, like, a Spider-Man suit now. Yes. He <laughs> immediately jumps to Agent Venom because this version of Harry wants to help. He's been locked up in the little tank for so long. As soon as he's like, oh my god, I can do something. He's like, let's go, let's do it. And we get to jump to what's usually a, like a late stage character after we already have like the symbiote and Venom and yada, yada, yada. You get Agent Venom, usually Eddie Brock. Now it's uh -huh. just like, here's the first step is as soon as Harry realizes, oh, I can do this, it's Agent Venom time. And I love that. And that's so sweet because it really signifies that he's like, He's been like, Peter and I can, like, save the world. Now he's like, Peter's been Spider-Man this whole time, and I can help by also being a Spider-Man. Yeah, it's so <laughs> and, like, good. And because we already have Miles Morales running around in this game, it doesn't even feel like he's, like, horning in on his, per you know, personal identity. He can just be Venom and, and a Spider-Man. That's cool. And we're not going to see it much, but after the sequence, you can actually like how Miles can sometimes show up and help you with crimes. Mm -hmm. Harry can do the same thing. He'll just drop in and assist you. It's it's really quite cool. Oh, I love it. I love that so much. They're setting up so much pain for later. Yep. Assembling a little team of guys, a little crew, if you will. I like the way that his the physicality of the symbiote is like... It's not really quite staying suit shaped, even when it should be. Like, like Harry obviously wants it to be Spider-Man suit shaped. That wasn't the symbiote's idea. But like, even when he's just kicking, the symbiote on his other, like on his planted leg, is splaying out and like gripping the ground in a very unsuit way. Which kind of just is a very clever way to visually signify, like, hey, Harry is exerting control on this thing to make it suit shaped. But it's not really listening to him all that much. <laughs> it has its own ideas. It's like, yeah, I see it's your intention of how you want to kick this guy. I'm going to make an executive creative decision. <laughs> yeah, are you accepting constructive criticism at this time? Because I have notes. <laughs> I see you want to kick that guy into the air. Consider through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're trying to fight crime. You want some help with that? <laughs> That thing that doesn't involve webs. Oh, that's I'm gonna douse this whole tank in lava. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this this Agent Venom is such a cool thing that really, again, it's just like preemptive knife twisting because there's such a good team together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Harry wants to be good. He wants to help. That was fun. Now let's go rescue us. It is an interesting rework of the twist they did in the first game because again like it's probably assumed that somebody playing this game has at least a passing knowledge of how spider-man works like how in the first game it's like boy i, I sure love my mentor kind-hearted dr otto octavius and it's like danger danger <laughs> careful <laughs> and this one it's like wow my best friend harry osborne is rocking this extremely cool symbiote suit and it's like fuck man this is gonna go so bad but, like, that's what's fun about it. Because in the first game, we didn't want to believe that Doc Ock was already bad. That's why it's such a gut-wrenching twist to turn out that he's actually kind of been, been shitty the whole time. And now in this case, it's like, Harry legitimately really does want to be good. He really does. So anything that goes catastrophically wrong is going to be its own thing. <laughs> that was fun. Let's go rescue a supervillain. Oh, Harry. How dare you be so lovable. <laughs> this really is is so good because it, it, like, you're playing this and it feels so good to be a team with Harry. The impending plot twist is just <laughs> catastrophic <laughs> in the, the dramatic irony. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. It'd be way too poignant. Yeah. Back. And a little alley oop uh, team up things that you can do. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this is just reminding me that everybody should watch that uh, Clone Wars uh, fan animation of the Battle of the Heroes from Star Wars. Yes. Uh, for some reason, the huge vats of molten metal just reminded me of stuff. <laughs> you know. <laughs> nothing in particular. Yeah. No, nothing to worry about. First sign of symbiote sound problems. We need to move now. I'm excited. Things are happening. I'm on a truly <laughs> criminal delay at this point, but I will get there eventually. <laughs> I fully just stopped watching the actual visuals of the stream. <laughs> it's more fun to get the updates via you guys' descriptions of what's happening than to try and keep up with the delay. <laughs> That's fair. I just saw uh, Harry kick a guy from like 10 feet away just by having the symbiote just stretch out from his leg and punch him. Yes. Very cool. This is also the part of the game I watch my boyfriend play like. Ah. So I'm familiar with what's happening in the who's it's and the what's it's and all. I'm not saying I'm a lot. I've got plenty. I got plenty. What was that thing with your suit? I don't know. Oh no, does Pete have to lift the heavy thing? It would be appropriate given his current uh, superhero identity and the tropes of that particular superhero's go to. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see the sound. I get it. I guess. So what I like, that, you know, right to your point of like they're, they're they're playing with the dramatic irony, they're mixing some stuff up. What I really like is is this game knows like you know the story. This is not your mm -hmm. first exposure to this, so we can do some really interesting things by switching up the dynamics and having like what happens when someone else gets the symbiote first and they're an unambiguous good guy with it. How does that change the inevitable drama of when things go wrong? Yeah, because like we've seen a few different flavors of this because of course, traditionally, Peter gets the symbiote first. Peter is an unambiguous good guy, but the symbiote kind of changes that. And then we get somebody else gets the symbiote first, but they're like bad, or, or at least morally gray. Uh, which, or maybe they just don't have the rights to Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> so you get the weird Nakey Venom from Sp uh, from the, uh, the just Venom movie. And then in this case, they were like, what if, what if we give the symbiote to somebody else who genuinely wants to be a good guy and is fucking thrilled to help their best friend Spider-Man? What, what do we do then? What happens then? How do we get the Black Suit Spider-Man arc? That's crazy. <laughs> Starting to feel out of my depth here. Sure we can do this? Of course. We're the spider pals. All right. I haven't watched Venom 2. Uh, I haven't watched either. I did I like the that first one. Anything. I mean, I, I mostly like the first one. <laughs> I feel like Tom Hardy is very charismatic, so I'm like, well, I'm don't, not oh, mad that I'm watching him. It was just him acting things. opposite himself for like two hours, yeah. being remarkably gay, so that was kind of fun. Yeah, the plot parts of the movie were fine, I guess, but I'll like the real coup of that movie free. is. On it. Well, it's fun to watch Tom Hardy be. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so fast. It's really cool to see how much Peter is enjoying this too. When Harry's like, "Ah, oh, no, my depth here. This is this is a lot," and Peter's like, "Oh, come on, we're the Spider Pals. We got this." It's <laughs> Spider Pals. It, yeah, it's it's so much worse because Pete <laughs> is also unambiguously thrilled with this turn of events. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I do like that Harry's Spider-Man suit is just a little bit taller and just a little bit buffer than Pete. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just tell you? Sorry, it's my first day. I'm gonna need a hand here. Be right back. <laughs> I was so behind, but I just saw the, all right, what's our plan? Here's like, I think we should get him. And Pete's <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? I mean, obviously. Bro, <laughs> I said Bro, plan, not foregone conclusion. <laughs> oh, they're, they're really setting us up for the knife twist here, aren't they? Yeah. Although I can't help but notice that Harry did just use one of the hunters as a human shield to get shot by another hunter. Well, and? You know. When in the field you have to, to uh, uh, improvise and kill people. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just gotta, sometimes, you know, you use the tools you have at hand, and sometimes the tool you have on hand is a, go a guy, a guy, who, who you're gonna let get shot by his other guy. <laughs> Alright, 
That's one of my favorite things to do in Baldur's Gate, is you can just throw another person, and that can be your attack. If you can pick something up. Pick someone or something up and just chuck it. Just prepare to eat. It's solid. Yeah. The ultimate form of combat. Hit a motherfucker with another motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. I'm kind of surprised that Harry hasn't been like, Whoa, you got extra arms? That's so rad, I should do that! And then just start kind of busting out more symbiote limbs. Harry is far too impressionable. He would have infinity <laughs> arms if given the opportunity. <laughs> the best version of Spider-Man? More arms. Gotta have spider arms. Gotta have enough arms to be a spider. Physicality is extremely cute. I don't know how to describe it. He just. You can tell that Harry's having a really, really good time. Mm -hmm. And just also being very nonchalant about this because he clearly feels like he's indestructible right now. Oh, the thing about the suit being fireproof, I see it. <laughs> there. Yeah. Very cute. You know, in the comics, the symbiote is weak to fire, but in this game, they're like, eh, we don't want to do that, so we'll just kind of explain it off in a little one-line thing. <laughs> but also, like, just bold of them to put the symbiote's first big fight in a fucking iron foundry yeah. that is just full of molten metal, just to really show off, like, no, when we say fireproof, we're not fucking around. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I mentioned this to you guys, but I don't think I mentioned it on stream. I had a, a, a single issue of a comic um, when I was younger that was just, um, it was a Spider-Man symbiote suit redux kind of thing. Uh, it was very much not part of the original run. The implication was like, it, it seemed like some kind of retelling. Pete had the suit and yet ha hadn't yet figured out that like, it's alive or maybe not good for me. And But then it's like, oh no, uh, the suit is, Instead of just making me evil, it's draining my bioenergy. And Reed Richards is like, oh yeah, we'll just get that off you and we'll, we'll study it or something. Uh, so he ends up just with like this little canister of symbiote. And then Johnny Storm finds it, and Reed didn't put like a post-it up on it that's like, do not touch. So Johnny's like, this is weird. And he like cracks it open and it slides up him and it gives him a cool new suit and he's like whoa rad but i wonder what it looks like when i flame on and the symbiote just fucking books it and he's like oh this was fire for yeah dick <laughs> symbiote's like jesus christ <laughs> and he just flies away um they're really making pete lift a lot of heavy things in this one yeah god i'm really noticing how expensive these cutscenes are <laughs> Oh. Ooh, the Harry tragic backstory flashback was cool. Can you see I say 40 going? seconds too late. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only downside to going straight. The game keeps you in shape. Glad we got to you in time. Some of the others weren't so lucky. <laughs> they couldn't have off me if they tried. Besides, they were waiting for their boss to do the deed. You have someplace safe to go? Wow, the yeah. floor is lava. That's a fun threat for this. Me again, I'll be ready. Don't worry, we're uh, Tell your friends we're talking to, to Tombstone now. <laughs> we're chill. <laughs> it's a nice oh, yeah. summer day in New York. <laughs> is it summer? I they no could idea. be lying to us, Red. We don't know. We don't know the truth. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's fall because it's college admission yeah. season. Oh, yeah. Oh. See? See? They can't even keep their story straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing the code. <laughs> This cutscene is also really sure cool. Just messing everything um, up. Mm -hmm. You were, but in the best possible way. Yeah, you're a fuck up, but you're great. Glom. What, you... what the heck? Hold on. Oh god, it's so cool. I love how they do this. The suit's like, wait, no, I want to see what this guy's deal is. <laughs> suit like an extremely affectionate dog. It's just like, whoa, this guy smells really interesting. Whoa, down boy. 
I guess I did. I really like the way they handle the bad guys in this <laughs> game. Or former that? bad guys. Yeah. I guess we really are spider pals now. <laughs> I think I'm gonna head back to the lab. See if Dr. Connors has showed up yet. Good call. I'll catch up with you soon. Oh, this is so good and so bad. You see the signs. <laughs> Dramatic irony. Yeah, they they really know how to leverage uh, like a 80 ton cantilever of dramatic irony. <laughs> Better not be because you saw a millipede again. It is just very funny how. I, I also like that Harry's like spider like symbol on his chest is not actually a spider. No. It's something else, but it's you can tell the symbiote was like, ooh, wait, I want this. I want that one. <laughs> oh, is she gone? Spider pals! Oh, <laughs> got business. Spider pals! We should throw this and you spider pals. What business does she have? I mean, I know she's your HR, but you think she'd be here. I also like that the symbiote gave Harry ads. <laughs> Didn't have to do that. Uh, I heard that the symbiote was shredded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, now, if we're framing this as the symbiote just extra hard flirting with Pete through the medium of Harry, this entire thing takes on a bit of a tone. <laughs> <laughs> look at how cool I can make this guy look. <laughs> what were they guarding? <laughs> you can't interfere. It's a cannon event. Story. Oh, comments. The comments having fun. Map of a base. They seem to be, yeah. Any chance you can show me what's waiting for me there? If I disable that relay, sound off chat. How you enjoying the stream today? Yeah. Nice. So you've been to two other blinds around Harlem, huh? Better scope out the other blinds. Maybe they'll lead me to a base. Right. Let's see if I can. How many? Oh, I've got enough bullets. Oh, we have more suits. We got, ooh, the Miles Morales 2099 suit. This one's pretty fun. Nice. Ooh. Classy. I got Scarlet Spider and the Superior suit, which is an interesting level uh, addition. But yet, mm. no cat backpack. No cat backpack yet. Scarlet Spider. Bodega wait. cat, bodega cat. <laughs> Getting the Ben Riley fit. <laughs> By far the best part of Across the Spider-Verse. The one thing that I'm glad character designers have, have really internalized is that spider people should have hoodies or like, yeah. you know. Like, and like I respect that Ben something. Riley has the sleeveless hoodie look. The By far the douchiest option. Is so incredible. I love that holdover from his runs. Like, good for him. Um, yeah, it's incredible. Ben Riley is in an incredible uh, piece of <laughs> aesthetic choices. Uh huh. And just putting him in across the Spider Verse as just like, oh, sorry, just thinking about my past. Like truly the best possible oh. framing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just brooding about some stuff. No big deal. Don't worry about me. Design-wise, the thing I like about the superior suit is that Doc Ock was like, as long as I'm going to be Spider-Man, I got to make sure that his suit looks angrier. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta Everyone needs to know that I'm no friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I have to be superior Spider-Man. Yes. Make the angle on the eyes more acute. Everyone has to know that I am angry. <laughs> it's just, uh... Spend some money on some some upgrades here, so I'm not too far under leveled. I mean, you're pretty good for five hours in. Yeah, yeah. honestly. Also, good pretty point. good stamina on this stream, gang. Yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. How are we doing on uh, donations? Oh yes, Can we are sitting at. Up. I can't uh, use my oh, hands. oh, very close to two thousand. We're nice. at one thousand nine hundred and seventy-two. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you to everyone for your donations. Yeah. Sorry, I've gotten a little bad at calling them out. I was doing it's it on been my five phone. Five hours. Yeah. And uh, now I have two wrist thumb splints on, which makes that harder. So <laughs> just want you to know that I very much appreciate all of your donations, as does everyone here on the stream. It's going to an yeah. excellent cause. This better uh, not thank be you, because you very, saw very much. Again. Better check in with and all first. your wonderfully diverse hey, currencies. Been a minute. You need any spider help? Actually, we're all good. 
And this is a fun scene where Miles is like, Hey, Pete, talk to me about anything. And uh, Pete's like, No, we're great over here. Don't worry about it. Just uh, write your essay or something. We're, we're fine. No, I won't tell you what's happening. It's like, Peter. Because uh, his, his enshittening arc begins even before he gets the suit because he gets distracted by his focus on Harry. That's really, really cool to see. Yeah. I like that they kind of make his enshittening arc just kind of a confluence of bad luck and, you know, slight carelessness, mm -hmm. where it's like, he starts off the game with like, oh, cool, being Spider-Man takes something really good away from him. That's unfortunate. Um, and like, you can kind of tell that from his perspective, Miles mostly has his shit together and doesn't need his baby, like him babysitting him. Mm -hmm. So you combo that with, oh my god, my old friend is back, and holy shit, my old friend can also be a superhero, and like, it just kind of turns into this perfect storm of like, Miles is probably fine on his own, and I can actually have a little bit of fun being Spider-Man for a change. And it's like, mm, but sorry, rules of the universe dictate, you know, canon event stuff. Spider-Man's not allowed to have a good time being Spider-Man. Real so much to take care of in the city. Mm -hmm. Who's still alive. Mm. Rio is the best character. Probably, yeah, just generally the best Peter. character. Busy doing she doesn't have a lot of competition right now, though. And Lee. Mm. Lee is still out there. Doesn't that bother you? There's a really funny sequence between Rio oh, and Peter oh, later in the story that I'm I'm very excited to to get to. Oh, I see a lot of Ooh. Ooh. Thank you to everyone. Uh, yeah. Uh, Twung Fai donated twenty dollars. Oh, uh, some anonymous donations. Because uh, no we're a bit of a delay, that's when the uh, uh, us bringing up the donation came back up. Uh, yep. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Another anonymous. Oh, we, we hit, hit 2,000! Yay! Yeah! Woo! Woo. I can't just let him go. Angela, I'm gonna have to call you back. No, how could you be locked out? You have a key. Oh. No, no, I, I understand the urgency. Uh, let me make some calls. Okay. Ziggy is back Mom. to join me. Do you need me to go? Nice. Hello, Ziggatha. Yeah. Didn't you just finish telling me how busy you are? Yeah, but I always have time for my community. I always have time for my community. Heartbreak. It's really... I recommend, in terms of other things, people I think people should watch. Snapcube did a Web of Shadows playthrough oh, it's really, really funny. fucking funny yeah <laughs> oh yeah no she's mayor <laughs> okay ma no Rio Morales is a councilwoman, councilwoman not the mayor whatever. yeah um, what I like about this scenario is where Miles is telling Rio like hey everything's just a lot right now but the one thing that's not too much for him is the spider maniness of it like he can he can be spider-man and that's like that's good he's he's fine with that it's like the the college and the school and all the other responsibilities that are really getting to him so as soon as like someone in his community in this case rio expresses a need he's like yeah no easy i'm there and she's like weren't you just saying how busy you were and he's like no 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 i i, I got this it's it's a cool version of his character where there's a lot that's going on for him in a different axis to what's happening with with Peter, and for for Peter, like the real life is going great, and the Spider-Man mm -hmm. stuff is what's getting tricky. For Miles, the real life is is a lot for him, but the Spider-Man stuff is like super super clean and, and straightforward. It's yeah, it's a which cool is an interesting conversion. little wedge to drive between them. Yeah. Besides, I'm sure Miles' school got a lot harder once he told everyone that he needed help from the new teacher in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna live that one down. Um, oh, it's Darren. Uh, Darren. Um, that's a side mission. We're not gonna do that today. Um, but what I what I really like is is how they play with the stories and the archetypes and the arcs that we've seen and make it so that it like it almost feels like there could be no other way this works obviously we've seen these stories play out in a million different ways we've seen the symbiote without miles being in the story we've seen the symbiote without harry being in the story but when you put these together it's like oh no this fits so nicely it works so well and in the context of the story like there, there's no there's no Spider-Man 2 story without Miles. He is an indispensable part of this game. And yeah. the way that, that that plays out is is really cool. It's not just that they are two Spider-Men who are having a story in this game. That story is intertwined in a really, really creative way. 
and I like how unique this is from everything else. I know a lot of times comics are like, let's do something different to just shake things up and just, like, do things that are weird and different and just, like, ruin the continuity and make all of our characters suck for the sake of, like, drama or, you know, clickbait or, or some stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that comics do sometimes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But this is is doing something different with such intentionality um, and, and purpose behind it that I really, really like and I wish that other times when you know, new iterations of a character were trying to do something different. They were thinking more like this, where it's like, how can we play with these ingredients in a in a clever and meaningful way, as opposed to, yeah, let's just have, like, these things be weird and different for no particular reason other than to just make it weird and different. Like, okay. I think what helps here is that there was a lot of intentionality in how can we specifically play with this to twist the knife more? Yeah. Because, like, Black Suit Spider-Man is an emotionally fraught arc. Uh, so in Spectacular Spider-Man, the way they twist the knife more with that one is that uh, Aunt May has a heart attack while Peter is out doing Spider-Man stuff. And in part due to black suit stuff, it takes him several hours to find out that this happened. She's not dead, but she is hospitalized and he didn't know. Um, and that's part of the knife twisting. Uh, there's a few other parts of that arc that just kind of play up how, like, he's not really running at 100%, and a lot of bad shit keeps happening, and he's not, like, pulling his punches in terms of how he responds to it, and it's kind of throwing everybody off. Uh, and in uh, Spider-Man 3, they're, they're like, we can use the black suit Spider-Man to twist the knife with his relationship with MJ a whole bunch, because that's what they do with the fucking Gwen Stacy shit, and the, yeah. the you know, the it's, it's bad. It's not good, but <laughs> they do it, and that's what's important. Um, they and in this an game, idea. it really, they had a concept, uh, and they, they clearly thought of like the impactful moment where in a moment of, uh, tension and, uh, combat, Pete accidentally backhands MJ and it's like, oh no. <laughs> so like that kind of thing. They, they always are like, whenever you take a good guy and you turn them bad, it is only for the purposes of emotional knife twisting. That's what it's for. Like that, that that's the entire point. So the Black Suit Spider-Man arc has to be for that. Also, I like the way they're rendering the shadow on the little spider bot, even when you're looking at, like, just the wall yeah. behind okay. you. Anyway. When when the spider bot, like, when you drop them in, they, like, wiggle and jump like a cat. Um, yeah. And that's my favorite thing. They kind of go, like, wiggle, wiggle, mm. boop. <laughs> that's very cute. Um, but, yeah, I like that the way that they were building this game and the previous game was very much based on how can we twist the knife as much as possible. Um because when that is the principle on which you are, you know, basing your, your writing, sometimes it can get a little fraught and melodramatic, but the way that they pulled it off in, in the previous game, at least, I've obviously been avoiding spoilers on this one, um, is really good, because that's how you get all these impactful moments, specifically around Doc Ock, uh, and how the final battle is that impactful, is because, you know, you, the player, are like, what do you mean he knew the whole time? <laughs> and it's, it's a knife twist. And in this game, they're just setting up so many things that are going to make the symbiote arc fraught and emotionally painful in many different ways. And that's clearly the intention, which I think is neat. Uh, Chad is telling you that you messed something up? No, I, I, I figured it out. I, I thought I, okay. I hit the two things, but I, I didn't. Well, shout out to the one that says you did it on purpose to give me more time to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he did. Maybe he did? Blue works in mysterious ways. <laughs> yes, the machinations lay undetected. You playing some kind of joke on me? Stay out of sight as much as I can through here. Anyway, it is very funny to me how sometimes you can just tell when a writer is like, Look, I want to advance the plot, but how can I make it hurt as much as possible? <laughs> I do. <laughs> you could do this. I've never been above that guy. <laughs> Who's that? Why are you in the bathroom? 
Everything okay? Mom, it's well, not a good time. Do <laughs> superhero stuff. <laughs> Check out some instruments. Get you ready for college. Computers are instruments. Music starts with a human. I think a key difference between Miles having a good time Spider Manning and Pete kind of having a shitty time Spider Manning is that Miles has a living, supportive adult who knows he's Spider Man and is completely cool with it. Very compulsible and... of him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pete doesn't even have Aunt May! Yeah. Like, traditionally, he does. It's just him and MJ, and she's kind of got her own stuff going on. Almost like they're two young adults trying to make it in this world. Yeah. Four of us would have no idea what that's like. Yeah, that's so weird. He's just having a bad time. Anyway, I'm Rod Sterling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Miles is doing the, like, college app thing. He's got four more years of nice, structured, scheduled time ahead of him. Pete doesn't know what the future's gonna look like. Well, technically he has a job now. Well, oh, that's yeah. true. But it's one of those, like... My best friend gave me a job, and it's basically a startup that we're running ourselves kind of thing. I mean, you guys are YouTubers. You kind of are a startup. <laughs> oh no, don't say that. A little bit, yeah. No, no! <laughs> I get this last relay online, then head to the voting dock. Make sure these guys can get away with any of this stuff. I just love the tiny baby spider. I know, all, all wiggly arms. He's just like, boop, 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 choo, choo, choo. <laughs> Just a little guy. Just a little baby bean. Nice work, spider A little tiny baby. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a cat. <laughs> like, it's a spider, obviously, but it behaves like they animated it to be like a cat. I, it, it does kind of seem like... Donation? Anytime you have a fictional a anonymous. animal or animal-like creature, the writers decide if it's going to be basically a dog or basically a cat. Yeah, and this one's basically a cat because this one's like... basically a cat. It's like Toothless in How to Train Your Dragon, basically a cat. Yeah. Toothless is just a mythical cat. We have a Toothless mm -hmm. pillow pet, which is unironically one of my favorite things. <laughs> Honestly, stuffed animals that can also be used to position joints that hurt. Ten out of ten would recommend. Ooh, smart. Blue got me a sleepy Kerbo. Uh, oh! From Packs and Plugs. Yep. <laughs> where we went yeah. as media. Um, and it's like a favorite thing. I have a lot of favorite things. I just want to I like liking things. It's uh. fun. <laughs> Hold them here. Meet at the rendezvous point in an hour. Not today. Spider Man. Does whatever you want. Catches flies. Knock the shit out of bad guys. Look out! Here comes a spider man. Gotta pick one for now. He's too strong. Listen, bud. Got radio after You're not getting away. Close now. He is a symbiote. That's not the lines that they wrote. <laughs> Okay. Nice. Here comes Spider Man. Someone said book Toothless is so much cooler. Probably, but I'm telling you, Stuffy Toothless is the coolest Toothless. I would say that Book Toothless is anything but cool. He's just a little goblin. He is, however, very cat coated, so that at least is accurate. Just a very different flavor of cat. Movie Toothless is also a goblin. Yeah, but Book Toothless can talk. Oh, so, okay. like, it's kind of a different flavor of goblin. Plushy toothless. I'm telling you. Yeah. Kirby is a good little pollo. Huggies did a video on um, basically dissing every Smash Brothers character. Oh. And one the one he did for Kirby, it was like, I forget what he said, and he's like, And the worst part is, you Kirby mains. Just got upset, not because I'm dissing you, yeah, but because I'm dissing Kirby. I'm like, stop <laughs> calling me out. <laughs> Sorry. Oh no. The uh, terminal montage videos where Kirby appears are some of my favorites. They are aggressively adorable. Terminal montage bangers only, but yeah. also very funny Kirby running gags. There's still the fundraising gala. 
It's not Kirby related, but I highly recommend everybody watch the Terminal Montage uh, Castlevania one. It's very, very funny. Oh, yes. There's one shot in it that makes me actually lose my shit every time I see it. Is it the mummy? It's gotta be the it's mummy. mummy. It's the mummy. Yeah, yeah, mummy. It's just the... It's so perfect. There's a, a whole side quest that kind of spills out from, from this section here with the instruments in the, uh, the Harlem Music Museum. And one of the things that, again, creative director Brian Intihar talked about was wanting to try to bring as much like real culture and, and history into this little section of the story as possible. Um, and that was like, when we wanted to do everything greater than the first game, that meant these kinds of moments, too. Um, mm. Later on, there is an entire museum exhibit you can walk through after you, you finish this side quest, and it is so cool. There's a little bit of, like, kind of like Marvel history sprinkled in there. There's a nod to the Howling Commandos. Um, but most of it's, like, actually, like, some, some pretty legit, um, like, cool little music history. And Pete time. <laughs> Funky. Yeah, complete cultural museum missions to earn a custom suit. Hey bro, you have a sec? Of course. Uh, actually, uh, Harry's calling. Uh, I have to Peter. Take this. Catch up later. Behave. <laughs> uh, sure, man. Oh, oh behave. Later. Hey, Pete. I'm at EMF. No sign of Doc Connors yet, but I could use an extra set of eyes. On my way. Have you heard anything from MJ? You said she's stopping by his house, the right? The circle thingy? Nothing that's uh, one of the old She told me she'd call when she got there. Ah, let's hope he's just taking a sick day. Yeah, definitely. A little, like, I'm gonna check her thing? office. Just uh, that's a prowler thing, but there was a giant little force field looking thing that is... Oh, that one. Yeah, wait a minute. Not you. Oh yeah, when we did this the first time, I was pretty good at finding the force fields, but... There he is. Get back. Don't scare Aww, me like that. Spirit spider spider bot. Is that a monkey? I don't know. It passed too quickly. <laughs> now, let's see what else we can we can get. Any cool suits? Superior suit again. Any Gotta get some fun fashion. Cool. Nah, we can we can keep it simple. Oh, there's something on Pass it. No. Just like up there. Maybe was it, it was the green the thing. Plan? No. Let's talk about Coney oh, Island. it was the arson First tank. Off, the <laughs> ah. it was the I, I forgot which Spider-Man we were playing as, so when they were having that group call with Harry being like, "Ah, oh, can't find Osborne, or uh, can't find." Fuck, lizard man, whatever. Uh, I truly thought that like we were still playing as Miles, and we had just heard ourselves get ditched by Pete to hang out with Harry, and then he hadn't hung up, and we were just on the group call where they were no. going to talk about how they were going to crime fight without us. Oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, look here, here comes uh, here comes Harry to, to come fight with us. Yay! You know, if the game really wanted to sell it, they should have let us customize Harry's outfit, too. We would have never known that he was actually going to just be a temporary addition to the game. Play dress up with our best friend. <laughs> Which cardigan do you want Harry to wear? Is it A, blue, B, blue coat, C, different blue cardigan? But how funny would it be if you put him in a different outfit and after about, like, ten seconds, it just morphs back into whatever the symbiote wants it to look like? Like, all right, you've had your fun. <laughs> Where do these people get these weapons? Uh, it's all of those sponsorships that Craven takes allows him to... <laughs> <laughs> this beatdown was brought to you by HelloFresh! <laughs> Good day, the arson is sponsored by... Rage, Shadow of Rage. <laughs> <laughs> World of Tanks is one of my favorite video games of all time! <laughs> <laughs> it's like a reflex at this point. We've been too well, like, conditioned. Yeah. Ooh, yellow thing. I'm trying to think of what other, like, generic sponsors. It's like, 
Audible. Like, no, no, no. It's like, I like to stay hidden within the dark forest. If you want to keep your personal data safe, you should use a VPN for your browsing. <laughs> when I am training to be the strong, I get bored easily, so we listen to Audible audiobooks. <laughs> The spidey surveillance state wants to know exactly where you and your goons are holing up, but with NordVPN, we are successfully concealed. Uh, they they uh, got back on the copy. They really want us to um, make sure that we include the code on screen the whole yet. time. And if you could just make sure to you know, plug the discount uh, at the end of the ad read, that'd be so great. Use uh, code Draven for 15% um... off your car insurance. I only record the promo once. If you have problem, <laughs> we negotiate. There's, you do oh not come back to second negotiation. <laughs> this is such a weird, deep pull. Um, there, okay. Back in the day, there were these comics done by uh, an, an artist who was going by Hi, I'm Daisy at the time. And they did these, like, Metal Gear summary comics that had an immense influence over my early chibi style. Uh, it was like, let's destroy the Shagahad, like, let's destroy the Shagahad again! And they did one for, um, uh, Metal Gear 3, and there was just this running gag of, uh, the boss just glaring terrifyingly at different of the, like, like the different bad guys would, like, like be like, well, I can't believe you didn't successfully kill this guy! And she just glare, and they'd just be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! <laughs> so, like, that's just what I'm imagining with the way Craven is talking. Yeah. It's just like, oh yeah, boss, we were thinking that maybe you could uh, retake it and like actually say the code and just, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! <laughs> Someone recommended BetterHelp. Craven definitely did not get sponsored by BetterHelp. <laughs> <laughs> is your mind weak? <laughs> Do you need... Help! <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Play Genshin Impact. <laughs> it's like that uh, that joke ad about like buy water bottle and like these dumbbell shaped bottles. It's like, what if I need other stuff? Don't buy other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Want your ass to look as fine as Craven? This video sponsored by Lucky Brand Jeans. <laughs> Oh, Manscaped, that's a good pull. Uh, he would definitely yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> How do we always end up back at Lucky Brand Jeans? <laughs> I bring us there deliberately. <laughs> You're trying to reactivate his reptile. Graham crackers are really a great stream food. Yeah. Ooh. Absolutely nothing wrong with the Crunch Crunch. Alright, we are now uh, in Craven's zoo hideout which is so hilariously on the nose in russia we don't surf in spite of shark field waters we surf on the sharks that's why we create surf shark vpn shout out to commenter ian greer for that one slaps you want weapons like me get battle box <laughs> i don't want to diss anybody who has taken a manscaped uh um promo kind of thing. It's just very, very funny to me when I am minding my own business watching a YouTuber and then he inevitably starts talking about ball care and I'm like, cool, this is more than I wanted to know about this guy. <laughs> the only person who I've had that jump scare with is Linkus. Linkus, there's a lot of manscaped. I mean, like, listen, like, we can't begrudge people who, who just like, you know, do, try to do their thing, make make the channel make, uh, make financial sense. But it's really funny when like, I'm just trying to watch a video about like, you know, video games, it's like, hey, commenters and viewers out there, are your balls disgusting? <laughs> you need to get that shit into shape. And the thing is, it's mainly, the reason we're, we're mentioning these YouTubers, because we watch a lot of them. Like, watch I watch a lot, a lot of, of Linkus's things. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. And then occasionally it's just Get that money, like, bro. It's just so funny to me. Yeah. Um, Daniel Thrasher is another one who takes a lot of sponsorships, but his is always like, now for the good. sketch after the yeah, sketch. Yeah, they're all like done in, in skits. <laughs> they're really funny. His, um, you can say anything in a movie trailer. One and two. One and two. So funny. <laughs> this is the, uh, we call out creators <laughs> we like, uh, time. Manscape, take control of your inner and outer jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, deduce. That was <laughs> 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 I crave the master of navigating difficult, tangled environments. <laughs> we don't need to continue this. <laughs> Luigi, you've gotten a shout out already. We already mentioned Lucky Brand Jeans enough. It's okay. We see all your Sorry, comments. Luigi Boy 42. I love your bits. <laughs> no one needs to, to get possessive of, of getting shout outs. <laughs> mm. 
All right. What other what other bits can we do with this? Because the Craven cast is really something. <laughs> Someone mentioned I mean, the Doctor Squash like, show segments, right? You know, he's got to have like the, like what's what's the today when on where's the spider? You ask your, <laughs> okay, you so the question yourself, is like like what's my pitch for the show? What's my topic? You know, what's Craven talking about? Indigo pitch master, you got to help us out here. <laughs> Does he? Okay. I assume he has guests on. Jesus Christ. Sorry. I'm just got fucking shot. Yeah. With a, geez. Um, oh, she's so cool. I love yeah, that they just, just made her like show. Mary Jane Wick in this game. That's what they yeah. did. And it's perfect. <laughs> Jane Wick. I feel like if I got shot in the shoulder, I would take at least a few more seconds to be like, what the fuck, dude, you shot me, rather than just rip it out and keep going. But that's why MJ's built different. See, I also, wouldn't um, have ripped it out, because if you get a puncture wound, leave the thing yeah, in, or you're more yeah, likely you, to bleed. Except when if it's scorpion get, toxin. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, when you get hit by an arrow, you, you snap off the shaft so it doesn't, like, bump into things or get snapped or whatever. But, like, you know, leave enough that you can get a grip on it later. But, like, don't just pull it off in the middle of it. Anyway, um, so I guess the question is, do, does Craven have other master hunters on his podcast? or does he have his victims on the podcast before so, he like skins them or something i think we're we're leaning too hard into the villain aspect and ignoring the living in a zoo part of it all i do think there's a world that highlights a different animal every week and just is kind of doing like an ecology <laughs> podcast for lack of a better word I think today that would be, like, a good... we discuss the tiger powerful <laughs> Strong. No, 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 too big. Too Craven big. is just like the croft yeah, brothers talking, from like, the, Zibu like the monk they went evil yeah, On today's mind. special episode, we bring in local expert Tirzu to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Also, real quick, I think that would be a good Vulture's segment. Fucking dead. <laughs> yeah, damn. But I, I think it would be good if he like highlights a different animal in each one. That's what I was doing Dude. with my tiger bit. <laughs> no, yeah, like I think that can't be the entire pod, but I think that's like a bit of it. It's, it's like, like how we do we the. Highlight. Uh... It's like how we do the uh, the lightning round on the podcast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like a little, yeah. I, I like to Today think... we highlight the humble mongoose. <laughs> you may think this small rodent is not dangerous, but it is alarmingly deadly for its size, <laughs> and thus has earned Craven's respect. I like. I'd and like if you think... do wish to earn Craven's respect, consider buying your pants and Lucky Brown machine. <laughs> I'd like to think that he uh, invites various uh, other hunters on the podcast to do a bit called best hunter catchphrase because they've all got pretty zingy uh, yeah. phrases. So it's like mm. they take suggestions from the audience and try to figure out the coolest uh, coolest catchphrase. Like every yeah. once in a while, also that like he's working with doctors, or he's working with hunters, like he brings in some like actual wildlife specialists where it's like, uh -huh. today we are talking with, uh, um, I, I don't. I don't know any famous, like, we are talking with a crocodile hunter. Uh, it's like, it is important to protect our natural environment to make sure the animals have space to roam freely. You know there's two Irwin children. I know, but I forget both <laughs> yeah. of their names. <laughs> I, Craven the Hunter, take great pride in extincting deadly creatures. But driving normal animals to extinction makes Craven sad. So today we talk about wildlife preservation. And why clear-cutting rainforests is dumb as fuck. <laughs> Today we talk about why you must save the bees. Uh, also, I could see, here like, we have Shocker the... is uh, fucking dead. Yeah, it literally no. says deceased on the screen. His head <laughs> is in a me. box next to his Jesus. gauntlets. It could right. be his armor, but it does say deceased. <laughs> the thing is, like, like considering some of the like emails we sometimes get about like hey i'm considering doing this or like you know do you have any suggestions for that it would be very funny if the craven cast starts off as like an unconditionally villainous thing and then he gets reached out to by like like a wildlife preservation like person who's like i'm campaigning for these like tiny frogs in the amazon rainforest that nobody's ever heard of but like you've got this platform and it would be really nice if you could do something with it and he's like i mean why not right like <laughs> it's only like an hour of my week <laughs> Uh, I want to read out uh, from. Uh, oh, come on, go back out. Oh, okay. Uh, Miroslav Rusev, today's sponsor is Sakurako. Have you ever been craving weak Eastern snacks? That's good. Craven yeah. does the Mr. Beast pose almost definitely. Mm. And Craven probably was a fan of Steve Irwin. You're also correct. Respect Steve Irwin. Ah, yeah, he probably would bring in David Attenborough and Jane Goodall. Oh, that would be so fun. <laughs> Just like this extremely aggressive, deep-voiced Russian man, and like David Attenborough's toes to toads. 
Netflix is like, in order to cross-promote the release of Our Planet <laughs> 2, we've collaborated with popular influencer Craven the Hunter. <laughs> the hunter who input that code has to be nearby. Someone said the Russians in chat must be feeling so insulted by now. I mean, sorry? I hope not. <laughs> But we're not trying to insult Russia, we're trying to insult Craven. What are you going to do about it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, how is Peter supposed to chase him to the ends of the earth if he's dead? Thank you, Antoine Verret. Also, comment. Captain Cr Captain Crust responding to Shocker being dead with, um, Shocker. <laughs> 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 Why not take the shocker gloves? Do you think MJ knows how to get dead people hands out of shocker gloves and use them? <laughs> Why are we assuming that there are still dead people bits in those things? <laughs> because it's Craven. And Craven, Craven doesn't no. have time for uh, removing body parts. That's... Craven probably has other people to remove the body That's parts That's why he for used HelloFresh. <laughs> <laughs> Craven lives busy life. Does not always have time to cook for self. Uh, this is a great bet. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not trying to insult the podcasters of us. All three of you are podcasters. Oh god, yeah, yeah. true, yeah. You can't insult podcasters without insulting yourself is the thing now. Yeah. So, great, that makes it self-deprecating humor and I have free reign. Exactly. I can do whatever I want forever. Uh, Ian's chunk cat, uh, Craven. If you wish to have a magnificent beer like mine, hunt down our sponsor, Beer Club. <laughs> My I've, impression is definitely I've the weakest of I've never heard of bunch. Beard Club, <laughs> but like that sounds like what happens when the startups just kind of stop trying. <laughs> no, this is the thing I've seen where it's like, if you want beautiful beard like Craven, you must invest in this specific beard oil. It also comes with beard trimmer and comb. I've heard peppermint oil is very good for beard growth. I am good at navigating generally. magnificent bush of jungle. Magnificent bush of own beard is harder. Watch it, Red. <laughs> I know, Easy. I know. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Only Cravens. <laughs> Remember which sponsor brand we are talking about. <laughs> Do not cross the streams. <laughs> I could totally see Craven taking two sponsors, sending them That's each just the video, and then not <laughs> dropping the name and being like, you guys can both pay me because I clearly sponsored you. No, no, what we need is Craven getting two sponsors on the same video and making them fight to the death over which one gets oh to my stay. God. <laughs> Surfshark versus NordVPN. Go. Yes. <laughs> Squarespace versus Wix. Which of you is strongest? The shark, powerful animal of the ocean versus the cold, unforgiving North. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Harry Shaving Club. Oh, yeah. Harry. Dollar <laughs> Shave Club. <laughs> Uh. Every once in a while, I like to give shout-outs to new creators on the scene. Today, I want to talk about Second Wind, a group of uh, collaborative <laughs> gaming journalists doing excellent work in the field. <laughs> Second Wind understands that humans are persistent predators and collaborative hunters, How you and say. stronger when unionized. <laughs> How you say game recognize game. <laughs> Which works on three levels. <laughs> Big game hunting, video games, and actual game recognize game. Um, we crossed the five hour mark and we all simultaneously lost our minds. This will be the last mission we're doing on this stream. <laughs> okay. This, th this is a suitably dramatic end point for us. <laughs> Also, MJ is about to fake uh, talking in some Karian, so she's gonna do the same bit that we're doing right now. Yay! Craven <laughs> uh, in a micro, Craven is small. small. <laughs> Guys, if you drop the Greek in the chat, we're gonna pause and try to read it. <laughs> this is what studying a language does to you. <laughs> I, I love like podcaster Craven, but my brain is like, like Craven doing the whole like unfortunately lest video was demonetized. Apparently, skinning animal live on screen is not fitting YouTube's policies. So if you have not subscribed yet to Craven's Patreon, consider. 
You could also <laughs> subscribe on YouTube. It helps uh, boost my videos in the algorithm. Remember to ring bell and leave comment for algorithm. <laughs> Most <Please share>. deadliest. <laughs> we share with friend. <laughs> Someone broke into the Thank zoo to fight the lion. Episode. Wow. <laughs> Boxu versus Sakura Co. Yeah. Uh, someone Gosh. also said... We're just uh, going through all the sponsors here. Yeah. This is fun. I'm glad that everyone else gets bombarded with sponsors while watching YouTube and has yeah. just kind of got them stuck in their head. I can't believe they just have a map on a whiteboard. <laughs> and like, who drew the little glass panels on the top of the building? And the little towers on the aviary. Listen, one of Craven's hunters. supports his artistic. <laughs> no, you. Okay. I was gonna say one of Craven's hunters definitely took advantage of that Skillshare membership. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, Craven, Craven brings in had minion special... mongoose to show off advantages <laughs> special, of Skillshare. Special play. time offered with World Anvil. You can make uh. <laughs> customizable map. <laughs> I feel Hyper bad, like, your doing the bit with a sponsor that we actually, like, use <laughs> and really like a lot. <laughs> World Anvil is very cool and would not be, they yeah. wouldn't sponsor Craven. <laughs> Maybe if Craven reformed. They, they would know better Craven reformed. That. They might sponsor yeah. Craven if he was only doing animal podcasts. <laughs> mm. You know, yeah. saving the wildlife, supporting the bees. But as soon as they found out that he was uh, evil, they would definitely disown him. <laughs> Be the noblest warrior of the animal kingdom. <laughs> Choose his death over dishonor every time. Uh, John P. Smash that like button. Like Craven smashes weak spiders. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Be sure to ring bell to support the channel and also irritate symbiotes. <laughs> Thank you, Crow Tomkiss. Excellent poll. Good. <laughs> oh, man. This Only 20% of my viewers are subscribed. <laughs> Thank you, Joker Kirkpat Kirkpatrick. <laughs> Do not make Craven hunt you down and subscribe <laughs> from your account <laughs> after removing Jonah spine. Jameson in this, in this stream. Yeah, oh my go. god, <laughs> Craven <laughs> and the J. Jonah Jameson crossover. <laughs> I mean, we did spend like a solid 20 minutes just finding out that J.K. Simmons is in a lot of things, except for this. He's not in this. <laughs> J.K. Simmons is in everything except for what you expect him to be in. That's the real takeaway. <laughs> I tell you, Craven, you've got the right idea in this city. That <laughs> spider menace needs to be put down. You are a small, loud man, <laughs> please. I love that Jameson would try to suck up to Craven, and Craven would have none of it. You are, as they say, all bark and no bite, Mr. Jameson. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, we should talk about today's uh, sponsor, HelloFresh, for a minute. <laughs> yeah, Jameson would try to get Craven on his podcast. Yeah. I imagine that Craven also has a substantially larger following. Jameson would, like, say on his podcast, like, I would love to have as a special guest that, you know, notorious big game hunter that we got in town, but he's remarkably hard to get in touch with, so if any of my listeners can, uh... <laughs> Craven's just, like, got it playing, just stoic and motionless, like, and they went back to actually important business. Yeah. Uh, it's like those people who show up, like, replying to every tweet by one person, being like, haha, that's so cool and funny. Hey, do you want to, like, hang out? Yeah. <laughs> Jameson is a, a sad Craven fanboy, is very appropriate for this version of him, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and now we've gotten to the... Uh, oh, that's not the right accent. Hold on. <laughs> JJJ yeah. isn't in the Craven yeah, no, cast, but J.K. Simmons <laughs> is! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Zusaga. <laughs> So tell Craven, how would you make time for his podcast with busy recording schedule? Oh, uh, well, you know, we only record the yellow M&M uh, uh, ads like once every six months and then they just slowly parcel them out. You know, the ad business is very smart about that sort of thing. Uh, Luigi, you know, uh, I was in a uh, Baldur's Gate recently. No one seems to be talking about that. <laughs> Luigi said uh, body sla Craven would body slam JJJ? Yes, probably. <laughs> when J. Jonas Jameson would end up being brought by Spider-Man to the hospital for a second time. 
But Raven yes. would like to turn now to the to the fan mail portion. <laughs> <laughs> it's only this man, Jameson. <laughs> Craven welcomes you to Q and A portion of Craven Cast. <laughs> Stephen from it California was... <laughs> says, "Hello, Craven. I am nine years old and I like pandas. What is your favorite animal?" Ah, well, Stephen, a good question. <laughs> you know, Stephen, pandas do not like to breed in captivity. <laughs> If you would like to submit questions for Cravencast, please tie note to arrow and fire through my window. I will honor your strength and warrior spirit. Please do yeah, not send email Craven has forgotten password. <laughs> I love this about him. <laughs> we'll also accept notes tied to necks of large uh, jungle cat submitted as uh, prey. Also acceptable. There's one more dead person we haven't found um, yet. Let's see it in a second. Podcast episode ends abruptly because if it went on any longer, he would try to kill Jameson. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, into the fandomverse. Very, very true. I think the Craven cast is a real winning concept. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> Hello, update for listeners. Some of you may be aware that Craven recently spliced himself with lion DNA to be better matched to the spider. So stop asking if Craven is sick. Craven did this on purpose. <laughs> I like how this whole time we've been doing this bit, MJ's just been, like, trying not to die. MJ's been <laughs> slaying out here. <laughs> Mary Jane Wick is still one of the funnier parts of this. I, I don't think that's mine. I think I saw that somewhere else. <laughs> Sorry. Craven, get new question on stage. Your aim is terrible. My head is over here. That's <laughs> Kingdom fucking killing it. Check or alternatively, don't. Craven has received a new message embedded in shoulder and mighty bicep. Please hold for one moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is fan mail. That is lovely. Craven appreciates. <laughs> <laughs> Craven has bonus tip. If shot with arrow, leave in wound. Do not want to bleed out during hunt. Ouch. What are Craven? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I Damn it. Craven would like to thank patrons for support and top tier for good fight. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Kaka, very cool. I love how Craven never refers to himself a third person, but we've just decided that's part of his character now. Yeah. It's very appropriate. Fast. Mary Jane is guest of Craven Cast. <laughs> you successfully Mary Jane is like escaped. Expected guest of Craven Cast. Like, She's like she a repeat guest. She keeps sh yeah. showing up. Yeah. It's the opposite of uh, J. Jonah. It's like. <laughs> No, no, no. She got an open invite. She can pop by any time. Like, yeah. there's a new I think, like, her. the first time they, like, kidnapped her to, like, lure in Spider-Man, and then she was just around while they were recording. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, boss, terrible news! Uh, 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 our special guest, he's been... Uh, oh, sorry, I just saw MJ get fully straight-up bodied. Yeah, um, it's okay, mm. it's okay. Uh, we live, we learn. <laughs> We're good, we're good. Uh, she's like, boss, terrible news! Uh, cannot get guests in time. And she's like, oh, you guys doing a podcast? And then she just gets an open invite to come back whenever she wants. Sometimes it's part of a kidnapping, sometimes it's just business. <laughs> so, tell me, red-haired woman, you have done time in Simcaria. Tell me about state of ecological conservation legislation through parliament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I just liked it. Like MJ's like walking back from her job and just gets like fucked up in one of those like rope nets in a tree. And she's like, Craven, it's been like 20 episodes. You could have just emailed. Still forgot the password. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, an arrow through the window works too. <laughs> Preferably the one that's already broken, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Craven gets a shadow laid. Raid Shadow Legends sponsor. <laughs> this game is weak imitation of Thrill of Hunt, but they paid me ridiculous sum of money, so I promote. Craven <laughs> <laughs> holding a live show and the fans ask questions by shooting an arrow with the question on it. Craven <laughs> just like catches it out of the air before it hits him in the face, like, oh, very nice delivery system. <laughs> Please, no spam. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Electro, also dead. <laughs> Just like 70 arrows. Electro, no! Oh, Electro. I do like the idea that Kravitz has been catching arrows and just like, hey, no spam. I got the message. If I did not respond, it was because it was weak and purged. <laughs> <laughs> do not send more arrows. <laughs> arrows received with spam will be returned to sender at high velocity. <laughs> God, this yeah, bit. just killed the Sinister Six. <laughs> I, well, the first time I did this mission, there's a certain point where, like, you see, of course, like, Scorpion dies on camera, and then it's like, oh, this is Vulture's wings. Oh, that's Shocker's Gauntlets. Oh, okay. He just fucking killed everybody. There was a cut section of a later mission um, where there's a room that just fully has Rhino's head and helmet on a Jesus. mantle. It's like, okay, yeah, no, he just he just annihilated the entire Sinister Six like it was no big deal. Does okay? What about Doc Ock? Uh, he is um, imprisoned after the end of the first game. Okay, not so he dead. hasn't, like, broken out or gotten killed? No, he's he's out of commission, um, okay. but he is not dead. He's not dead. <laughs> Just in a <coma>. Sorry. <laughs> Today we interview special guest, very dangerous New Yorker reporter, Mary Jane Watson. <laughs> Thank you, Willow. <laughs> Cravencast t-shirt is a human-shaped hunting target? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> this bit, it's got legs, I'm telling you! <laughs> No spam. It's puny processed meat, unlike raw panther breast. Thank you, drunk robot. It's like with MJ's the guest, like, I respect any journalist who will go for such a hunt to get this story. Oh, wait, here we go, here we go. The crossover we never knew we needed. Yes. The cutscene. Show. Spider-Man's. Technically just one Spooberman. Yeah, no Miles, because Peter's an idiot. <laughs> I love that they just throw flaming torches like, Twaha! Must light this battle up. In the atrium, might have a... Hunt is about to get litty. <laughs> litty titty committee? <clears throat> I want Craven cast on a t-shirt. <laughs> we definitely sure. cannot legally do that. <laughs> yeah, the IP on that is for sure not how that works for us. We we inquired about one design uh, that had some some copyrighted uh, stuff uh, on it, and uh, we fully could not. So I don't we think Craven say. It's the Zelda out. stuff. It was the Zelda we, uh, stuff. We tried to do the yeah, Zelda yeah. stuff, and it did not work. How about Crave? And like ampersand cast. I, I think know. it's still 
No. I, think I don't the think we wanna right we wanna play that game with so many. Other things are called crate. Yeah, okay. but it's not worth dying on. <laughs> For more on that, you gotta tune into Matt Murdoch's podcast where he gives legal advice to oh superheroes. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> Hi, uh, welcome back to uh, Sight Unseen, where we are gonna go over some of the legal conundrums for you wrote in your problems, and we're going to give you some unofficial legal advice. Now, when this you podcast isn't called Justice is Blind? No, I was going to say, oh, it's so like, uh, uh, welcome back to Justice is Blind, so am I, your host, Matt Murdock. <laughs> <laughs> Today, the question of the day is, um, if Spider-Man destroyed my car, what recourse do I have? Well, that's a really good question. Spider-Man is not officially a government employee. But under Good Samaritan well, laws, he does get a insurance. pass so long as her actions are under the purview of attempting to help others. So if there was a situation that could be considered life-threatening, he has a pretty wide breadth to act. However, if he's simply swinging around and there's nothing going on, you may have a case against him in a civil court. However, you will have to find him to bring him to court and serve him a uh, notice. We've just fucking reverse-engineered Legal Eagle from First Principles. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Legal Eagle. Pretty cool. <laughs> the question is, does Daredevil also have a podcast? Oh, probably. And do Daredevil and Matt Murdock ever just do a crossover? <laughs> Matt Murdock's like, I'm going to talk to you today about the legality of some of your actions. And... and <laughs> Yeah, Today, like, to help me out. Other side. Oh my god, I'm sorry, Pete just fucking stuck full of arrows. Yeah. <laughs> Minecraft shit all over. Now. I, I would imagine, like, people, like, the reviews are like, wow, this podcast is really good, and, like, the presenters are amazing. There's no crosstalk. <laughs> like, they really know how to respect each other's time and presence uh, on the podcast. Mm hmm, mm hmm. <laughs> Someone said, uh, specifically, Coakley Fireheart, I would buy legally distinct OSP Xelba merch. <laughs> also, Austin, thank you for your $50 donation. Thank you. Thank you. Justice is blind, and I am blinder. Hi, I'm your host, Matt <laughs> Thank you, Squish Cube. This, 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 I can use this to make an antidote. I think that so I think that Steve Rogers wouldn't have a podcast, but he would guest on podcasts because it really yeah. is very similar to radio appearances. I think that would be pretty yeah. easy for him. It, it, he understands the medium. He would definitely mm -hmm. listen to podcasts. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yep. There he goes. Although I do like conceptually the idea of like the Steve Rogers podcast is just like him talking about whatever the thing he's most recently consumed to try and catch up on a hundred years of like media and culture. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah I, read the, I read the two towers this week. Yeah, um, <laughs> Spider-Man's actively getting stabbed, so. Oh no, Spider-Man, don't get stabbed. This week, my, my young friend Peter Parker uh, <laughs> said the word yeet to me and I, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole and went on, on a, an internet site called Know Your Meme. Oh no. This is the best bit. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man's almost podcast. dead. And then they try to do amazing, amazing bits every time. Gosh, that's really a well-animated puddle. Yeah, that's an expensive puddle. <clears throat> they heard everyone complaining about the puddles in Spider-Man 1. They're like, you know what? Fuck you. Here's you water with collision Complaining about physics. a puddle in a video game. That's not what you're there for. I was wondering how long Connors could not great. just choose to not be a lizard. I would simply choose to not be a lizard. <laughs> Rip to you, but I'm different. Yeah. Rip oh, to you, damn. but I'm different. Damn. I don't think... Am I MJ, I don't think I'm breathing. Oof. Yeah, this is this is bad, Steve's... gang. <laughs> See, this podcast has a soundboard uh, section. It's just a guy with a bunch of cups and stuff. It's Buffy with a bunch of, like, cups and uh, oh. drums and things, like one of those old radio Foley corners. <laughs> So Craven just dropped a gorilla on Spider-Man and MJ. It's okay. No. Oh. Yeah, this is a kind of sad bit. I feel bad because it's a minute delayed for you guys. <laughs> I mean, it's. I'm just getting to the good bit. 
Welcome back to Cravencast. Today we are reminiscing time I stabbed Spider-Man in his weak ribcage. <laughs> Not as venomous as they say. <laughs> A true warrior needs only one kidney. Clearly Spider-Man is weak. <laughs> Little does he know, Spider-Man uh, donated his other k- kidney, so that's actually ableist. Yeah. What does recall? I mean, let's be real. Craven's entire social Darwinist thing is yeah. pretty ableist right from the jump. Oh, for sure. Let us take a moment we to appreciate know- Sponsor binging with Babish knife set, with which I impaled the weak spider. <laughs> Craven the, the Hunter is problematic. Um, <laughs> Craven, the Hunt- Craven the Hunter gets cancelled. <laughs> the woke mob is attempting to cancel Craven. They think I am that easily defeated. This will just make Craven Jameson is- like him more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Craven respects their puny attempts to outnumber me. Remember in fifth grade when you. I kind of like that. Spider-Man's health bar is basically just visually represented by how fucked up his suit is at any given time. Yeah. It's like, he only got stabbed, like, in one place. But as soon as we find him, he's got, like, fully ripped tights look. He just really got those distressed jeans from Lucky Brand Jeans. (laughs) Yeah! (laughs) Woo! Oh my god, Spider-Man's fucking dead! Oh, he's got a healing factor. He's fine. Not that good. (laughs) (laughs) But wait, there's more. Oh, oh, here we go. I mean, I if only they had some sort of alien pod hybrid thing that could. <laughs> you guys are just a little behind. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he did. A minute behind. Not anymore. <laughs> This is gonna be good to watch back because I'm positive that Yuri Lowenthal's given a fucking great performance oh, for this whole thing. I Yuri Lowenthal should have won um, performance of the year. He puts everything into this. Yuri Lowenthal is really good at acting like he is absolutely miserable or in horrible pain, and that's a skill all on its own. I forgot that your controller does that. Yeah, yeah the the symbiote in this game screams, <laughs> and the controller really sells that. It did. I think I actually don't know. And I feel sorry for him. I know you're supposed to leave the thing in the wound if you get stabbed. I would simply have removed it so that his healing factor had a fucking chance to try and heal it. <laughs> what happened to the blade in the? <laughs> oh, it's there. It's there. It's still there. <laughs> what? Don't worry about it. Suspension of disbelief, my friend. Simply remove the blade. When your Spider-Man gets stabbed, simply remove the blade. I know that doesn't work for a normal person, but he's a superhero. So he'll be Spider-Man okay. has a healing factor. You can't healing factor around a thing that's still in the wound. It's like Wolverine <laughs> squeezing out the bullets. On my way. One of those, like, um... You know, like, a bunch of gals hanging out gossiping podcasts, but it's what? just all the girlfriends of superheroes. <laughs> Like, and I'm, my mind immediately went MJ and Gwen Stacy. I'm like, that's a different genre entirely, but like... Is mine. You know? Hey gals, welcome back to Damselcast. Um, we don't have Gwen this week. She has been kidnapped, but uh, <laughs> she should be back next week. No problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I hope they invite uh, Peach and Princess Peach. Stop Instead, calling in, we have Karen Page. <laughs> I feel like we're kind of coming up. So we're we're coming up on time. After this cutscene, we're gonna we're gonna call it. Yeah, you're getting dangerously close to creeping up on some of my seven hour streams. Yeah. No, th- this is exactly where I wanted to be able to get to on this stream, getting the symbiote. Perfect. Without it, you Yeah. So Harry's low key gonna die again because he doesn't have his healing suit, but that's not a problem right this minute. How did you give it to me? Are we going to deal with the fact that Pete still has a knife in his left kidney? Uh, they yes. need to get the symbiote off before they can get the kidney knife out. In a minute. Uh, <laughs> I kind of like that he just kicked all that ass because the symbiote's keeping him going. Yep. Like, it didn't fix anything. Well, I mean, it did. He's not dead anymore. <clears throat> Pete, there's something in your... 
So this is your tab. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Venom Cast. I'm your host, Venom, and this is my new host, Spider Man. <laughs> I think the rain <laughs> would nice. sound just like a bunch of gurgling. <laughs> it would be in the symbiote language of. <laughs> <laughs> and then there'd be Venom like and Carnage come on, the and they're like, and it would be like, ah! I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know? Find Dr. Connors. Except. <laughs> Got very quiet usually after I started making a bunch of gurgling noises. <laughs> the serum. He had it around his neck. That's what he used on Dr. Connors. If we find that serum, we, we could analyze it, use the equipment here to, to engineer a cure. And bring Dr. Connors back from the land of the lizard. So this is basically our act two plotline. We have to save Dr. Connors from being a lizard so we can figure out how to get the suit off Pete and then back onto Harry. <laughs> I really can't tell which one's Pete and which one's Harry, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> what? They're not Those that are... identical. One of them has the suit on. Yeah. Yeah. They have the same... They both look like Tom Holland with different haircuts. I mean, you're not entirely wrong. We officially are ensuited. So, that will about bring us on time after a lovely little six-hour stream we've this done here. Uh, I'm going to pause this here so we, we can get the... Um, uh, get the little dialogue with, with Mary Jane uh, on, on the next stream. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate yeah. you uh, being uh, understanding of our, our choice to take the first half of January off. So this Friday was a stream. Next Friday will be a stream. And then after that, we're back to regular videos. Um, and we're going to have a good time. Thank you to everybody who donated so far. Uh, we'll keep this fundraiser going for the next one, see how much we can... Uh, can get going towards UNICEF um, uh, in the next uh, the next stream or two. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you to Cyan, Indigo, and Red for joining in this little endeavor of, of uh, acquiring the edge uh, of the symbiote. Uh, what's everyone think of the game so far? Thank you for joining us on Craig. I like the game. <laughs> Thank you. I'm pleased with how quickly we got through the plot, I say after six hours, but like legitimately. <laughs> I, I'm Who's glad that we... Side. Yeah, I've I've done no side activities. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm I'm glad. I'm a big fan of doing the main plot in games like this. I think this is very cool. Uh, as mentioned, I'm very pleased that they seem to have built this game entirely around inflicting emotional pain on the audience. I'm always down for that. So I'm excited to see where this goes from here because we're already off to a pretty good start. Yeah.